had to make it interesting. Michigan State. It's a four? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a seven bet chat. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event cycles! Sebastian Mallet has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again and welcome to London and the Poker Stars European Poker Tour. Live coverage of the main event final table is about to begin here at the Hilton on Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. It is James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me, James. Live chat on Twitch, live chat on YouTube. Use the hashtag PokerStars TV. We want to hear from you over the course of the day as we play down from the final six to a European Poker Tour champion. We have had four exciting days of poker, and it concludes today. Hope you've included, enjoyed the coverage. Not sure how long we'll be with you today, but you will see every single hand stream cards up until we present that trophy and first prize of more than £664,000. If you missed yesterday, here's what happened on day four. 16 players returned for the penultimate day of the EPT London main event. Plenty of poker heavyweights still in contention. The eliminations came early. On the second hand of the day, Martin Susor lost a flip and was the first player out. Then Ben Heath went out in 15th, his flop set getting riven by Alexandre Villemier. Poker Hall of Famer Eric Seidel's deepest ever main event run ended in 12th. And Ben Pollock finished in 11th. KO'd by the player with the Chippopotamus, Jack Sinclair. Aleem Kanji's exit took us down to one table. And Jamie Flynn, alas, could not dodge Harry Lodge with an ace on the river. But it was aces that got Lodge in the end. He picked the wrong time to defend his big blind and exited in eighth place. I think it's fair to say not much went right yesterday for start of day chip leader David Doherty. He bowed out in seven, and that took us down to the final six. So these are the six players who have taken their seats on the main stage and will play for poker glory today. It is the Czech player Roman Harabets who comes in with the chip leader, 76 big blind stack, 6.1 million. The Romanian filmmaker Dan Kishu is the second biggest stack, 5 million chips, 62 bigs. Jack Sinclair, probably the most accomplished player at this table, 60 bigs. Ian Hamilton, one of the more unexperienced players, 43 bigs. Alexandra Vlemier has 21. And Niels Pudel from Germany is the shorty with just 15 big blinds. And here are the players arriving for the start of the day. We saw Sinclair make it heads up in the Estrella's main event in Barcelona, looking to go one better in this EPT main. Interestingly, Niels Pudel won a platinum pass to the first PSPC in 2019. Very cool. That's a hashtag fun fact. Of course, this guy was a professional hockey player before he took to poker. That is what Ian Hamilton looks like. We've not oh. seen his face the last few days because he buries himself underneath an oversized hoodie. Dressed for the occasion, the dapper Alexandre Villemier. Card sharp, dress sharp. And there is a guy looking to become the first ever Romanian EPT winner, Dan Kishu. Hashtag dog poop girl. That was his last motion picture. So with six players remaining, everyone is guaranteed the better part of 135,000 yeah, pounds. Know, more than 175K for fifth. Nearly a quarter of a million for fourth. 
third will get the better part of 300k. The runner-up, more than 414k, and more than half a million pounds for the eventual champion, 664,400 pounds. Nick, it's fair to say yesterday, play slowed. ICM considerations clearly a thing. Do you expect that to be the same story today? People are going to be very conscious of these ladders? Yeah, I see no reason to believe that there won't be the same pace of play today. ICM pressure is ever-present as we get closer into the money, and obviously these pay jumps becoming more significant the further we get into the tournament, so absolutely. Uh, however, we have crossed the six-figure mark, and I know mentally that can be a thing for people, right? Another six-figure score to add to the handed mob, that could be playing on their minds as well. I also think, Joe, a lot of people are just tightened up because there's the prospect of making it to the final day to the final table. That's what they're clinging on for. We may see a little bit more of playing FTW today, playing for the win, but still there are huge jumps involved. I wouldn't blame anybody for folding a lot. Well, my understanding is the players are now gathering on the main stage for the official final table photo, but we are missing one of the six because Jack Sinclair needs a comfort break. Ah. I should highlight, we've still got 30 minutes to play at the 40-80 blind level. Then, of course, we're going to roll straight in to the next level when the blinds go to 5100. So it will be a one-hour, 45-minute session. So I understand wanting to relieve yourself before you sit down at the table. Would you say Jack Sinclair has a leak in his game? <laughs> no, that's what you would say. <laughs> Well, funny enough, we spoke to Jack Sinclair before the start of play, before he took his place right. at the feature table. The, the guy said, that's why I like... The... I'll give you the full story on the hippo card protector. I'm a big Martin Cabrell fan. Uh, he had a big hippo on his chips whenever we played in the past. So I always asked him, like, Martin, can I have a hippo? I really want a hippo. And he's like, no, you cannot have a hippo. So I got a hippo because, you know... What I'm gonna do, but it was it was huge. It was like a, it was made out of metal. It was like a bottle opener. It had this really angry hippo. You open the bottle in its mouth, uh, and then that that was far too big. But then my hippo and Martin's hippo, they met in Prague one fateful night, and now what we see is the uh, consequences of that uh, that that encounter. So this is a baby. I called him Marty after Martin, uh, and he's just incredibly lucky. I mean, we. We, we had some creative differences. Uh, in Spain, I actually was playing with a pig because Marty went to strike. Uh, but we've come to mutually, you know, mutual agreement now and, and we're back on good terms. Marty stays in the bag with the chips. He has to keep an eye on them uh, and sort of like marinate in the, in the chip, chip juices to make sure that everything, the luck is nicely spread around. Um, so, but he knows the game plan. We go through it in the, in the off season and then when we come to play, it's, uh, you know, we're just, it's just game time now. We, we know what we're doing. That story was far too earnest. There was a lot of detail to that. <laughs> However, being British, I'm going to assume that there was a healthy dose of sarcasm in that story. <laughs> I didn't know they had the groundlings here in London, but that was quite the improv. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, right, so the official FT photo has been taken. Let's get these players back in their seats. Let's get cards in the air. And yes, worth highlighting that we have got two players with sub-20 big blind stacks. Volemia and Poodle, and the blinds are going to be going up in 13 minutes' time, and that's going to yeah, put to increased pressure on those two players. Well, at least we have a name for the hippo I, now. I, I was looking for oh, a bottle. I prefer Chippopotamus. Uh, one of the other players we spoke to when they first arrived in the poker room today was. <laughs> the German player, I mean, Nils Pudel. Let's hear what he had to say. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, a, it's a still a great tournament. It's a big achievement to, to, to reach here, the final table. Um, it's actually the, my first EPT I played. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, poker sauce events are always a good atmosphere and uh, nice to be around here. Yeah, you know, you don't know where, where he's at, but he's... Uh, uh, I like him. He's uh, he's good for poker, like uh, very chatty, and uh, also try to like uh, get get to t talk to the to the table because we were all quiet uh, yesterday. It was uh, it was good for for poker, I think. Well, as we established yesterday, Niels is a member of the German Twitch community, and Felix over on the German stream is very much about the poodle power right now. 
Ruff, ruff. Yeah, I actually got a chance to talk to our very own Poodle Power about that interesting 9-7 of spades, king's misclick situation. Oh, yes. um, and he sort of said, yeah, I saw it. It was kind of weird, but, you know, I was never going to go broke in that spot anyway. He was very composed about it. You know, didn't seem particularly frustrated about the fact that... He was very that German like, about it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and we both sort of agreed that, you know, if it was ever going to go south, if it was ever going to go weird, I should say... The fact that it came ace high actually was kind of a benefit. Sure. So, you know, it actually gave him an opportunity to get away where an, uh, another flop could have actually spelled disaster after that confusion pre-flop. Here we go. Cards in the air. Hand one of the final table. Blinds are 40,000, 80,000 with an 80K big blind ante. And the action will be on Ian Hamilton. Queen seven offsuit. Hamilton folds. Dan Kishu folds the Jack Five. Roman Harabets. He has been very impressive the last few days. He is the chip leader coming into play. Worth highlighting that he came second in the UK IPT High Roller here in London. That was worth nearly 156 grand. He's raised from the cutoff with Ace Three of Diamonds, and Poodle's got Ace Deuce on the button. Man, this is tough. Wow. Good for him. I would think against the late raise chip leader, you might ship in Ace Deuce there. I am loving, loving Alexandra's attire. This is how you dress for an EPT final table, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like a suit jacket over a pajama shirt. What's the et what's the etiquette here, James? Do you do you do you play this buttoned up, or do you? I I, I thought you'd arrive at the table and unbutton. I think top button on button, for sure. No, I mean the jacket itself. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I think it looks good button. Yeah. With his stance at the table, absolutely, as part of his image. Excellent posture. You're absolutely right. Well, he defended his big blind with 10-8 of clubs. Roberts has flopped the nut flush draw, still has the best hand with ace high, and a continuation bet will win him the pot. Roberts, the one you said was a former hockey player? Absolutely. Um, I believe he used to play for Sparta Prague, moved to Switzerland, and played for a few years there. Spent 10 years in Switzerland, in fact, and made it to the pros, had a decent hockey career, now plays poker for a living. Explains all the checking. <laughs> <laughs> Little hockey joke for you there, folks. <laughs> Kishu with the 10-3 off UTG decides to put it in the bin. Yeah, Harabets also folding. So second hand of the final table. Action is folded to Poodle with aces in the cutoff. Uh, one of the best hands, in my opinion. And a reminder, he is the short stack at the final table. Has 15 big blinds. And he has raised to 160. Jack Sinclair looks interested on the button. Yeah, just glancing over. <gasps> oh! Boy. Sinclair with Ace King. It's the second hand, you guys. It's the second hand. The last thing I said to Poodle before, I, before he left last night to go get some sleep is, get some sleep, buddy. Tomorrow, shortest stack, you can play your game. And look at this, the setup that he was looking for, that he was waiting for. Especially if your game is to pick up aces and cooler someone with ace-king. Easy plan to have. Not such an easy plan to execute, but it's working out brilliantly. So Sinclair re-raises to 400,000. The blinds get out of the way. Action back on Poodle, who can just ship it in now and will get cold. I like not snap shipping it in, though, just in case. Yeah, there's no reason to act fast here. Make it look like a decision. Look at the cards again. Yeah, just double check like you don't know what you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it look good. Or just enjoy it. Relish in this moment. Yeah. Even plays a time bank card. A reminder. 30 seconds per decision on the shot clock. You buy additional thinking time by playing those 30 second time bank cards. Not sure you need a time bank card. Of course, he doesn't know he's up against his king. All in. All in. Moves all in, gets snap called, shows that he's got aces, and is a huge favorite here to double up through Jack Sinclair. 93% chance to win. 
Yep, this is about as good as it gets pre-flop, guys. And the good news for Jack Sinclair, only 13 bigs. Good point. Okay, all right. Now, let's not, let's not be total doomsday preppers here, but two spades on the flop, not the best. Uh -oh. oh, the spade on the turn does give Sinclair the nut flush draw. Eight outs, eight cards, you guys. And Poodle's equity has dropped significantly. He has to fade a spade on the river now to survive. It is oh. a spade! No. Okay, man. Oh, man. Four oh, flushed okay, yeah, by Jack Sinclair. Nils Poodle is the first player out from the final table, eliminated in sixth place, cashing for £134,800. It's always sad when a Poodle gets put down, but that was awful. Second hand of the day, you guys. Absolute catastrophe for Nils Poodle, but he's put in such a good showing. And GG's use there, commiserations. Oh, James, that physically hurt me. I, I felt that. I felt that from here. A Jack Sinclair has moved up into second place on the leaderboard. In fact, he's pretty much tied at the top with Roman Harabets now. 80 bigs for Harabets, 78 bigs for Sinclair as Nils Poodle collects his cellular device and exits the arena. Does look the best. <laughs> Thank you. So already down to five players. One of the short stacks gone. And Alexandra Volemia is now the low man at the table with 17 big blinds. Yeah, but he did get that pay jump. Very, very significant jump. Now guaranteed 175,000 at 250 pounds. Well, he's raising here on the button with king four of hearts. 160K. Good start. <laughs> yeah, I buffed it. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton it folds. Dan Kishu, <laughs> Queen Jack off. No, just a uh, we have talked a lot about Dan's work in movies. We've talked about his work in comedy. He has more than a million dollars in career earnings at poker. Oh, I, oh you're going to say it. the box office because that's not great. <laughs> So we do have a correction to make. Oh, by the way, uh, not a super standard line here with Queen Jack in the big blind, is it? Well, I think on the final table, you can apply additional pressure to the shorties here. So I do actually quite like the adjustment as a three bet. But the flat is also probably done quite frequently as well. Thank you. So hashtag dog poop girl. Not a movie that Dan directed. No, he was the producer okay. of the film. He just wanted to make sure that people knew that. I... I seems to me that he is more prolific as a producer than he is as a director. I mean, it seems to me that as a poker player, he certainly has some moves as well there. We see him leaning yes. on that short stack and, you know, really applying pressure. Like uh, Joe was saying, I think the flat from Queen Jack is a little bit more quote-unquote standard. But in the context of the final play. table where Clint. Volumia is one of our shortest stacks, the three bet's just going to be so, so effective because, of course, he's looking to remain in the tournament, wait for a better spot, and hopefully find another ladder like we just saw with our sixth place exit. And four of this final table, which is now five-handed. Won't be falling to a three bet this time. Yeah, Alexandra Valemia now down to 15 big blinds. 160. And raises to 160,000. Interesting here, guys. So we are five-handed, so there's fewer players to get round. So I think the open... It's going to happen a little bit more frequently than if we were, for example, eight-handed here. And he's got ace-queen where he might just play it as a pure jam as he gets shorter. But uh, Volumier thus far been very controlled, seems to have a game plan in most situations, is going to play this as an open on the shorter-handed table here. Raise and take it for yeah. a guy who's looking to become the second Swiss player to take down an EPT main event title. The first was Ronnie Kaiser at EPT Talent in 2011. Four minutes left on this blind level. A reminder will roll straight in to level 29. Blind's going to 5100 very soon. 
as we kick off hand five of the final table. Action's been folded to the button. It's Dan Kishu who's got 4-3 off. Round to the blinds. Chip leader Roman Harabets is in the small blind with 10-7 off. And this is an interesting dynamic now because we've got the two biggest stacks effectively sat next to each other. Yep. You beat me to it. I was going to say you're going to see some very interesting big stack first, big stack dynamic here, especially blind v. Blind. Um, as we are on the deeper side and we do have some shorter stacks to go, I imagine we're going to see some very cagey play. So a lot of limping from the small blind, a lot of checking in the big blind. Neither of these players are really incentivized to go crazy against each other. No. Well, there's a four on the flop, so Sinclair with the advantage. Three to one favorite here. Absolutely, Nick. There is an incentive. A kind of tacit unspoken agreement they should stay out of each other's way not just because they're the two big stacks but if we are going to rank players by ability and experience probably the two in inverted commas best players at the final table whoa isn't it cheating if they don't just go all in against each other <laughs> all the time <laughs> got charlie carroll watching on twitch Epiphany77 says that he is rooting for Alex and Jack with a heart. You know what? Charlie, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I actually just posted on my socials. I am Team Sinclair today. Uh, well, I hope Charlie roots for me when I get it in Ace-King versus Aces. And I run the four flush. <laughs> <laughs> so hurrah bets. Bet 80,000 on the flop. Now has just 14% and checks to Sinclair. A reminder, this was unraised pre. It's a blind v. blind confrontation. Sinclair checks behind. River is the queen of diamonds, so a pair of fours, still the best hand. Question. Ten high, unlikely to be good. Does Rabetz wave the white flag of surrender or does he try to buy it it feels like if he was going to try to buy it that he might have hit some semi bluffs on the turn he could have made right no i guess not okay <laughs> so here it comes yeah and that looks like full pot that looks like four hundred thousand. so follow-up question nick yep can Sinclair find a call with just a pair of fours? He absolutely can here, for sure. I think uh, it does look pretty weak, but it's blind v. blind. There's a lot of weird lines being played here. And this seems like the kind of run out where your opponent will just try and bail you off a lot of the time. Uh, am I, is it an easy call? By no stretch of the imagination, is it an easy call? But I think it's one that Sinclair is totally capable of making. These guys have so much experience playing in these positions as well, and they really know what others are capable of. I would really, oh, he wants to call it. Something, something doesn't feel right. Don't look at him. You can tell. You can tell he really wants to make the call here. Oh, he's looking at the chips. You know what that means? Well, this is exactly the kind of staying out of each other's way we were yes, talking about. Mate, let's go. <laughs> Great hero call from Jack Sinclair. The four is good. And Sinclair will win the pot from Harabets, and I think that is going to change the standings. It does. Jack Sinclair is now chip leader at this final table. He's got 6.8 million. Harabets drops down to 5.7 million. Sinclair, 84 big blinds. Although, the clock's ticking down to zero. Are we going to squeeze in one more hand at this blind level, or are we going to 5,100? I think she started shuffling. Sinclair says, look at that chipopotamus. Actually, that's the most impressive part to me, is that Sinclair's not doing a victory lap around the building right now. I'd be, I'd be <laughs> fist-pumping myself into oblivion if I made that call. I love it so much. I love it so much. Um, yep, yeah, okay, I'm so glad I put my bet on Sinclair. It's, he's off to a great start here, is what I'm trying to say. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at right now. So we are officially at the 5100 blind level now, which means Alexandra Valimia has dropped down to 12 bigs. Rabetz is on the button with ace queen. A little more. I'm sorry. And he is raising to 200,000. 6 3 off for the short stack. 
Oh, terrible. Sorry, guys. So they, they did bump the uh, went up, the yeah. blinds in the end. I thought the official rule was if they started shuffling. You I still thought it play. was when the I thought it was when the deck is cut. Okay. Okay. In any case, a nice, easily divisible big blind now. Joe. Human Great. Jack. Yeah, this is the Lily White luxury level. This is, uh, <laughs> this is where the human calculator comes into his yeah, own. That's what I thought. And we can all see that the average stack is still lower than it should be. 45 big blinds. So, you know, we still need to see some consolidation over the course of the next 90 minutes. Um, one thing I should highlight is that we do have a few people on the rail. We were wondering yesterday whether we'd see spectators around the final table. Significantly fewer people and significantly quieter than the last two legs of the EPT. It, it's 1.30 in the afternoon, which in poker time is about 9 o'clock in the morning. Good point well made. <laughs> Secondly, I think if David Doherty had been here, we might have been seeing a little different scene. Unfortunately, he didn't make it through the day yesterday. But I do think that things are going to build as the day goes on, especially given who ends up short-handed shorter-handed i should say like yes. this kid in the white jacket here if uh, he gets a three-handed or heads up it's gonna get loud out there as uh, richard martin famously said let us get loud <laughs> I, 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 that sounds off Oh, no, take it for Sorry. Jack Sinclair. Yeah, yeah. So we've referenced a few times that we saw Jack back in Barcelona. We covered yes. the final table well, of you. the Australia's <laughs> main event. A record-breaking tournament with 6,313 entries. And for second place, Jack got 377K. But he has had a couple of seven-figure scores at the World Series of Poker. Never heard of it. Ace 10 in the cutoff for Sinclair. Gets a fold from Hamilton in the small blind. Queen 3 offsuit for Dan Kishu in the big blind. That is another raise and take it for the big stack. And Sinclair up over 7.3 million now. 73 bigs. So as he starts to pull away from the second in chips here and even further away from Alexandre Volumier with just 12 big blinds. I really hope we see him change gears and start to do what we see on all of those final tables that we cover you guys and just start to change gears and start to lean into the other stacks here and try and get that snowball rolling. Ian Hamilton is on the button. Has only 10 caches to his name. Came second in the mystery bounty event that we ran at EPT Prague back in March. So this is blind v blind. Kishu in the small. <clears throat> and that is a walk for Roman Harabets. <clears throat> As we anticipated, yeah, just a little bit more cagey today. I mean, it was slowing down anyway yesterday at the end of play, but yeah, as you said, it's something to do with getting another ladder. It's something to do with getting to the final day, which of course is in itself an accomplishment. Five. Five. I mean, it flashed really high. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Close. Close. Good news, you get a new card. Well, pocket fives here for the short stack under the gun. Oh, man. Yep, 12 big blinds, five-handed. I wouldn't be surprised if he just plays this as a jam. I didn't. But didn't we just hear someone say they saw a five? I don't think they said what the card was. Oh, maybe they said high. Yes, it flashed high. Ooh, Sinclair in the big blind. He looks over as if to say, you watch me wake up with it here, buddy. Watch me. Oh, nope, 7-4 off. No, get in the bin. <laughs> Probably would have got there, but 
he probably would have flopped quads, but we'll no, never that's, know. That's beside the point. One point three. Is this like a camo shirt? Is it sort of like a is it sort of like a blue, like a digital camo? It's what I like to call Arctic camouflage. Okay, it has that kind of grey. Yeah. Black. <laughs> Remember from Inception? Yes. <laughs> Shoot out in the winter brain fortress. The sequence that Christopher Nolan has admitted is inspired by which James Bond film? Oh, the one with Pierce Brosnan. You only live never again. You, you never live. Oh, I don't know. Diamonds are for with love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the most famous Bond film set in a winter resort? Skyfall. So we've got... Was it Goldmember? Hoth. Kishu versus Harabets. And we've got an open-ended straight draw versus an overpair. And if Kishu plays anything like the most of us, which he kind of does... Yeah, having uh, an overpair with jacks on a seven high board, you're going to play it fast. Sure, he's going to continue here, and he bets around half pot with the overpair. Seems good. We've spoken about this before. And thank you to HD Harani and also to Tobias Lechness for correctly identifying on the Majesty Secret Service as Christopher Nolan's favorite Bond film. Oh, I've never that seen that one. Inspired that scene in Inception. <laughs> 007 is always coming. <laughs> now, thank, thank you, Venus. 007 is always coming. The uh, the paired board now for Jax. Keisha to act first again. And I don't know. I feel like it might be a card to continue. It's like uh, definitely helps you counterfeit some 6 7, although that might have put a raise in on the flop, of course. But hmm. he kind of sizes down here, Joe. He sizes same, which technically is down based on right. the pot size. A very, it's to me this kind of feels like a, I like my hand but I don't want the pot to go crazy I, I don't know if Hrabek might actually pick up on that and put in a kind of raise here at this point he has showdown though so the call makes sense of course he has the straight draw to go with it as well so no need and that's the Ocho <sighs> ESPN 8 the Ocho one of the three wrong ways to play jacks you should just bet 300k again. Yeah, uh, he's going to continue anyway, but it's sort of a blocker bet scenario. Betting a call, straight takes it down. So Roberts closes the gap between himself and Jackson Clare. It's a big hit for Chizu. Yeah, big hit. I'm. In I'm fact, not... Roberts has retaken the chip lead. I don't realize quite how big that pot was, yeah. quite how big that bet on the river was. Yeah. It's now 7.6 million for Harabets, 7.1 million for Sinclair, and yeah, poor Dan Kishi has now dropped down to a 34 big blind stack. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because, you know, you're, when we play and we size our bets, we're betting within, you know, portions of the pot for the most part. We use the pot as a sort of guide to decide what sizes we're going to be using. And even in this situation where he bet small, he bet half pot on the flop and then even smaller on the turn and then even smaller on the river, it's still such a huge portion of the total chips in play. It was enough yeah. to swing him back into the chip lead. So you need to be careful in those situations. I was kind of surprised to see a river bet from the Jacks there. It seemed like a pretty ugly run out. And given their positions, I think it's totally acceptable for your opponent to have some random fives in there once in a while. Obviously, pocket fives being a pretty significant part of that. But uh, as played, Kishu now down to 34 big blinds. So this is a raise from Jack Sinclair on the button with King-10. And Ian Hamilton folds the 9-8. Haven't seen Hamilton play a hand yet. And I can understand, as the second shows his stack, how he wants to avoid getting into any trouble. With Alexandre Valemier hovering around the 10 big blind mark. So at what point do we start introducing throwables, guys? Well, we discussed yesterday that the... Foam brick yep. is a thing. You yep. can get it from the Star Store right now. 
that maybe we could give the finalists foam bricks, but you can only use it once. Right, mm. one limited foam brick moment. I mean, for example, when you get aces in against ace king and he runs out the four flush. See oh. that? That's that's a definitely a foam brick. Yeah, moment. that's a mandatory foam brick. I that's when I would need a throw upable. <laughs> and I puke all over the table. You only get one per per trip though, Joe. Something very important we haven't mentioned, which we'll get to after this hand, as Sinclair opens in the cutoff with ace five of diamonds, and Dan Kishu defends his big blind with king queen. There's a sale at pennies. Better than that. Jack nine deuce on the flop. Ace high still the best hand. Gut shot for Kishu. Plus two live cards. Checks the action to Sinclair. Board pairs on the turn. Sinclair now three to one favorite. Kishu leading the turn after it went check check on the flop 250 <laughs> to 550 has he been here has he been at this table the whole day because this is not the person i'd be bluffing right now i i have to say again i feel like this is the second time we've seen one of these smaller sizings and it's just in the modern game i don't think you're gonna get much credit unless you're gonna unless you're queuing yourself up for a big bluffarino on the river okay well the board is bricked out for dan looking at a pot of one million Okay, speaking of which. Is this enough? 550,000, half pot. Wow, gets a fold from Sinclair. It Very was good. enough. Very good, yeah. Two barrels get the job done, and Dan manages to chip up to nearly 40 big blinds. The big news is that with it being main event final table day with it being friday the 28th of october oh it's the mini ept london main event as we see some stats on dan kishu um this tournament by the way which starts a bit later on it's 12 15 eastern so that's 5 15 uk time 6 15 central european time five dollars fifty to play it has a 50k guarantee but added to the prize pool are WCOOP tickets and an EPT Prague package. The winner of this tournament is going to be going to EPT Prague. That package worth about 7,000 euros, by the way. The runner-up gets a 1K WCOOP ticket. Third through ninth get $109 WCOOP tickets. Tenth through sixteenth get $11 WCOOP tickets. This is added to the prize pool. Great ad! Good value. Yeah, get involved, guys. Nice to have a little something to put on the side while you're watching the old stream. A little bit of inspiration for the for the pokers online. Yeah, we've had three low buy and MTTs every day today, no exception. But I guess the one that really stands out, the one that no one will want to miss, is that mini main starting this evening with those WCOOP tickets and that EPT Prague package added. Yeah, and if you guys win that package, you'll be joining the three of us in Prague, which is super exciting. Uh, I can uh, uh, Nick, Nick, well, I'm, I'm trying to incentivize people. The moment you mention that we're going to be there, <laughs> it might put people off. It Isn't is a that? beautiful city, guys. You definitely want to be there. Uh, two points. Your old two uncle points. Nick might even buy you a shot. Hamilton. Nice choice of city to buy a shot in. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cheap over there. Sick move, Nick. Yeah, you cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you up, but we're going to stay at the uh, Cloud9 bar Sorry, at the Hilton. Uh, <laughs> that won't save you any money. Hamilton has opened with the Snowmen's. First time we've seen him play at the final table, and he's being exploited by Harabets, who's re-raised from the small blind with ace-deuce of hearts. Sinclair with king-jack of hearts in the bag. So if he thinks that he is making a move... Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's got one of those hands that can kind of just call the three bet, but it might even be a hand he decides to turn into a cold four bet. He can fold it too. I think all I think I think all have merit. 
I think, I think the fold on the in the context of the final table against one of the bigger chip stacks is probably going to be more standard. Hamilton now with a spot where you probably should be thinking about just ripping the eights free. You don't want to be exploited. Your opponents will have tons of three bets here, especially as one of the bigger stacks. In this case, the biggest. I mean, Hamilton is handcuffed for as long as he's got Volumia sat alongside yeah, him. Yeah, that's, that's one of the considerations. You're absolutely right, James. That's one of the things that you need to be thinking about here. Am I about to rip this into aces and then regret the ladder that I could potentially be guaranteed if I just allow Volumia to sort of be pressured into getting chips in in more and more situations as he becomes shorter? All in. All in. Let's go. That's how you do it, boy. Credit to Ian Hamilton for making this play and gets the snap fold from Harabets. Yeah, don't let that big stack bully you. Ocho's in. That was my vote. And just to clarify, Nick, that's a situation where you never want to be calling there with Ace, right? Oh, right, exactly, yeah. I mean, it's already a stack depth where if you're calling, you're kind of in a situation where you're trying to set mine. It's a little bit bigger than a, than a pure set mine, but it's still very difficult to play on most boards. It's just going to be very difficult to play as a call. You're going to end up committing a huge portion of your stack and then fold a lot of the time, which is not ideal. So I think you just want to recognize that your opponent is going to try and exploit you as the short stack and just get it in there. In particular, being second in chips, you're going to be exploited more often than one yeah. of the short stacks even. So, yeah, I think the shove, very, very apt there. Well played, Hamilton. Robert's back in action, opening on the button with Jack-8 offsuit. Raises to 200,000. Ace-Queen for Jack Sinclair. And these two are pretty even right now. You can see their stack sizes on screen. Seven, Sorry, 6.77 million for Harabet. 6.68 million for Sinclair. So the two big daddy chip stacks, again, Sinclair might just opt for a flat here just to try and keep the pot small against one of the other big stacks. But the three bet is totally fine too. Does decide to go for the three bet, and he goes chunky. That's a little bit over 4x, if I'm not mistaken. Four times the initial open. And a quick fold. Yeah, and now we get the uh, switcheroo once again. As Sinclair goes number one on the leaderboard with 71 bigs. Robets with 67 bigs. I'm loving it. We talk about... Who's on top, first, second, retakes lead, yada, yada. When you're there, it's not that important, right? It feels nice. How do you mean, Joe? Like, you shouldn't really be caring that much if you're number one on the leaderboard or number two on the leaderboard, right? <laughs> I think you want to be the chip leader. It's a very advantageous position. But not if it's just a couple of big blinds. I, I think it, it 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 matters it matters when there's a big difference. I think if you're focusing too much and like, oh, I have to retake yeah. the chip lead, I have to be sure. chip leader. Sure. I think no. that can be detrimental. We we, we, we kind of spoke about this yesterday when we were talking about average stacks, right, Joe? Like putting too much emphasis on something that is sort of like arbitrary. And yeah. Like it doesn't. It's not going to impact on a lot of your decisions. It does have some use, like I said later on when we're looking at ICM and stuff, but. For the most part, you're just going to be going, okay, what cards have I been given? How can I play them to the best of my ability? Yes. You know, agonizing over two or three big blinds isn't going to make a big difference. But keeping an eye on whether or not you're pulling away is huge because then you can start to make bigger adjustments in your game. Totally. Yeah. Well, a pair of eights here for Sinclair. Hamilton has missed this board. He defended his big blind to the opening raise from Sinclair. And Jack is going to continue. 150. Hamilton's actually the first time I felt irrationally angry over someone having the hood and the sunglasses <laughs> out. I want to see his face. I don't. I mean, like, I don't want him to be at a disadvantage, but, like, he's, he's a nice-looking boy. In all seriousness, when he walked into the room today, when we had that shot of him coming down towards the table. Who is that? The first time I've yeah. seen what he actually looks like. Yeah. And not Adidas Sith Lord. Nine bigs now for Volumia. I actually don't know what brand it is, guys. Don't don't pull me up on that. But you know, sportswear Sith Lord. 
Oh, trust me, if someone spots that it's Puma, you will hear about it. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but... Uh, it's actually Balenciaga. Okay, yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry. He's got his thing. I respect that. Folds round. And Dan Kishu gets a walk. If only the lead character of hashtag dog poop girl had taken her dog for a walk before getting on the subway, chaos may not have ensued. <laughs> that is the description, isn't it? I love that. All right, hand number 19 now. All in. King five suited being played as a jam here. Seems reasonable. Rob the cutoff. Uh, so what are we looking at, guys? About nine bits. Nine point five five big blinds. How much was it all in? Eight hundred? Ninety five. Ninety five. Do you want another fun bond trivia question? Of course I do. In which James Bond film was there a CIA agent called yep. Hamilton, and why did he have that name? Isn't it the most recent one? Nope. The Force Awakens. What? We've, we've, we've done that joke already, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't griff in this. I'm sorry. It's not a character for me. Carry on. A CIA agent named Hamilton, and why was he given that name? A lot of people are saying live and let die. There was a character called Hamilton in Live and Let Die, but he was not a CIA agent. Okay. All right. He We're was actually warmer. an MI6 agent, but he had that name for the same reason that the CIA agent was called Hamilton. He loved ham. I'm keeping an eye on YouTube and Twitch. I haven't seen a correct answer yet. We'll get to the point where everyone will name all 25 movies. <laughs> <someone. laughs> so we've seen an open from the Jack-9 and a flat from Kravitz in the small blind. Sinclair, of course, 6-4 of hearts. Beautiful multi-way player. Going to get in there, too, for the minimum. And there's an Ocho. Wow. A set for Harabets. And the open-ended straight draw for Dan Kishu. Sinclair does pretty well when it comes to running cards to make a flush. <laughs> Kishu does want to continue here with the straight draw. This is such an important moment on the flop, though. Do you check raise with the, with the, with the set, or do you allow your opponent to continue barreling? We're about 33 big blinds effective after Kishu puts in his bet, and that's going to factor into that decision, right? You need to figure out a way to make the pot big enough where you can get your opponent all in for less than pot at some stage. This is a sloppy wet board, Nick. It is a very, very wet board. I know I... you like your board sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> so Kishu's bet of 325000 has been raised by Harabet. Sinclair is out of here. I like my boards like I like my Joes. Is there an argument, by the way, to not see betting this flop? Um, in a multi-way pot, you could probably, it's going to be very similar in value checking and betting here, yeah. I think, because you kind of disguise the strength of your hand to a certain degree and get paid more on later streets if you do get there. I think the continuation is super standard, though, for sure. And there is a check raise and a call. Guys, look at the size of the pot now. That was a very, very important part of this hand. The check raise in the flop is going to facilitate Nolan at some stage if we see the right cards fall for the Ochos. Well, that is a brick. Harabet's now a 4-1 to favorite. When Kishu calls the raise, you got to fire again here, right, if you're Harabet's? You've already proven you can get value. You've already proven that there's something to protect against. Yeah, absolutely. I think at this stage, you just want to size your bet in a way where you can get the rest on the river. That's the whole point of the check raise, right? So find a size that's small enough to keep your opponent in, but allows you to shove for less than pot on the river and make it look like it's believable. This seems like it. 750K. Hard to keep chasing straights for this kind of money. 
Yeah, very pricey at this stage, but you do need to punish the, the other draws. If he if Kishu does have a draw like he does, you're only going to get value here, right? If he has a made hand, you're going to get value on both streets regardless. I don't think I can keep chasing here. It's expensive. You can fold and still have 28 bigs left. We've seen Kishu get kind of attached to situations, though. If he feels like he's being exploited, we've seen him get very sticky. Sticky, for example, yeah. the 9-7 of spades spot where he felt like he was being exploited as a result of that misclick. Drawing to a flush, in my opinion, obviously way different than drawing to a straight also, right? Like, I know that you're not going to be up against ace-jack here that often the way this hand is played out, but if you hit your queen, like, it's still <gasps> not the nuts. Oh. He has made the call, and this hand is going to the river. 3.9 in the middle. Kishu, the effective stack, with just 2 million behind. And he does not get there. Mm. Oh, it is still a tough river for H, though. Of course, you are losing to that flush now. Will that be enough to slow him down? Or does he just continue regardless? I mean, if he's going to have Jack-9 here, he's going to have the spades too, Joe. Yes, absolutely. You can rep the flush. Maybe a set is too strong to get to lay down for what's left versus what's in the middle. Well, and and also, Providence can just take away his ability to bluff entirely and just put Dan all in. That is true, but you can tell that Harabets is not overly happy that the river is a spade. He's playing a time bank card. He's thinking this through. I mean, if he checks, then the only way to win the pot with Jack-9 is to bluff. So it's, it's a really, really tough one. I will say this, that Kishu's goal has to play in such a funny way that his opponents don't oh. really know what's going on. Yep. And he's achieved that. Roberts shoves on Dan Kishu, who has nothing but jack high. Here's the other option. How happy, by the way, is Harabets he didn't get snap called by yeah, Flush? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now you know your opponent does not have spades. I mean, this saved Kishu. I think he's done the right thing here, though, for sure. I think this is the line. Once you've queued up that riverbed, I think you just go for it here and just try and get called by two pair or whatever. You know, you take away the jack nine possibility of bluffing, the queen jack possibility of bluffing, and very, very big pot there for Roberts. Yeah. And he is now very much in control with 86 big blinds in number one position right now. And just to conclude that mini trivia quiz, it was Jackson Jordan watching on YouTube who correctly identified Diamonds Are Forever as the movie where there is a CIA agent called Hamilton. Live and Let Die, there is an MI6 agent called Hamilton. Both movies directed by Guy Hamilton. Oh. And you think that's geeky? Felix Leiter, as played by Jeffrey Wright yes. in the Daniel Craig movies, yeah. wears a Hamilton watch. Was that directed by Guy Hamilton? No, just oh. more CIA Hamilton productions and so on. Well, I saw what was the last movie with Jeffrey Wright in it? No Time to Die. I saw No Time to Die and I saw Hamilton. So there's another connection. Roman Robert now with 84 big blinds is opening King 7 off on the button trying to wield that big big stack and we see a 3 bet here from the small blind Again, of Jack Sinclair. Also, Hamilton is an anagram for Am in Hilton. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Statric. Thank you, Statric. <laughs> Sinclair has the ace of spades. That's all he needs. He has, um, he has the winning hand. I think regardless of who has the chip lead between Harabets and Sinclair, you're not wrong, Joe. It's switching places backwards and forwards. One thing is very clear. Those are two big stacks. And then you've got Hamilton on 30 bigs. Kishu on 20 bigs, and Vlemier on fewer than 10 bigs. So those two players are in a position to really put the pressure on the other three. None of these guys can be feeling that comfortable right now.
Round to the short stack and the small blind. Morning. Have some of that. At least his tone of voice is consistent when he moves all in. Upbeat. Adorable. Hamilton folds the 10-9. So 22 hands played so far at the final table. One elimination. Nils Poodle eliminated on the second hand of the day. Ran aces into ace-king. But Jack Sinclair got him with a four flush. It's kind of a glass half empty way of looking at it. I like to think he survived one hand of the day. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure that's how he's looking at it right now. <laughs> I mean, to accentuate the positive, he cashed for a six figure score. Hey, he man. had 50K in live caches coming into this tournament. So. And also, he was, despite the fact that it was a horrific beat, it is about as early as you could be, he had a big grin on his face. Probably just happy to get his phone back, but... <laughs> we have an hour left to play at this blind level, by the way, as we see Dan Kishu get a walk in the big blind. Plus, in a way, it might be better to go broke early from this and cash out and exchange your money before the pound keeps taking a nosedive. <laughs> Mark Whatever is trying to test me. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He asks on YouTube, James, which golf balls are used by Bond and Goldfinger in Goldfinger? Oh, that one I actually know. Go on. A Slazenger. Specific. You've got to be specific. The 7 and 8 are used. I think it's Goldfinger uses the 7, he uses the 8. No. Goldfinger plays a Slazenger 1. Bond plays the Penfold Hearts. Bond finds a uh, Slazenger 7, which he uh, swatches, okay. switches with the Slazenger 1 to make it look like Goldfinger has played was, the wrong ball. That was pretty good for me, though, honestly. Finding the Slazenger 7. Round to the blinds. Another potential big stack confrontation here, Nick. Harabets with ace nine suited in the small. Yeah, as, you, as you've already sort of uh, picked up on, I, think, I feel like we're going to see a lot of these encounters at this stage, given the fact that they're sat directly next to each other. In this case, just a raise and a take. It seems good. Nine five off. No need to get fancy with that garbage. I think we're going to find out one day that James's actual first name is Cornelius. And then at, like, age 13, he decided he was going to be James because of James Bond, and his parents just let, him, <laughs> just let him roll with it, and he's just been called James for the last 30 years. Like, at some point, there's going to be some official paperwork yeah, that, I mean, that we're going to be like, who I that? knew it! Who's Cornelius? Cornelius. <laughs> so Robin Harabetz has nearly a half a million in live earnings, had that second-place finish in the UK IPT High Roller earlier this week. Can he take down this EPT main event? Currently the chip leader with five players remaining. The sandwich guy comes in like, hey, I got a, <laughs> I got a Reuben for Cornelius. Anybody? <laughs> Cornelius? Shut up, shut up, get out of here. <laughs> he just doesn't want to expose himself, so he just goes hungry that day. Hello. Sinclair, blind v. blind, just ripping it in. King five off versus the short stack here. Totally standard, guys. Ten big blinds effective. King five off. Blind v. blind. What are you doing with it? 100% shove. All in. 100%. It's a nice game. We had all in. There you go. He's just making reference. I like the way you say all in. He goes, yeah, you know, keeping it happy. Like that. I really want a Reuben now. Damn. <laughs> I set myself up. Anybody have any good sandwich places in London? Anywhere in Mayfair do a really good Reuben. Hit us up in the chat. Hit us up on Twitter. We'd like First to hear from I you. I you were saying Alley. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Kishu under the gun with Queen 10 off. 
Kishu now with that. Oh, it's not the awkward stack size. It's worse than that. It's 20 big blinds. Hamilton with the awkward stack size of 29 big blinds. Providence, pocket fours, boxes. Yeah, Park Tom says it's got to be the Boots meal deal. Uh, thank you, Tom. Hamilton. Queen Jack suited in the big. As I mentioned, does have more of that awkward stack size, the 29 big blinds. This guy just walked into the booth. I'm like, you don't look like James. He doesn't look like James. He doesn't act like James. He doesn't sound like James. Queen, nine, seven, two diamonds. I'd usually wait to the start of a new hand to bring someone in, but why waste even one second of this man's valuable time sitting here doing nothing? Poker Stars Team Pro and recent millionaire <laughs> Sam Grafton. What's up, buddy? I'm good, mate. Couldn't miss the uh, denouement of, uh, he said with a French accent, with a certain je ne sais quoi, um, of EPT London. Hamilton with top pair. Seems like a fairly easy spot to call. And call, he does. 850,000 in the middle. Turn card is a jack two pair now for Hamilton. Yeah, and uh, it's a bad card when you've got pocket fours. Obviously, with the draws completing, King Jack, Jack 10, King 10, all going ahead of you. And now the only question is whether Krabbe wants to turn his hand into a bluff. You know, if you were playing full ring and you were very early position, I think that's certainly what you would do. Um, as chip leader, you also incentivize somewhat to pressurize someone like Hamilton sitting on a middle stack. You know, three of five. And looks like that's what he's trying to do. Obviously, you would get a kind of an immediate fold from a hand like seven, six. Um, or, you know, a nine without a flush draw, an ace, nine. Queen, jack, top two. Very, very strong. And now it's going to be interesting to see how Hamilton wants to play it. Hamilton going into the time bank. Yeah, and obviously there's a lot of rivers where you don't have great visibility with Queen Jack, and against the chip leader, he might just opt to put it in now and end the hand. And it's, it's probably a very genuine tank. How do I want to proceed? Yeah. Hamilton announces all in. I imagine the fall from Rabbits will not take long. Sounds like it already happened. Crucial pot for Hamilton, up to 40 big blinds now. Michael Western no, out of that play. <laughs> weighs in to say, love to hear from Grafton. Will he be commentating more frequently again? I'm going to venture a guess and say it's going to depend on how long that 5.5 million lasts. <laughs> if I run through it in the nightclubs of London. <laughs> so one night out then. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, no, I see you're taking the bus everywhere. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, did you hear Alex Keating? Alex Keating's bus theory. Can you can you talk? To, I saw this thing on TikTok where this girl said that we, we we live in a simulation. Yes. Because when you're sitting in your car, you can just reach across to the other side of your car. But on a bus, there's all this extra room. Yeah, a bus takes up the same amount of room on a road as a car. But then you get in a bus. <laughs> There's like two seats, a gap, two seats. It's like a little mini nightclub in there, and it's a glitch, which proves right, we're, in, we're a in a simulation. Yeah. Yes. So I thought Alex Keating claimed that he'd uh, basically invented this. Um, we have an all-in from Alexandra. This was an all-in after an open from Roberts. Uh, well, just to, we'll release. So much? N55. Yeah, the offsuit King Ten. Cuspy. Pretty close. 
Yeah, and we'll release. I think that makes sense as, as chip leader. You want to stick up for your raises, but it's That's also right. not so bad <laughs> having Alexander just giving us a little smile uh, short. Yeah, so uh, Alex Keating was uh, regaling us with these stories. Also, some other strange conspiracy theories which we won't repeat on air. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty... The way he was doing it was very, very hilarious. So we happened to get a bus last night. I, I got a bus... It wasn't specifically to just prove this theory. No, well, actually, it was funny. We got in, and then I told the Brazilian... I was with, like, uh, the Brazilian lads, showing them a bit of the yeah, East London lifestyle. Yeah, same, same and, uh, okay. you know, I was suddenly aware how spacious it was, and, you know, being... Drawn have, you, in, have you come around? <laughs> being drawn into the bus theory. <laughs> Guys, next time you're in a bus, check so, it out. It's one, massive. One thing I will <laughs> say. Like a stadium. One thing I will say. There is a lot of room. But the bus doesn't take up the same amount of room a car does. It uses more of the lane on both sides. Yeah. Well, Alex predica uh, predicated the story with, like, how much gap do you think there is between the car and the edge of the road? There's, like, a foot. Is this enough? You know, what, it, he, he did a really good preamble, is, is the word. A really good preamble about how, how it feels to be in a car. Anyway, it's a pretty interesting uh, a pretty interesting conspiracy theory or sim theory. Uh, I really enjoyed enjoyed the story. Jack 10 suited for Hamilton. Okay. Ace Jack for Roberts. Yeah, and this is one of the little wrinkles about being a chip leader. You would attack this Jack 10 open very, very widely. But when you actually have a sort of a good hand, you just call. <laughs> And the reason is exactly this. You this. keep in a, an absolutely dominated combo like Jack-10 of Hearts is going to feel very strong on this board uh, when actually you have the, the top top. Hamilton has continued for 150,000. I was going to say, I think there is meant to be a check raise with top pair when you have the larger kickers, ace jack, king jack being in there quite often. Yeah, and this is, again, not an exciting spot for Hamilton. Really wants to avoid playing big pots against a covering stack. And, you know, you have to balance the, the two objectives. You want to protect the vulnerable top pair when you have jack ten, but... Now you get check raised. The pot, pot is more bloated, and, and what a brick on the turn. Wow. Does, does bring a flush draw, but Ace Jack looking very, very strong on that turn. I think I can count on one hand the number of raises I've seen with top pair and only top pair in six days of coverage, it, five days of coverage. It's pretty rare, but you do want to do it some of the time, and this is kind of what it looks like when you do have a very strong top pair. That's where we see the most check raising with just the one top pair. Nine. Yeah. And uh, sizing down a little bit because also doesn't, Roman actually doesn't want to be uh, clash that much with Hamilton either and, unless he's absolutely certain he's got the, be the best hand. Let's imagine it from Hamilton's point of view. Look at all the eight nines, eight tens, five sixes, potential gut shots, some of which will have added a flush draw now. And Got to feel like Jack-10 is going to be good here quite, quite often. Yep, absolutely. Very difficult spot for the young Englishman. Hamilton does make the call. 3.3 million in the middle. Yeah, and sets up under pot. 2.4 back with 3.3 .3 in the mi middle. And that's a very good card for... Well, none of the draws complete. Yeah, but it dampens the strength of the ace-jack for Roman a little bit. Let's see if he does still go for value. All-in's a very natural size. Right. But begins to get a little bit more difficult to get called. There are some, some queens in Hamilton's range. Not too many. 650. Yeah, and he downsizes because of that. Doesn't wow. feel if he puts it all in. Hamilton can call with that much worse. And, you know, this is actually a very intelligent bet when we see the strength of Hamilton's hand. And he's wow. Angry. Yeah. Just gets three full streets. 
Check raise. Lead. Yep. Lead. Yep. Huge pot. Yeah. Roberts wins a four and a half million chip pot. Adds two point three million to his stack. Hamilton down to eighteen bigs. So we've got Kishu, Hamilton, Villamure, all under twenty big blinds. This is a two horse race right now between Jack Sinclair and Roman Roberts. Yeah, absolutely. And and you got a feel for Ian Hamilton there, up against the chip, chip leader, the flush draw and the gut shots breaking off. But what an intelligent bet from Roman as well. Obviously, uh, you know, I haven't been able to follow the co coverage that, that closely, but has had a stack for long periods in this tournament. And, and we could see why they're, pa you know, really important to get that extra 600K where maybe you would have forced a fold had you been greedy and gone for it all. Yeah, I just got an insta call. Yeah, pick the size where he always gets called. I mean, I wonder what the reaction would be if he bet small and then got shoved on there, Sam. You know, it's like, uh, it's because it, I think at that point it becomes very strong, but still obviously possible to have some bluffs in there as well. Although probably not for that much be behind. Yeah, he's just relying on the fact that because of the situation and because of him being a covering stack, right. um, he's not going to get raised too often. Right. Kishu raising out of an 18 big blind stack with king seven suited on the button. We've got a frail for rabbits over there. Sinclair in the big blind with ace nine. I think he can just shove this. Seems like it. There's yep. the shove. I love it. I love it. Very, very standard spot. Kishu really does not want the PICM. Of the IM, ICMP, the ICM punt. <laughs> His PFR. RIP. <laughs> For the MVP. Yeah, and maybe, I guess, potentially a little bit of posturing from Chisu doesn't want uh, to give away the strength of his hand to Sinclair will seem to his opponents that he's raising too wide. I think that is an absolutely fine raise with the with the suited king. Sure. And just unlucky that Sinclair picks up the ace in the big blind. <laughs> Frustrating though when you you know when you're the sixteen big blind stack, you know, the chips in the middle, giving up another two big blinds, very important at this late stage. I hear what you're saying. You said he's a little unlucky that uh, Sinclair wakes up with Ace-9 there, but wouldn't Sinclair be able to shove a whole lot of hands? A absolutely, and that's why you make sure you opening with a king or an ace, some kind of blocker in your hand. Because, you, know, you know, sometimes they are just going to have 7-3 off or 8-5 eight, eight, off. You know, an offsuit hand with no high card can't really rejam. You know, the, the, the blocking properties uh, okay. in the end game become really, really important. Very good. Thank you. Hamilton under the gun here, opening min raise two hundred thousand. Ooh, we're gonna have a little sweat with hand. Two blanks for Hamilton. We're gonna play this hand from someone else's perspective. There we go, Jackson Clare's perspective. Who folded king queen? I think things are getting a little weird here. It's Villamure. Whose hand we're going to play, and he's already all in, so we don't get to really yeah, and, uh, see much here. Two of the shorter stacks colliding potentially here. I wonder what kind of hand Hamilton would be tanking with. Maybe an ace jack suited or something of that nature. Our ace jack off, an ace ten suited, which would obviously be in horrible shape. Pocket eights. Oh. Something that's not doing great against tens of the chips yeah. would be in. Yes, yes. I guess the one one clear flip would be an ace jack. King jack. Yeah, <laughs> certainly Alex feeling more confident in the tens the longer the tank goes on. And Hamilton. Seven. Oh, now we're going to get to see it. Oh. Ace seven suited. Uh, I, I, yeah. And we want, again, a, a very, again, very legitimate open, building the opening range around suited aces, suited kings, to prevent the rejams. Uh, don't know whether you're going to want to cool off there very often, but Hamilton's did seem to give it uh, some consideration. And demoralizing orbit since I arrived for Ian Hamilton, plunging down to neck and neck with the other two short stacks. And is the uh, Jackson Clare folding King Queen off? Is that 
standard? Is that crazy that that's kind of uh, a head scratcher for me? Yeah, not not crazy. Um, I I think moving all in then is there is definitely something you could consider doing. For I sure. mean, it seems playing results that he avoided uh, a collision with a the, monster. Yeah. yeah, collision with the pocket tens. Although the power of shoving King Queen is even when they wake up with tens. Yeah, you're right. in the flip. Yeah, right. still flipping against the other stack behind. Kishu, King Jack under the gun. Not the shortest stack, mm -hmm. but not far from Hamilton. Kishu shoving. How much do you guys have? 16 and something. So it's still like 16 big blinds, though. This is, uh, this is a lot to commit on a final table, Sam. What do you think at this stage, especially from that position? Yeah, perhaps shows a little an experience of, of Chishu. Chishu. And, and maybe, you know, if you're, not, if you're new to this scenario and your raises, the raises keep getting shoved on, doesn't have um, the insight we have to the, the strength of the hands. Just a little bit of perhaps... A bit of desperation just to, like, force it through. Oh, oh my goodness. What a time to wake up. Yeah. Pocket queens for Villemir, who starts the hand with just slightly more chips than Kishu. Yeah. Let's see if this stuff does work Hold out. On. Hold on. Hamilton has not acted no. yet. Hamilton's like, look at that ladder. Look at the ladder. Look at the ladder. And Kishu is behind is at risk. If Villamir gets bad beat here, we'll be left with just over one small blind. Yeah, big hand for everyone. Hamilton as well would go up the ladder. Um, really intense moment for all three of these guys. Yep. Queens against King Jacko. King Jack, no, the, the old man. King Jack. I know who's shorter. Kishu, a big dog here. Hashtag big dog poop. Yeah, like... 1.6, Looking for a king, the only immediate out. Yeah, like the pound versus the dollar, one of these hands is significantly worse. Thanks, fun guy. 10 eye flop, not great news for Kishu. Thank you. He's going to need some sort of help here. Still, the only immediate out is a king. Maybe a sweat on the turn if we can see another straight card. Yeah, they're all in. They're all in, yeah. They're all in. No, and that two. turn is a six. No additional outs. No sweat. A king and only a king will save Romanian filmmaker Dan Kishu. No king. That's, That's going to do it. GG. Dan defied the odds, said yesterday, wrote me a message overnight, said, I know I play a little funny. He said, I don't really think I got a chance of beating these guys at GTO, so I just want to be goofy out there ah, and wow. confuse them a little you bit. got everything. Oh, my God. Good for him. Be very, very proud of uh, EPT final table and fifth place finish. Lot of cheddar, 175K pounds, and, you know, a remarkable, remarkable run, particularly for someone who doesn't do this for a living. Real big achievement. He'll always be proud of that, I'm sure. Absolutely, and Dan has already agreed to be a guest on the Poker in the Years podcast this week, so we're going to hear more from Dan. Awesome. Brush up on your Romanian film. <laughs> well, hashtag Dog Poop Girls, the yep. last movie he produced. That's right. So, uh, oh, that's what, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Have you seen, uh, is it five months, four weeks, three days, two hours? you seen that one, Phil? No. Really good, really good Romanian film. So uh, there he is, done it. Kishu out in fifth for 175,250. Four players remain. Everybody guaranteed over 220,000 euros now. Excuse me, pounds. Yeah. yeah, there's the final four payouts on the bottom of your screen. Still all vying for the 6644. Four. Was that 250? And after a fairly protracted nine-handed play to get down to six yesterday, we are already at four today. Yeah, it's going very quickly. What a great spot for Volumier as well. Just waking up with the Queens at such an opportune moment there. And to have so much equity at this stage in the tournament, just fantastic for a hold. Now 34 big blinds as we round into hand number 34. That was a quick one. Didn't look like there was too much action on hand 33. Yeah, and it's nice for Hamilton as well. Obviously, still ICM considerations, but 
real nightmare scenario when you're neck and neck and neck with two other players. Now can get in these 13 big blinds a little bit more freely. Right. Um, you, you get the ladder, but then now also you're a little bit more on. Uh, the handcuffs come off now at this stage, and you can just play to try and get the double. Yeah, and whereas it's Alex who is going to have to be cautious around the covering stacks, play a little bit more snugly until Alexander either doubles or busts. Jack Sinclair doing what he does best. Just cuts through these big fields. Monster. Of the Jack, absolutely unbelievable record in live tournaments. So, Sam, let's just say that you had to do, like, a winner's interview, and it had and it was Jack Sinclair. What, what sorts of questions would you ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he we just see him time and time again. What is it in his sort of mentality or his preparation that, that separates him? I'm sure you'd get a modest answer from Jack, but... I'm, I would love to know that, you know, Great. and also, you know, what, what it means to, you know, he obviously had, has a World Series of Poker Europe title, you know, what, what an EPT main means to him, he came, you know, he came to the game a little bit later in life, he studied music, is a very, very talented musician. I knew you were the guy to ask and, what to ask. And, uh, you know, burst onto the scene by making the final table of World Series, but, uh, you know, it, it sort of red hot career. Sinclair are going to float one here uh, a little bit speculatively. Well, just deciding. Yeah, calls with the um, gut shot. And that, a very good card. Strengthens <coughs> Habek. Uh, you know, the nine, very, very nutty on that river. Obviously, if he could see Sinclair's cards, he would check. But probably going to go for a value bet. Get, try and get called by a king high, um, an ace high, uh, and the like. Seems likely. Yeah, and uh, Sinclair really can only be thinking about raising, of course, with just the seven high. Charlie Carroll in the chat says he understands poker on a conceptual level super well. Also a great mindset. That's not a question, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I say question? I'm looking for questions. I'm looking for people to do my work for me. I see. 800. Whoa! Let's go. <laughs> Just in time from the compliment from Charlie Carroll about understanding the game on a conceptual level. Sinclair blasting off with seven high, trying to get this nine to fold. I'm not sure if he gets a nine to fold, though, honestly. it's He's obviously picked a great spot. I think having the queen is nice to go with the nine. If you had a nine and a five, you're kind of or a nine and a six or a nine and an eight, you're blocking bluffs. But I think queen is a really good card to have here, and it's going to make it more of a call. Cool but does believe Sinclair there. And there we go. We hype the man up. Yep. <laughs> the reverberations back through time. I love to it. To influence him to do something special there. <laughs> and, you know, we see the great man in action. Takes a lot of nerve to pull the trigger on a race. So against the covering stack, under the lights. Obviously, this is what we expect from Jackson Clare, who has been here time and time again. A very, very nice play. Um, you know, and also just a recognition of range. You know, you're going to have some jack eights and... Queen eight gut shots, but seven six, the two lowest cards you're ever going to hold there. Sort of speculative turn, turn call realizes that this is the one he wants for the raise and rewarded by picking up a pot where Three many, points. many people would oh, have points. relinquished one. it. It's kind of rude. It's kind of almost like Sinclair and Roberts, like not even paying attention to the other two guys. It's like not heads up yet, guys. <laughs> Calm down. Joe, Joe, Jess in the chat is helping you out here. Is it true you understand poker on a conceptual level okay, super yes. well no, and I, also have a great mindset? <laughs> they, they rephrase it in the form of a question. Great. I'm joking. <laughs> Forgot to give Sam a copy of my comic book yesterday. Now, now, now it's, it's like a subpoena now that you've touched it. Available in all good bookstores. Not yet. That's sense. just a preview. That's so. 100 copies only. I gotta, I, remind me to get you to sign it, Joe, as well. I was stupid of me not to get the signature in there. No sweat. Yeah, and here once more we see the final table dynamics. Sinclair opening into the mid-stack um, far, far more liberally than if the stack sizes were reversed.
little bit more about Jack Sinclair, as we just mentioned. World Series of Poker Europe main event winner. First place for just a cool mill. And also very, very <coughs> recently almost took down the Estrellas main event in Barcelona just a few months ago. Yeah, Runner up in that. In a huge field. Unbelievable poker talent. Lemire, ace queen, no longer the shortest stack after busting Chisu, excuse me, Kishu. Shoves on Hamilton, who's got 11 big blinds, is the shortest stack, has an ace, decides to get it in, and it's a domination situation. Very strong hands, we're going threads up after this. Yep, as Sam alluded to, the shortest stack now, just trying to make a move, trying to aggregate some chips. Ace-5. Ace-queen, ace-5. Ace versus ace-queen. Hamilton at risk. Please tell me that's a screwdriver at 2 o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> I really hope so. So a 25% chance of survival for Hamilton. Came into this tournament with 50K in live earnings. So no matter what happens here, is going to win many multiples of that. Jack, 9-4. Not a lot of hope on this flop for Hamilton. 25% drops to 14%. Turn card is an 8. Yeah, Hamilton looking a little resigned. And putting, oh, he's putting on oh, the card. Wow, not the jacket his play. percentage is definitely higher than seven now. That just boosted it. Yeah, it probably doubled it. Fourteen percent, still not so hot. Needs to hit a five on the river. Cinco oh. to Drinko. Bottoms up. <laughs> Hamilton spikes the five. <laughs> Screwdrivers all around. Sam, the jacket play. We've seen it so many times. It's a classic move. <laughs> and look at that smile. Pure joy on the rail uh, from his boys. And really nice to see Ian Hamilton, young Englishman, still in the fight for this title. The five to stay alive. Let's take a look at that rail. Yes. Skin of your teeth. <laughs> nice. Love to see it. Yeah, that's great. Come on, the lads. <laughs> the hoodie's back on. Yeah, and what is joy for Hamilton? Obviously, disappointment for Alex from Switzerland. Oh, yeah. Uh, a chance to go three-handed, um, you know, to double his stack almost. Uh, and now is the short stack once more. <laughs> Again, getting in with so, so much equity. Huh? Yeah. A chance to ladder for almost 70,000 pounds as well. Yeah, big, big difference between fourth and third. Big differences, big pay jumps from here on out. 1 card away from going three-handed. And we've got Bilumir and Hrabek taking a flop here. Button versus Big Blind A65 to clubs. Alexander, king of clubs, king high good for now. Yeah, and just a good board when you're playing a tighter than normal button range. Five. King of club as well to so dampen the check race frequency. Just go ahead and pick up the pot. I guess I got a follow-up question about the bus story, Sam. <laughs> We're going back <laughs> into the matrix. Well, no, a it's actually more, <laughs> less less uh, uh, ethereal than that. Uh, you won $5.5 million a couple of weeks ago. You, you don't take a black cab to East London? You don't? <laughs> You don't spring for the for the Uber, the, the, the Addison Lee, mate. The the bus up the Kingsland Road 
is uh, just the bus journey I've done many, many times. I it's tried. It's quicker. It's, it was it's quicker. Not, it's quicker. Too. I actually tried to take the bus up Kingsland Road. I had a gig in Dalston oh, there you last go. week, and it it's uh, it took me. Over two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got out and walked because it was faster than the bus. Wow. Brutal. Okay. Brutal. Well, we, it, with this, it was at like midnight or something. Okay. So it was pretty, right. it's pretty speedy. But, uh, yeah. Also, I'm giving the Brazilian guys the full London experience. They're loving the it. The double-decker yeah. bus is, <laughs> yeah. a, is a fun experience. But you guys didn't even go upstairs. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to start, start talking about the upstairs. That's even bigger, mate. Oh, right. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's you're really... Same, yeah. same, same, like yeah, same seeing same. the Matrix fall apart there. It's okay. It's all right. With nice Dinesh on the rail. Very accomplished player. Nasty Minder? Indeed. Indeed. Memorable screen name, hey? Well, it's something I've searched for plenty of times online. <laughs> and this is interesting to see. Queen Jack from the small blind going after Hamilton's open. And the offsuit Queen Jack. You know, you feel like, yeah, the chip leader is just coming after me, but very hard hand to fight back with. And the rich get richer. 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 Rabbit. Yeah, Rabbit's approaching 100 big blinds, has over 90 at this point. 83 for Sinclair Hamilton, who you see on your screen, has 20, excuse me, 23 now. And Philembier with 21. So you were saying, you know, uh, as we expected Ian to be eliminated. Uh, his biggest score before is 50K. I think his total, oh, total? scores are 50K. Oh, oh, wonderful. Really nice to see uh, an up-and-comer uh, at this final table. Obviously, a slight bias towards seeing, you know, at the home event, UK guys sure. doing well. And, uh, yeah, that's really nice to see. Second in the mystery bounty, I see. Um, so, yeah, that's really, you know... To have your mates on the rail, I'm sure it's very, very meaningful for him to be at a final table like this um, so early in his career. I just like an underdog. Sure. Plus the fact that he's got a rail developing. The, the British rail is uh, is really something to be seen. Sure. Actually, but, uh, you know, I used to... Is it true that you guys all started wearing Crocs just to make it easier to drink out of yeah. your shoes? I, I used to, I, I, a couple of times, people ask me about the British Rail. And I would say to my friends, you know, it's so, so outdated. You know, this was eight years ago. I was a young man. They still ask me about drinking. And then, you know, I was in Vegas this summer. And I woke up the next morning and, and you know, I got sent a video of me in a Vegas club. Sure enough, I'm on my knees drinking out of uh, someone's shoe. Oh. And I was like, yeah, I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> now I'm just going to be, it's a legit question. Right. Yeah, we still, you know, they was like, do you still do it? And I'm like, yeah, okay, sometimes. You, you can take the boy out of London. <laughs> you can't take the London out of the boy. It's just absolutely horrific video. And people just looking appalled as well. Like people's faces <laughs> are like, what is this man doing? The worst part is they drop like 15 G's in the club, but nobody is used to tipping, so they just stiff like the, the waitress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so we should actually it's draw attention awesome. to this rare, you know, bit of a reversal here. Uh, in this instance, it's Alex who is going for the three-bet bluff, picking the suited ace to attack the wide open of the chip leader. Um, you know, the mouse chasing after the cat in this instance and gets it done. And that's a nice little pickup. You do, you know, while you have to sort of um, acquiesce to the chip leader's aggression or submit to the chip leader's aggression somewhat, you do still want to be finding these odd yeah. spots to, uh, you know, uh, go after them with the wide opening range. And that's really nice to see from Alex. It's, it's a cute little spot as well because it's a dynamic where he, as one of the shorties, you're not expecting him to be doing as many of those cute little three bets. So it looks even stronger than maybe had he been, you know, uh, deeper stacked, and the ro roles were reversed, of course. Alexander folds queen eight, and that is going to be a walk for rabbits.
Malloy says, great to see Sam still commentating after winning a fortune. Top man. I agree. He's still down with the kids, guys. Wow. He still remembers the little people. Uh, this, is, this is what qualifies as humble. Wow, doing UBT coverage <laughs> Park Lane Hilton. Wow, wow, what a, what a humble guy he is to just. <laughs> wow, it's just what uh, an easy life. Just oh, a God. sponsored pro from the biggest company in the world, <laughs> slumming it, fulfilling his contractual obligations. Yeah, he he, he declined to stay at the Four Seasons, which is next door, by the way. In a six hundred pound a night hotel. <laughs> That's another walk. It's time for Sinclair. What is this? A Camp David American style? It's like a fake yacht crew right. jacket. The, the, the one thing I've noticed from More Sinclair real. is he consistently wears the same hoodie throughout each tournament. He's got to think ah, about that. That's cool, yeah. Mini EPT London main event is today. $5.50 to buy in. An EPT prog package for the winner. And lots of tickets distributed along the way. Just to be to clear, that winner. that's a, in the client, right? They don't come to Park Lane Hotel and do buy not a five. <laughs> you know, there's no five dollar tournament running at the Park Lane. You know, it's you a very good point. <laughs> yes. So the twenty five dollar is already running, guys, and of course that main event coming up later with all those added prizes, EPT prog package and W Coop tickets added. Go take a look for yourself. But if you do come down here, make sure you take one of the Matrix buses. <laughs> Yeah, and Alex decides to defend. The two shorties going up against each other. And a flop that is 10, 7, 5, two diamonds. Alexander checks the best hand, which is ace high. That's yeah, still a pretty good board for Hamilton. A diamond. And, you know, jacks, queens, etc. Ace 10 still super strong here. And for that reason, we'll come out with the C bet. Yep, I think I like a really small one here. Somewhere in the region of quarter pot seems good to me. A little less than a third. He's got good posture, old Alex, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, no, we've loved his posture. He looks like he's about to start conducting a, an orchestra. You know, yeah, or. Or like a Tai Chi performance. Okay. Folds ace high. Like a young Egon Schiele there or something like that. I don't know what the reference is, but I love the fact that I don't. And I know it's very smart, so I'm laughing. <laughs> like when you go to the theater, like uh, if you go to see a Shakespeare production in the UK, everyone makes sure to laugh really loudly at every joke just to show all <laughs> oh, the wordplay. Yeah. Doesn't he, what? It's like, uh, it's like the progression of a poker player. Like, you know, you start out like Alex and then you move to Sinclair and then before you know it, you're wearing a hoodie and glasses and you end up... Or like even like it's de that's my day one outfit is like Alex. Day two I look like <laughs> if I was ever four days into a tournament I begin to look more and more just you know dressing gown. Yeah. <laughs> I I tried to watch uh, the new the Coen Brothers Shakespeare. What is it Hamlet? Uh, wasn't it Othello? No, I, oh, uh, Macbeth is. Macbeth. Macbeth there we go. We both screwed it up. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time ever that I was watching something I didn't understand it at all, and I put the subtitles on, and it made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> so Sinclair with the big stack here, opening the button, 8-7 off. The Lumiere. All in. He is all in for 21 big blinds. All in. Sing song. All in. All in. <laughs> yeah, and Jack Sinclair just playing a very steady game. Chip stack not really fluctuated uh, since I've been in the booth anyway. He's Maintaining got that very, very strong second spot. 
ma making sure he has a, a stack size close to Roman, so Roman can't really pressurize him too much. He's got an air about him of like a guy that could do this for the next 24 hours straight and just would still be in the same shape, you know, just well, so such a such an athlete. I, I do think there is something about, you know, the pressure there must have been. I think it was like two years into his career when he made the World Series poker main event final. And there's so much coverage, attention, pressure, um, you know, on that event. Uh, in the lead up to the final table, then a WSOP Europe final, going through the Australia. You know, some people are just hardened by the experience. Just, you know, I always imagine it as going really deep under the ocean, feeling the pressure around you. And, you know, once you come back up, you're kind of uh, toughened by it. Like running and, with weights on. Yeah, and exactly. And much more comfortable to go back down to that level of pressure. Interesting. Do you feel like the same happened with you, Sam? Like, you know, be, be, like starting out as a more in, uh, less less experienced player and then just being like, I've been here before. I've played these stakes of before. A absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, Stapes and Hagen, I'm sure, commented on it. I remember you know, when I got uh, 13th or 14th in EPT Prague, I just sort of wasn't ready for the moment and I was pushing things too much. I, I wanted it too much. Right. I was overcompensating uh, and trying to, you know, do whereas now uh, if I'm in a tough, you know, Deep in a tournament, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I know the rhythm of the game, how it changes in the early stages to the bubble, and I'm, I'm much more accepting of it. Letting the game come to me a bit more. Right. I can say that as a very average poker player, that the few times I get anywhere within sniffing distance of going deep in a poker tournament, I certain, suddenly turn from nervous person to I am so going to overcompensate for being nervous sure. that I just completely lose my mind you just implode. and just implode like every single time. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure anybody that's played live poker, you know, knows that feeling where you're just in a hand and you're like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I'm confused now. You're like, I don't know why I'm doing this, yeah. but I'm doing it but and I'm doing it hard. I'm definitely not going to blow up on the river. Anyway, I'm all in. Yeah, <laughs> this is just. You know, I think you do learn from repetition and just through force of habit, like that pressure chamber, like Sam is say saying, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Jack Sinclair, um, you know, one of them, one of, you know, if you had to hand your money to someone to go and play in a main event, Jack Sinclair would be one of the first, first picks for a lot of people, I think. And what about Roman? Because actually I do realize that I played with this guy quite Relatively a lot. Relatively experienced, Roman. Yeah, I played with him a lot online. What about in the a live arena? Has he um, got, wow, picked up 155K in the UK IPT high roller as well? Wow. It's amazing. No big deal. So this was a limp pot, limp turn, limp flop. There has been no aggressive action in this hand whatsoever. Yeah, and again, you know, this is the nuance of final table poker playing a completely different strategy against each other than they would against one of the stacks that they cover. All the is the incentives here are to keep the pot yep. small, and it's almost sort of a cooperative strategy where neither player incentivized to bloat the pot. So, you you know, you don't go as often, because you can't value bet as wide, you can't protect quite as wide, you can't bluff as much, just everything is a little, the aggression just diminished. But Jack recognizing that the nine is good here on the river. Sure. And will put out a, actually a pretty chunky value bet sleep. Roman, just the ace high, does beat bluffs. Some of which, you know, if we imagine four fives, five six, four sixes, very likely to bet perhaps an earlier streak. Um, and gonna have some pairs himself, so just folds the ace six. Yeah, we talk about, you know, having stamina in multi-day tournaments. Like you say, for him to go deep in a tournament like the World Series of Poker main event, that's so many days. You're like, oh, it's a two-day event? Sure, no problem. That's the walk in the park. Just a reminder, I've done like seven or eight before. No problem at all. And don't forget the Estreas main event. Yeah, exactly. Which wasn't, you know, wasn't a 10-day event, but it had a lot of runners. <laughs> <laughs> Big old field. Unbelievable field, yeah. Yeah, Jack actually does pretty good updates on Instagram as well. I feel like I'm on the journey with him sometimes, posts his stack size fluctuating. And actually, it also gives you, you know, even for myself, uh, 
who, you know, I play 1Ks pretty regularly. I think he fired like seven or eight bullets. And it, it reminds me also, you know, I, I, like I, I also have some sort of leaks in my approach where sometimes second or third bullet, I'm, I'm done. But he really believes that he can get through this field and therefore will fire and fire again. And it's quite inspiring, actually, because it makes you think. What a crazy you know, person. You know, sometimes you feel, oh, I'm, these guys, how do they get so lucky? But. Actually, what Jack shows you is it, yeah, it no. is a sort of determination. <laughs> it's a volume thing, too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And having the opportunity to have volume in the same tournament multiple times, he's, yeah, like, he's exploiting that. Yeah, and, it's great. And very few people can go and sit down on their sixth bullet and play really, really well same. as well. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a great player on the first bullet, but I think by the fifth bullet, <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, you get the sense that maybe Jack can sit down and and, and uh, put on a good performance time and time again. Man, his Instagram is very funny. He comes across quite serious, obviously, which is fine at the poker table. But then we did an interview with him pregame, and he went on like a 10-minute backstory about the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. fantastical journey through space and time. <laughs> and I'm looking at his Instagram. He's a, a funny dude. Yeah. yeah nice, nice guy. This is great. One-eyed poker. Eight of hearts, we know. Hamilton with 10-9. Not quite to Grafton. Who's a poor man, Sam Grafton? Wow. And it's pretty snug, I think, versus Button. Like, he obviously knows it's close. Sure, you would prepare, prefer to be suited. I really don't know about that, um, but uh, indicative, I guess, of how Hamilton is going to approach uh, this situation with him and Alex being neck and neck. Doesn't want to open himself up um, to being pressurized by the bigger stack and even folding the 10 9 there. Really interesting TC. Olo says, this table seems more serious than the previous EPT. I don't know about more serious, but there's certainly less chatter conversation going on. But Yeah, smaller rail, too. Yeah, I mean, four-handed poker, you know, in defense of these guys, very, very intense. Yeah. You know, you're button cut, small blind, big blind. You're playing a lot of hands. There's you know. no more plus ones and plus twos. At every, every, they all have a name. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, and... Um, also, you know, you becoming the shorter stack or, you know, closing the gap or your opponent getting shorter, it, you know, changes the opening ranges. It's no wonder that these guys are a little bit quieter. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to see a flop here. And Sinclair is going to hit this one pretty hard. Top pair, Jack Kicker. Threes with some bad back doors. A bad back door. And that's about it. Check, check. And there goes everything but the river set for pocket threes. Yeah, and, you know, we can see in the bottom left of the screen, these guys neck and neck, essentially, for the chip lead. And that's the reason you see Jack checking back the top pair. It's a little overcautious uh, for a man of my tastes, but understandable. Certainly, as we keep, as I keep emphasizing, the aggression is supposed to be very much diminished. Krabic will be hoping that these threes show down. They definitely show down for a little bit, very occasionally against, a, we could imagine, an ace-eight, uh, an ace-jack, something of that nature. And that's just oh. going to eke out a little bit of value with a tiny blocking bet. I mean, yeah, it's close to third pot. Seems a little bit much for me, especially when, no, we obviously... 
have the advantage of seeing what Jack's strategy actually looks like. And one imagines Jack's just deciding whether he can raise here for value on the river. Gets a little bit weird without... Obviously, the kicker doesn't really play on the... Well, doesn't play on the tap. Oh, and he's so good. Yeah. Wow. One million's the raise. <laughs> Obviously, not going to get paid. Well, I, I mean, Rabich doesn't immediately release. It's like a uh, little bit strange. Uh, this this is a very different board as well, isn't it, Sam? When the board pairs in the river like this, the trades just become so much stronger than in the previous pot where we saw uh, the check and the bet from uh, from Sinclair in position. Well, I, I think it's I think it, the reason I, I assume that Joe just immediately says he's not getting paid is because I can see the card. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, yeah, and also I mean Jack, it's unlikely he gets to the river with much worse than King High, right? So mo he has, you know, most hands that. Could function as a bluff, also fl function as a bluff catcher, right? So you tend to just see a call there rather than a raise. Um, you know, it, this is what's what makes poker interesting because there's now a little bit of a dynamic where Roman can block a strong hand, expect to get raised by a medium strength hand, and then come <laughs> back over the top, right? Right, right? You know, so therefore Jack also needs to check some strong hands to raise those on the river. And you know, it's, it, too it, much. it's a very intricate. <laughs> too much man you know, once you start going down the the more obscure branches of the game tree um it gets really really interesting and and you know this is just very precise and sophisticated poker that we're witnessing um i mean i do do of course agree with you joe like yeah you're, you're right to say that three's very unlikely to call that it makes makes it makes a lot of sense what you're saying but um but other hands might. Yeah. Pocket fours this time. Going there with a stack size big enough that he does not have to be shoving any of all of his opens. And it's going to get defend from Jack in the big blind. We are approaching the end of this level, the end of the session. About to hit our first break of the day. How far away are we from the start of the mini EPT main event, Nick Walsh? Good question. Let me take a look. The mini EPT starts at 5.15. So 17.15, that's in about an hour's time. Just over an hour if you want to jump into that. But the $25 is still running, guys. Uh, late reg for that will be open for another hour and 32 minutes if you'd like to play the $25 version of our mini EPT series we're running alongside our coverage. Nice pick up there for Villemir. Looks like we're going to get one more hand in. Things have been pretty quiet since the fourth place, excuse me, since the fifth place elimination. Just three eliminations to go before that 664,000 pounds gets handed to the first EPT London champion in eight years. Ian Hamilton, pocket fives under the gun, what will be the last hand of the level. Four for Villemir. Mm. Yeah, and might no, want to lay like this three down against a snug opening oh, range. Uh, so he does think it's close, and, and, and understandably so. And well fold. And take a well earned break. Yeah, well in bur break indeed. These guys have all got to be pretty tense right now. Love the matching belt and vest combo there. That lucky vest Absolutely. that when activated gave Hamilton 
Yeah, there you go. Thank the dealer. Oh, he won't even. <laughs> Two professionals to face up. Wow. Rejected. I had nothing to do with it. The cards are what the cards are. No favorites here. Current chip counts in Hamilton. Still in the danger zone. Danger zone. Villamir not too much further out of it. As stated before, this is a kind of a two-horse race at the moment. Roman Kravitz, 72 big lines, barely in second place. Poodle and Kishu, the two to fall so far today. Still all the money up top left to be handed out. Everyone now guaranteed over 225,000 pounds, nearly 300 for third. 400K for the runner up and 664 for the winner. Time to take a 20 minute break here in London. Still more poker when we return. We said that earlier on. If you wanted to know about poker, you had to find books, and there were only about two of them in existence, Super System 1 and Super System 2. Yeah, we hadn't even had Harrington on Hold'em yet at this point, had we? The revolutionary. Harrington on Hold'em. Falconer with pocket jacks. I believe Falconer had limped. And Shipley, he said 75,000, but it doesn't really matter. Falconer is all in for around 300, it looks like. I guess this is what you did back then with Jax. Danger hand. You don't want to see uh, see too many cards coming out. A lot of tanking with Jax so far in this era. Some tanking now with King Queen suited from Shipley. There it is. And we are flipping this time potentially for the first ever EPT London title. Wow, what a flop again. Two spades and a queen. That's the spade on the turn. Shipley takes it down, wins the flip, wins EPT London. Numero uno, 200,000 pounds. So the limp from Hellness with King Four of Diamonds, Telcher with Jax. And he raises. It's an additional 35k. Jonas calls the raise. We'll see a flop. With Hellness calling, we go to the flop. Which has two diamonds on it. Flush draw for Hellness. Telcher still a slight favorite here with Jax. Looks like he will be continuing on the flop. Just the one over. Heads up. Players playing a lot of hands. Not too much to be concerned about just yet. 140,000 in the middle. 50,000. Mark bets 50,000. 50,000 the bet from Telcher. And again, Helmus just immediately wow. reaching for raising chips. And that's the, the strategy at this point. You have a flush draw, you put in that raise. 
And just to be clear, that was on the same shot as Telcher making his bet. So there was no thinking time cut out there. He immediately responded, almost without even considering how much the raise should be. Yeah. And obviously, we now know these days that it's a similar concept as what I just spoke about with the aces. Like, if you raise all your flush rolls here, then when there's a diamond on the turn, you're capped, right? You, you can't have the flush because you played them all so quickly on the flop. So today we see more balanced. Uh, back in 2005, if you had equity, you go with it. And that is a huge turn for Telcher. And Telcher happy to check and let Hellness keep betting. A full tower of 10K chips, 250,000. I think I would like to see Telcher just call. Let his opponent keep bluffing. Let him keep value betting worse because we see that the queens have played very quickly. He does announce all in. I guess a round of applause for moving all in. <laughs> he could have 7 3 off. They don't know. They're still going to clap. Could be punting his whole tournament. They're still going to clap. And Helmus calls. calls all in for his last 421,000, needing a diamond on the river that does not pair the board. And that will do it. Mark Telcher punches the air as he seals victory in the London main event, the second stop on season two of the EPT back in 2005. Victoria. All in with ace 10 of hearts. And Michael, Call. and Michael Muldoon calls the shove. Calls for less. There's two hearts gone. So Muldoon, the at risk player with sevens, racing against Vicky's ace 10. Ace on the flop. Eight of diamonds, five of clubs. Michael has eight aces. Michael needs a seven. Six Let's see the turn card. The queen of diamonds. Uh, three diamonds on the board. <laughs> seven a seven high flush draw. Vicky looks sicky. The river. Yeah. is not a diamond or a seven it's another ace and that will see michael muldoon eliminated in fourth place he receives 110,000 pounds and three players now remain vicky corin imad tatu and jan Sharvik. the balrog 1530 blinds Oh man, the pound was real strong when this was shot, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think I remember coming to Vegas in November of 2006. Those are the glory days. Threes for Sharvik. And this is a pretty famous hand, guys. Okie dokie, here comes a. Take this back and put this. So knowing Jan Sharvik as you do, Lex, are you surprised to see him call here? Yeah. But <laughs> it's also really cool to see because it's kind of an early adaptive thing. All thing like feel with bears and stuff. So 
Kind of is on brand too. And immediately after that flop is dealt, Vicky announces all in. I tell you, I'd be pretty tempted to call it off with freeze here myself. Yeah, I think so too. Like that was very much like a, you know, like a power. Yeah. Wanting to make it look like a power play. It, it sounded like she wanted a fold. And I'm sure she does. I mean, I guess she could be shoving with other pairs, right? That aren't, you know, like one minute for a decision, yeah. please. I I think their biggest issue is that if your opponent has queen jack, they have about the deck, and that's like that feels like best case scenario. I mean, obviously, ace king is best case scenario, right? But if they have a king jack, you know, they can king queen jack nine, and whatever is runner runner can make a pair to you too. If they have one spade, that counts as like one out, so. Well, Imad Tartu called for the clock, and Jan Sharvik's now on a 60-second countdown. Ten second countdown. In the end of the countdown, the hand will be dead. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, call. four. The Balrog calls. Oh. Oh. He taps the table. Nice call. Yeah, that's gangster. He's the favorite, but not by a lot. Jack on the turn. Oh. And Jan Sharvik is eliminated in third place. 168,600 pounds. And Imad Tatu apologizes for calling the clock. Do you remember back when calling the clock was the worst thing you could do to someone? I wish they would do it like every hand and now with a spoke. Right. So Shavik made the good call, got punished, and now we're heads up for the title. See Vicky drinking water now. So at this point, Ima Tatu has the slight chip lead. All right, 200k pot to kick things off. Top pair versus second pair. It's a bet of 100k, quickly called by Tartu. A bet of 300,000. It must be nice to be able to just keep betting top pair. Oh, that's so nice. And gets called again. Another card is a nine. Ooh, nine of diamonds. Kind of an ugly river. Yeah, just check. You have an eight. 
I genuinely think she made him do that by saying, I'll let you both the floors. So he's like, you know what? That'd be cool. You know what I mean? A lot more of that went on back then than it does now. Uh, it's got a total blank on the end here. What? Was that considered a blank in 2006? <laughs> it's a brick. <laughs> <laughs> she made the right call against Barney Boatman earlier. And not the similar spot. And she calls this one. Well, show down. Check eight for the pair of eight. And Vicky shows a 10 Tens are good and momentum swings in Vicky Corrin's direction. Induces the bluff, snaps it off, takes the chip lead. Seven six, the hand for Vicky. She calls, and Emad's going to check his option with eight six. Oh, flops the joint. Bets a hundred k. Tartu with the straight draw. And he oh, raises. What a dream. The pressure of heads up was this easy all the time, Lex. Yeah, it was crazy. That call with the Queen's Town was really good, though. I mean, it was really good, except for the fact that she thought the nine was a brick. No, I think she said something like, uh, why couldn't it have been a brick? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 370, 390. Total brick, I call. No, actually, it was a flush and straight card, but you're good. <laughs> Vicky calls the raise. We've now got the better part of 1.2 million in the middle. Diamonds. All in and a call. Vicky got the nuts straight. Three to seven and six eight is the hand for Emma. Looks like she's going to pass out. It really does. Let's see the river card. River card is a jack. And that is the moment that Victoria Corrin became the first female EPT champion. Wins the London leg of season three of the European Poker Tour on home soil. £500,000. Imad Tatu, the runner-up, the 286k. forward 16 years and we are back in London for the Pokestars European Poker Tour and now in Mayfair at the Hilton Park Lane hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. Welcome back to our live coverage of the final table of the 5k main event. We start the day with six players, four are returning from the first break of the day. We have lost Nils Poodle, we have lost Dan Kishu, we still have the two monster stacks, Jack Sinclair and Roman Rabetz. Plus, Alex Villemier still short with 21 bigs. Ian Hamilton 
even shorter with 18 pegs and go to the 6120 blind level. I am James Hartigan. Alongside me is Griffin Bencher. Hello, everyone. Yeah, the short stacks are vying for that third place position, but one double up through the chip leaders and uh, it's going to even things out quite a bit. You will see every hand cards up until we play down to a champion. Right now, the slight advantage to Sinclair, and I think really the narrative of the last level, Griffin, which is highlighted by those chip stacks, is the fact that this has been a battle between the two most accomplished players at the table, Sinclair for our bets. They're the haves, the other players the have -haves. Yeah, absolutely. I think anyone watching over the last few days has been very impressed by both Jack Sinclair and Roman Rabic. And we can see the prize money on offer with Poodle cashing for 135 grand and Kishu cashing out for 175k. Nearly a quarter of a million for the next player out. Nearly 300k for third. More than 400 grand for the runner-up. 664,400 pounds for the winner. And also a place in poker history. And that lovely shiny trophy which is taking pride of place on the podium in front of the main stage. Uh, great to have Sam Grafton rejoining us in the booth. Hey guys. The Griff Graff reunion is on. I would say that Sam misses the little animation, but that would not be true. Oh, I got kind of attached to them. The Griff and the Graff. The man who can actually play some musical instruments, Jackson Clare. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Based on what we've seen over the last few days, Sam, and I'm guessing from what you saw during the last level, both Sinclair, Sinclair and Harabets, very impressive. Yeah, of course. Uh, very, as you said, <laughs> accomplished players. Play a lot uh, with Harabet online. Jack uh, cross swords with a little bit in the live arena, but he's he's certainly big live, uh, big field grinder with a lot of wins and final tables to his name. So something of a breakout for Roman, I guess. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we referenced a few times, he had that second place finish in the UK IPT high roll of the 2K here in London. Wow. 155 what? grand, but yeah, so this festival overall, definitely a live breakout for him. Um, this is the hand 52 of the final table, is the first hand of 60, 120, and a familiar story. Two big stacks in action. Harabets opening under the gun with Queen 10. Sinclair flatting with 8 7 hearts on the button. Pretty hands. Beautiful. Very looking beautiful hands. hands. Actually, want to <laughs> yeah, get out there and play. play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, we have top pair for Harabets. Not much for Sinclair to be excited about, really. Yeah, and heavy, heavy checkboard. So Claire going to have way, way the stronger range and more connectivity with this board. 8-7 of hearts, a big, big whiff. Um, and so little equity will delay any kind of bluffing to a later stage in the hat. Rabbit, um still with the top pair. Obviously, there was a lot of nice back doors with that jack of clubs out there. Now just the top pair and we'll check again jack checks behind again and we get the jack of diamonds on the river so a four flush board a paired board yeah really strange run out this queen getting sort of worse and worse down the streets, but may even work out for Hrabic. Because I think on most other rivers, he would just go ahead and value bet the queen, and obviously Sinclair can't call. Now we, we're in a similar situation to, to what we saw a little while ago. Sinclair, this must be stone, stone, bottom of his range. Eight high, no diamond. And for that reason, is going to put out a, 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 a bluff. Going for half pot... Sort of as if he had pocket sixes with a diamond is what he's trying to, the story he's trying to tell. I think it is a believable one, but will Hrabic be able to make the call here with the two pair? So 
Saw Sinclair get away with a bluff raise against Radic. And, and just check wow. fold. <clears throat> and I'm somewhat surprised at that. I think if we do imagine... Well, I don't know. Well, after winning that part, Jack Sinclair is close to crossing the 10 million mark. I don't know if that happened during the last level. Have we had a player hit 10 million chips yet? Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, it's a, you know, for what it's worth, obviously it's still finely balanced between the two of them, but that is, you know, a, a, a sort of a major accomplishment to get up to those chips. And it's, it's the chip lead yes. for, for Jack Sinclair and with position on the other big stack, which is very nice spot to find yourself in. And one, Jack will, you know, a situation Jack will be trying to take full advantage yeah. of to, you know, allow the, these chips can sort of compound them on themselves. Something we observed yesterday, Sam, is that when they did the redraw for nine, which obviously is the same draw we have for the final table today, Sinclair didn't have necessarily the best seat assignment because he was sandwiched between David Doherty and Harry Lodge. And the elimination of those two players has given him a bit more freedom. Absolutely, okay. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> thinking about that hand, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because I was also very surprised to see uh, Ravage, Ravage, Rabbit fold. But the more I thought about it, you know, 8-7 suited comprises such a small percentage of Jack Sinclair's range. And so much more of it would probably want to fire out of bed at some point, whether it was the 9-10 suited combos. Sure. Um, uh, so it's, it's interesting that, that, that he ended up folding. But I guess it kind of, you know, there's going to be yeah, a lot I, of I Yeah, I guess a lot depends what you do with A6 of spades and right. A7 of clubs and... You know, and how many of the the six five of spades, seven eight of spades, you far some of you far far on the flop, some of you far on the turn, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, whether you can you do value bet fives with the five of diamonds, or whether yeah. you just check it down and you know. Um, I guess he's just too high up in his range and should probably call that particular hand. Yeah, it's also if you if you yeah. value bet all your diamonds yourself, right? You yeah. value bet the ten of diamonds, king of diamonds. What does your check check call range look yeah. like now? Um, Anyway, very interesting and, and, and technical hand. And, uh, and obviously, it's, so, you know, as we always say, so easy for us in the booth to think, like, wow, well, look at this. He's got nine high. Um, you've got to call him. Did Hamilton open fold the king ten and the small there? Did you, did the last hand there? We were talking, busy talking about the other one, but I think I saw that maybe yeah. on 1.9. Well, this is Robert's raising small to big with nines and called by Sinclair in the big. So these two go to the flop again. And it's a set of nines for Harabets. Luckily for Sinclair, shouldn't get into too much trouble. Yeah, dream spot for Harabets. We'll be desperately hoping Sinclair has an ace. So, obviously, Sam, you mentioned that you've played a lot against this guy online. He actually qualified online via one of the 530 sats. <laughs> Originally from Prague, now lives in Vienna, having had a very successful hockey career, both in his home country, where he played for Sparta Prague, and in Switzerland as well. Wow. Look at this. 20 goal season in 1617. <laughs> Love <that>. into it. <laughs> it's also kind of depressing to find out this guy's not only, you know, better than us at poker, Griff. He's also been, you know, this is his second, he's onto his second career already, you know. <laughs> ah, like yourself as well. You know, yeah. you, had, you had two careers. This is actually your third career. I've been a bit of a hockey player myself, you know. <laughs> I play twice a week in beer league. Uh, and if you Canada. want me to make you even more jealous, he's only 26 years uh, old. Well, look at this. And actually Sinclair took off a card here with the King 10 without yeah. a diamond. Something a little bit stubborn. I mean, one thing you've got, uh, uh, Jack, needs to be aware of is, you know, Rabbit's strategy is going to be overwhelmingly limp here. You're going to be sort of a polarized range of, ra strong of raises, thing, yeah. yeah. And and often, you know, it's just going to be good hands. So, well, uh, yeah. And obviously, if Rabbit knew Sinclair's hand would be inclined to check, will fart again. And that will be all she wrote. And now it's Roberts who's in the number one position, but very close as we've referenced so many times. Roberts and Sinclair with all the chips right now, more than 70 big blinds each. And then you've got the other two players with sub 20 big blind stacks. Ian Hamilton has been short for most of this final table, currently playing 16 bigs. He's in fourth place. Yeah, I've actually, I'm going to put my hoodie up here in solidarity with <laughs> Ian Hamilton. You know, I like to see the Brits do well. So in the booth, I'm, I'm hoodieing up. To be honest, Sam, we didn't know what he looked like until today <laughs> when he walked into the room. I love, uh, you know, he, he put, when he was all in with the ace five and behind, put his hoodie down, adjusted his hair, ready to do 
strut off the stage to go for some beers. And then uh, Binked on the river. Bit of conversation on YouTube about how the stream works. For the avoidance of doubt, we are on a 30-minute game integrity delay, but we are seeing the pictures the same time you guys are. So effectively, we are calling the action 30 minutes after the hands have been played. The video feed is delayed, but it's then going out live with our commentary, and that's how we're able to interact with you guys, whether you're commenting on YouTube or commenting on Twitch, or indeed on Twitter using the hashtag PokestarsTV. So complicated. You got you did that incredible. I mean, I couldn't reach that level of professional. A lot of information there about we're live, but can I use the word live? Is it live? What is live? As far as I'm concerned, it's as live as it can be. Yes. And absolutely. what we are saying right now is going out live. So to me, it's not a lie to say it's a live broadcast. It feels live to me, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember when we first started doing Cards Up broadcasts of final tables. This would have been early 2012, of course. It was the classic, everything's delayed. So we're effectively calling the action over live picture. Yes. Then the delay runs. But you lose that interaction. Sure. You're not in the same, same time zone as your audience. So the idea of just holding everything back for 30 minutes and then letting us call the action. It in makes the, sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right, Waltby. I love the people in chat. On Sorry both the that. YouTubes and the Twitches. <laughs> I was going to go for some kind of Star Wars reference here, Griff, but I'm cautious. Is this like a Sith Lord? Yeah, 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 that works. Does Good job. Works, yeah? Wow. Yeah. Proud of you. Thank you, man. And for Palpatine. So, yeah. And, and puts it in oh, here well. using the ace well. blocker and... Yeah, and I think this is quite good. Rather than going up against the covering stack, risking being pressured down the streets, just uses the power of having an ace. You know, you, you have some equity when called, blocking calls, and, and puts it in. And I think that's really nice from Ian Hamilton. So you don't know too much about what his background is. Seems a strong player in his own right. Made a lot of good decisions. And I think that's probably another one. Something, something dark side. <laughs> yes, you see, I knew if I lined it up, you would have <laughs> some kind of impersonation ready to go. Pocket Kings for Jack Sinclair opens under the gun. The Kevin Colleen's 275,000. Ace nine for Alex Volumier, who is tied for last place right now within Hamilton. Yeah, and Alex is going to have to tread carefully here. Ace-9 off a bit of a funny one. Don't think we want to jam. It's definitely a three-bet bluff candidate. Lots of options. Don't really want a nine in your hand. And that's nice also, ball. yeah, very nice. Don't you think, Griff? Yeah. I think you could be tempted there. Hamilton even more so. King-Jack off. Two powerful blockers. The old Kojak. Telly Savalas, yeah, the raise who raises loves your baby. Of these two chip leaders. And so wow, wild. there wow. we go. These guys, oh, wow. these guys. Look at that. He's pained by it. He's like, is that a little bit too tight? And Fabic now with Ace-9 off. Going to be forced into defending here. You know, we'll dominate some 9x of Sinclair and even some Aces. You know that Hamilton and Volumier are sitting there thinking, just let these guys continue to play big pots against each other. Sooner or later, one of them's going to make a mistake, and we're going to ladder up into third. <laughs> oh, hello. Straight draws for both players. Kings still way ahead, though. Four to one favorite. Yeah. I think they're just considering what sizing to go for. May want to go a bit bigger here with kings and with the board where there's obviously a strong net advantage. Goes for half pot. Now, Sam, if there's one thing I know, it's our audience. And I know right now they are all calling for a king on the turn because they love the sickness. They love the pain. They love the suffering. It's going to be hard to find a king with the king jack folded by Hamilton, though. Oh, blockers. <laughs> 350,000 apiece on the flop. 
return card is the queen of clubs pairing the board. Yeah, and Sinclair not going to be excited to see that card roll off. Obviously, you know, not, not alarm bells. Doesn't have to have a queen. Plenty of 10 nines, jack nines, jack eights and the like. And, of course, this actual holding of ace nine off, one of the weakest crab edge. Certainly hard to go now for three streets with the kings. And having the straightening properties to go with the pair checks back. Six on the river, so kings still good. Yeah, and now it's really interesting for Hrabic because a lot of the time we wouldn't, you know, not often that you get to bluff ace high, or not always you get to bluff ace high. Does he have worse hands than this arriving on a river? Really strong poker player, going to think that through. Does ace nine here just show down for a chop? often enough, and does feel that it will, and checks it over to Sinclair. Guess he feels he's got some King X yeah. with backdoor flushes, um, yeah, which he'd want to, yeah. Yeah, it makes, makes, makes sense. Of course, seeing Sinclair's hand, I sort of forget about those holdings. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, for that reason, checks. <clears throat> and now Sinclair going to try and go for value one would imagine now, obviously you know what seems like a simple value bet to us you know the situation amplified by the money on the line the deep stacks is he capped what is the sizing he wants to go for or he doesn't realize Ravitch is checked <laughs> <laughs> Deep in the tank here. 8.50. Sinclair going for value. 850,000 into a pot of 1.4 million. And Ravage doesn't immediately release. What is he thinking about? Oh. One five zero. Oh wow! The check raise bluff from Roman Roberts. Yeah, not very big. But by not making it look very big, it looked super valuey. <laughs> Jack Sinclair says the immortal words, I should have checked. Yeah, so so let's think about this. What properties... Why, why would he check Queen on the river? Would he not want to just go for value himself? What does this size... Really, really interesting. Do we want kings in our hands, or do the bluffs come from king sixes and, and yeah, such like, and, and, and king ten? Maybe ten nines, ten eights, ace ten. Uh, you know... What, what properties do we want? We are getting a very good price. What an interesting hand. Two strong minds. And, you, and you know, we saw the really interesting thing is Sinclair was, could feel this, right? He knew he's in a line where he doesn't have the nuts very, very often, checking back the turn. And if he puts out a value bet, he's opening himself up to this. So does that mean he wants to pay this off more liberally? Or, and it's a big, big swing. Either Jack Sinclair will have a big chip lead. Or well, Hrabic will have a significant one himself. No, this is a, a, a big swing for both these players. And Sinclair is going to work through the problem. Even this relatively small size. Put, puts, he, that's a call, right? No, I think he threw out a time. Oh, he made the call. You're right, Sam. Threw out a single chip to make the call. I thought he was playing another time bank card. But no, he made the single chip call. And that is a huge part, a huge swing. And look at the pain on Roberts' face as Jack Sinclair becomes the first player to cross that 10 million threshold. He actually has 11.5 million right now, 95 big blinds. Roberts with 54 bigs. Yeah, there's just so many available bluffs to Roberts there. And I think that if we go 
we're going into like a really polar spot by check raising that that maybe you know you just up front bet your queens and it's it's sort of boats that you hold back to the check race yeah. and because of that the sizing maybe doesn't quite make sense and you know it's, it's it takes a, a, a lot of gumption to make that play on the biggest biggest stage here at EPT London doesn't Absolutely. come off Sinclair makes the call and Sinclair who crossed the 12 mil the 10 million mark now up to 11.5 James Absolutely, closing in on the 100 big blind mark at the 6120 blind level. And definitely the favourite right now to take first place prize money and the trophy. Uh, by the way, guys, as it is main event final table Friday, the Mini EPT London series is offering the Mini Main event. This is starting in one hour and 39 minutes. Love the accuracy of the PokerStars lobby. Uh, this is offering. A 50k guarantee for a $5.50 buy-in. But more than that, it's offering added prizes. WCOOP tickets for the runners-up and an EPT Prague package for the winner worth nearly €7,000. This is added value in this 50k guaranteed $5.50 tournament. Think of it as an EPT main event at one thousandth of the price, but still with so much added value. Needed a break. Yeah, and it, the, the thing about these these big EBT finals, watching them, is it's almost sort of boys' own stuff, you know. If, if that's the correct place, you you this is what you actually sort of dream of: being mm. on an EBT final and calling a big check raise and being right, or you know, pulling off a big check raise bluff, chip leader versus chip leader, and, and getting it through. It's really what you sort of dream of early in your career. Yeah, it's amazing to see <clears throat> these guys uh, out there doing it. I'm very. Living very, their very, dreams. Yeah, very, very envious. Well, of course, this is the second final table we've seen Jack at this year. He was heads up in the Australia's main event. A huge tournament with more than 6,300 entries. Uh, of course, he's had those huge scores at the World Series of Poker as well. If he finishes top three in this tournament, his live winnings will move over the $5 million mark. And he'll surpass me. Really? I think I'm around 4.4. <laughs> wow. Intense battle in the all-time money list streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to labor the point, but there's one guy sitting here who won more than that I in one single bloody up. tournament. No, I know. That was a layup. <laughs> you never hear it too much. Might take another tour around the around the tournament room after I finish commentary. Yeah. Here. There's still a, I'm just mopping up a couple, couple, couple of people got, that haven't said congrats yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I know. Exactly, yeah. I mean, granted, that tournament cost, like, what, seven times the average <laughs> salary to enter. But. Sure, sure. <laughs> and look at this, Roman. You can see the cameraman picking up still a little residual frustration or annoyance with himself there. He also kind of always looks like that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but, but definitely no, a but little look, more tinge. Yeah, he's, yeah, got, yeah, he's right. going off to the rail just to get a pat on the back from his boys, clear his head. What was that old school meme, the many faces of Charles Bronson? Like, you know, angry, happy, sad. And they're all the just same. the same picture, yeah. Yeah, and this, you know, it's, it's, it's a, uh, a sort of two tiered tournament. We right. saw a battle there between the big stacks, and now all right. uh, a battle between the two short stacks who are also neck and neck. And Alexandra will try and get to see a flop. Wow. With the very modest Jack Seven. Oh, okay. What Hamilton do, do, do with three deuce off? I have an idea. Oh, he raised, sorry, the Jack Seven off. I thought he, I thought he limped. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's uh, well, a little bit fruity. Good, good for you, Alex. Um, I wouldn't necessarily found that raise myself, but that's... Uh, does pick up the very valuable you know, 300,000 in the middle each and every orbit. Yeah, and, it, and mentally, you know, we, took, we talked a bit about mental game earlier. You know, it's so important that Roman just shakes that off, doesn't change his strategy. You know, he's been playing very, very well, I'm sure, over this final table over the last five days and uh, doesn't let, you know, affect him. Sure it won't. King five on the button for Alex. Starts the hand with 20 bigs. 
He has raised 240,000. 10 9 for Hamilton in the small. And Rabetz with 4 3 of clubs in the big. Wearing one of these amazing GPT <laughs> hoodies. Yeah, I forgot to try to get one of those. Are they all gone now, you think? Yeah, there might be one floating around. I think it's, it's, you're lucky, Griff, because it's the extra larges that get left behind. Yeah, right. My understanding <laughs> is the hoodies are long gone. By the way, we've got two pair against a straight draw here. Got to put that in my contract next time. Sure. Yeah, a, a nice little piece for both players here. Yeah. And Probably yeah. she's he's, he's behind. considering a lead here, I would imagine. Well, we've seen a lot of uh, a leading strategy from Rabich. And you're going to be very aware that most of the time that he has done that, and I'm sure the players will have seen these hands, he actually hasn't had anything to, to the extent of, like, you know, a straight draw here and there, but sometimes leading, you know, jack nine on three, six, five and the like. Yeah. And that's something that we've seen from Gulamir as well. So I think both of these guys are going to understand, on average, you know, this isn't just the sort of, like, taking the lead block pair, but also some, you know, air-type hands. Yeah, so Rabic, so um, Alexander sort of balancing two um, in incentives here, needs some protection so that when a seven or two comes off, he does have a straight, but also you know, wants to win the hand now on occasion and just calls and in she blows. There is the straight and... He becomes an 82% favorite. Yeah, on a Badugi board as well. <laughs> really nice to have the straight locked in. And now Krabic has to decide how to proceed. 3-4, still going to be the best hand here very often, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I mean, Vulmir shouldn't actually have that many fives in his range, raising off this 20 big blind stack. You know, the king five suited, the ace five offs, the ace five suited. But, you know, he's not raising jack-5 suited here off 20 bigs. He's probably even folding the queen-5 suited. So that really narrows the range, and I think Rabich is still going for value here um, and then maybe he might work in some block bets or checks on the river and have a really big decision if the board doesn't pair up with a 4 or 3. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, as you've kind of uh, laid out, Alex is going to be aware that there's plenty of bluffs here in Rabich's range. And so for that reason... And with the disadvantage in the number of fives we have, and without ever having seven five, gonna just call and hope Krabic hangs himself. Is setting up for, you know, you look at the stack size, the pot size bet left, so maybe Rabich just does want to go for the jugular here, and that's what he's setting up. Really doesn't think that Lumiere is gonna have a lot of fives. Yeah, I mean, all in seems a bit. Why not just bet a million and fold kind of thing? Because you would never... Yeah, I, I, we, we saw him do this. Obviously, going polar and all in is very natural, but he might just go 600 and hope to not get... Yeah. Right, it goes for 400? Yeah. And, and yeah, this is a little bit telegraphing. I mean, he's just betting his, his hand strength here, essentially. Yeah. And Alex should very likely go for the race. Kind of discount... Seven five now. See, only you know, a very marginal fraction, minuscule fraction of Rabich's range anyway. Time back card played by Vladimir. And and whichever way this goes, we should point out this is very frustrating for Roman. He's already lost a yes. giant pot just you know, within this orbit to Jack Sinclair. And he's now going to be faced a, facing a raise in all likelihood from is he, Alex. Is he going to say it? Buddy. Come on, Alex, you want to hear it? Buddy. Hey! Yeah. He said it. And let's see Roman's face. Bad, bad news. The 3-4 just turned into a bluff catcher now. Oh, go I to Roman. Go to Roman. kind of feel a little bit sorry for him because this comes so soon after that huge hand against Sinclair, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very frustrating. Obviously, just a great, great flop for Hrabec. And now, 
What fives can you have? Pocket fives, ace five, king five suited, so few fives. Yeah, I mean, he's, the thing he's going to also think though is like, what? What's the bluff here, right? He needs to. Yeah. It needs to be a seven x, something like this, and yeah, we'll relinquish. And let's just say, good fold from Roman didn't get frustrated, but that's a, another significant pot, Hartigan. Absolutely, it's completely changed the dynamic at this table because it means Jack Sinclair now has a two to one chip advantage over Harabet who's actually closer in chips to Volumia than he is to Sinclair. Rabbit's playing 45 bigs, Volumia playing 31 bigs, and crucially for Alex, he's put some distance between himself and Ian Hamilton, who's now playing 15. Yeah. And Rabbit is looking genuinely frustrated. I know, Griffin, he does have a, a <laughs> stoic expression most of the time. Resting but you scowl can, face. You can see how annoyed he feels right now. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, we, I said just a moment ago, it's sort of two-tiered with two big stacks and two short stacks. And now it's it's really spread out with chip leader having twice second place, them having, you know, distance of third place and third place having twice fourth place. Look at this. Lumiere back in action, picks up ace-queen suited under the gun. I have no evidence, by the way, but I do believe if you come suited and booted to a final table, your equity or your chance of being dealt good cards increases. Sort of like the live version of the Cavatar. Exactly. <laughs> now you're just sucking up to him. <laughs> oh, Jack, mate. Says the man who looks at his whole cards in a very specific way because he's superstitious. <laughs> And Sinclair's going it. for the three bet here with the blocker. Um, immediately seizing on the fact that Alex has chip, uh, chipped up yeah. and is now in a sort of vulnerable oh, position oh, versus the chip leader. He's now incentivized not to put the chips in the middle uh, too quickly when they've got so much more than Ian. Takes a hand which is a very cuspy defend and just turning it into a three bet. Really like this from Sinclair. But too strong ace queen suited, right? I mean, like, you have to shove here I, I, absolutely i mean I, I, i'm all in here yeah, yeah. He's, he's going for a call wow. yeah and a little bit of a misunderstanding of the mechanic here perhaps from my perspective but interesting for us as viewers to see these yeah. two go to a flop let's, let's see what happens it. if they both miss well it's ace jack jack so this is all volumia 98 percent equity and i imagine he'll be feeling pretty confident about his hand now uh, and Sinclair, you know, maybe there's some eights, pocket eights and pocket nines that we can get to fold here. Just comprise such a, so, like, narrow compared you, to the, all the ace, queens, ace, ten suited. Yeah, and he's going to feel obligated to just yeah. put out a bet. I mean, you don't even have a heart. Nice to have block backdoor clubs, but, you know, king, queen, probably not even going to fold for this sizing. Um, yeah. If you're going to tell a story... You have to start with the first chapter, and that's <laughs> at least betting something here. Well, I mean, if you had if you had ace king or pocket aces, you do still want to bet small. So yeah. I think I think the sizing is reasonable, but it's just where we go from here. A club would be an interesting card because it might incentivize Sinclair to start. Wow, <laughs> well, there you go. And now, yeah, a very dynamic turn card. Actually, one I guess which favors Alex a little bit. You know, Sinclair street would never flash. have a... Uh, street flash, yeah. Peninsula street flash. Oh, no, no street flash. Oh, Jack. Oh, Why'd you have to Jack. have the king of clubs? Could have had so many other cards. Yeah, and uh, Sinclair, I hope, will realize, I hope for his sake, will realize exactly... He's sort of realized this guy, Alex, is not sort of messing around. That The, the peel of this three bet is going to be very, very strong holdings in general. What a villainous little smile. It's like kind of curling up a little bit. So. <laughs> You're in trouble. Yeah, I think I think we should just bet our hand here if we're Alex. Um, just because we still have, you know, we, we sort of remain uncapped and, and we can sort of bet this, get called by Ace Five or or what you know, Ace Ace Five um, by Jack and, and then sort of check back the river. I would imagine that's what I would do in this spot. But it's a very intricate spot. You know, is he just... Uh, he decides to check with all the equity of the clubs. And let's see what the river is. So Claire can win with a queen. Cannot win with the deuce of clubs. That is the nut flush. And that might... <laughs> yes. 
I yes. mean, with with the king of clubs in Jack Sinclair's hand, you have to imagine if there's any avenue for him to win, it would be, you know, a hundred and fifteen percent pot shove here. Yes, because you king king six shows down for zero here out of position, and let's see if Jack Sinclair can control himself. A lot of, sh I mean, you know, again, maybe I'm being results oriented because we know it's not getting through. Um, yeah, wow. yeah, and he does sh just shut it down. And this, by the way, is a very underrated skill in poker. Some people, when they put start with their foot on the gas, start the bluff. I mean, it's definitely a problem I used to have. Once they're in a bluff, they cannot get themselves yeah. out of it. And he's not been tempted into firing. Well, who knows? Maybe he's going to check. Gonna check shop, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> Alex here deciding what size to go for for value. A bit weird when you block the ace as well. Is. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could get called by it. Yeah, but we should see. Deciding what size to go. It's again one of those where you feel like, am I only getting check raised here rather than the call? Like, am I just going to be against quad jacks, aces full, and you know, you know, I guess there's just enough ace five off, a six off. Oh, he's put it. He's just put it all in. So I mean, that will put most of it all in. Yeah, so not all of it. All we would have heard. Yeah. All in. But a lot. I mean, Sinclair's just going to get the count and the sizing and... Yeah, no, no, not, not, not all of it. Gone for half pot. And Sinclair, is he thinking about a check list? You can't rule anything out on this final table. This would be... Uh, I mean, this would be so bold and ambitious. I can't. Just taking his time to think it through, and then we'll fold. Gives Good fold. It, gives a tap of the table, and yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Volumier is drawn pretty much level now with Roman Rabetz. Sinclair, obviously, still with the huge advantage. But yeah, yes, and, you know, I got an extra little bit of value by, by making the flat ball. And, uh, you know, well One played. might look at it because the board was in king five <laughs> Yeah, but, you know. Uh, as I say, I think nice from both players. As I said, really you know, self-control after five days of poker. And also some people go, you don't want to become a megalomaniac just no, because no, you've got no. a chip, the chip lead and start thinking, right, I've got to run three street bluff. He put the, exerted the pressure pre-flop and recognized the strength I'm of Alexander's it. range and, and shut it down. I'm loving, the, I'm loving the live chat on YouTube. They're saying, fold, easy fold, fold here. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday, guys. It is not <laughs> Chat Pro Saturday. Um, Alex, by the way, has had caches on his CV since 2018, but his first European cache, and certainly his first cache on the EPC. Hold on a second. Hamilton all in under the gun. 15 big blinds. Not really jockeying at this stage for position. Yeah, this is like the third time he's got Dal King Jack off in, in like five hands, I believe. Uh, and, and wasn't you know, pretty much correctly folded him every other time. And this um, time just puts it in. I was going to say, Alex cashed in the Prague main event, cashed in the Barcelona main event, but those were kind of like, I want to say min plus caches, like 66th place, 99th place. Here he is now, guaranteed nearly a quarter of a million quid, and working his way up that leaderboard, putting himself in contention for a bigger score. And 64 of the final table. Yeah, and it's very intense to be chip leader shorthanded. You know, uh, we, I referenced earlier, you know, how quick, how fast the action comes. Four-handed, big anti out there. And as chip leader, you're involved in almost every got, hand. Got a lot of work looking for the three bet spots, looking for the light opens. Ace ten off, very very standard open on the button. Oh, wow. And an all-in from Ian Hamilton with Jack Eight of Clubs. Jack Sinclair looks back at his hand, waits for the count. UK on UK violence here on the EPT London final. And Jack has made the call, so we see Ian Hamilton at risk and behind, but with live cards not that far behind. Takes a sip of the lucky o OJ. Spin through this. You know, wait till the river, then put on a... He knows the routine. 
going over to the lads on the rail. And a stoic looking Jack Sinclair. He'll be wanting to win this and cement his hold on the chip lead. There is an eight on the flop, and that sees Hamilton take the lead. And Hamilton now set for another double up. 75%, three to one favorite, needs to fade. An ace or a 10. His rail calling for his hand to hold. Six cards that Sinclair can hit. Six cards that Hamilton needs to fade. It is the deuce that someone who's well called for. Hamilton survives again. Boy, does that really even up the chip stacks. Wow. 35 big blinds for Ian Hamilton now. Just 66 for the chip leader, Jack Sinclair. And they're starting to bunch up. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the whole structure of, of um, the stack distribution has yeah. altered radically over sort of a mere five five to ten hands um, as you say real bunching effect here uh, with Ian Hamilton still actually remains the short stack but way way more comfortable on 35 big blinds you know actually you know Roman just eight big blinds more in second position so this tournament really up for grabs now there we go there's an illustration from the graphics team straight on. Hmm. Sinclair back in action. Opening under the gun on hand 65 of the final table. Makes it 250k. Has king queen offsuit. Ace jack suited for Volumier. He's got a nice little run at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, and somewhat cuspy decision between flat and three bet in general don't get many flats versus chip leader it's not playing many hands but you aren't going to play a flat and rich range i guess this fits comfortably into it and what roman out as well Flop is 10, 10, 6. Yeah, and similar to the hand between Roman and Jack earlier, this flatting range on the button is quite a strong one. Certainly much stronger than the cutoff opening range. That reason Jack, you know, not only king queen where you don't have a spade kind of wants to check, but going to have to check a lot if not whole range over to the button not really the flop you want to see with ace jack of clubs but this is quite nice realizes that he does have the range advantage on this board and just bets for protection the ace jack forcing out two very very live cards mm -hmm. or the possibility of getting bluffed at some stage that's quite nice from alex showing some confidence uh there and a real awareness of the way the two ranges interact. And worth highlighting that with that part, Alex has actually moved into second place on the leaderboard. I mean, OK, it's very close. He's only marginally ahead of her bets, but... It's, it's a real reversal of fortunes, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. Considering that it's been Jack Roman, Roman Jack, they've been 1-2 for so much of this final table. For that dynamic to change that substantially... Yeah, and Roman folding the A7, now Hamilton with the A7 on the button. Whoa, <laughs> Spraggies everywhere. It's a bit weird, right? Everyone's wondering if Spraggy's in, still in. Well, his spirit is. Two players yeah. with the Spraggy. And it is always coming seven, so there is one of the two remaining sevens on the flop. Well, didn't you say that uh, Alex also folded a seven? Yeah, 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 exactly. Wow. Uh, um, yeah. So three of the four players got dealt a seven, and the seven is still always coming. Remarkable. The spirit of Spraggy is strong with this one. <laughs> yeah, and 
both players, you know, this is something we see reasonably often, both players with a bit, not quite enough hand to sort of value bet or protect and a bit too much hand to bluff or certainly too much hand to yeah. bluff. Hamilton could think about protection betting here, but you don't want to open yourself up for the check raise. I'm sure he's genuinely considering. Does feel like the A7 is going to be good here quite often, but against the chip leader, doesn't want to open himself up to getting pressurized. And I wonder if Sinclair goes for value. It's kind of annoying to have an ace in your hand when you're, than when you're trying to it's get called by yeah. ace high. 250, I think. Yeah, wow, that would that would be very confident bet with this. I guess the queen pairing, yeah. Why, why not? Yeah, it goes goes a bit. Yeah, and Hamilton should recognise that you know could be value betting the same hands, <laughs> which indeed he is. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a chop pot, and you know what they say: everyone, everyone loves a chop pot. He joined in. He was very quiet in the mix, but he joined in. And the fact that you tried, Sam, means you get means an extra credit. Get a raise. <laughs> and, as I said, even though it was muted, it was on time, it was in sync, sure. so you're still better than Maria Ho. Wow. <coughs> Compa comparing me with poker royalty. Wow, we're getting some our first tens across the board here, and it was when you're involved, so. <laughs> Man. Kind words from Look to Winwood. He says, been listening to EPC London all week while off work doing jobs around the house. It's been as good as listening to the cricket on Test Match Special. <laughs> Can pay no higher compliment. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> the English reference as well. Oh. Yeah, and Sinclair actually just limping now with the 9-7 strawberries. Surprising me a bit. Yeah. Deuce on the flop. Just think, you know, while you have the hammer, swing it, right? Yeah, makes sense. Fold out some, some ten sevens, yeah. queen sevens. No, I'm just, yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I guess though, yeah, how much is the difference? I mean, this is just the thing. It's like when you do close that gap. It's not like you can just start trebling off 40 big blinds, right? You, you're sort of protected by the depth of your stack yeah. uh, somewhat. So maybe there is some limping here. I, I mean, Jack's going to know his customer pretty well at this stage in the tournament, I would imagine. Reckon we should go in the lab after. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this makes this hand a lot easier to play for Jack Sinclair. Yeah, he has now become a 95% favorite. Jack is going to bet the turn. Bets 200k into a pot of 360k. And I suspect that Alex has now lost interest in this pot. Indeed, he folds. So we have got a few friends and family of the players on the rail. Our producer, Pete, spoke to Jack's dad, David who is on the rail, proudly supporting his son at the final table of this EPT main event. Thank you. Well, I guess my money's backing Jack today. He's my son, and um, I'm absolutely thrilled that he's here and very proud of him, of course. So how long has Jack been playing, and how did he get into it? Well, he started playing when he was at uni. It was a Tuesday night uh, club that he got into with some friends there and uh, it's purely recreational um, but he obviously was very good at it pretty quickly and then he uh, when he really got into it was when he was working as a recording engineer at uh, Psalm Studios in London which is a big recording studio but it was a 24-hour studio and he often had to do the night shifts so he'd be sitting there overnight basically just keeping the place holding the place together and he'd be up on the screen doing the old uh, 
playing online poker, and that's when he really got serious about it. And were you worried or excited when he started playing more and more and more? Well, I'll tell you why I was worried. He's also an excellent musician. He, he's a great drummer, and he's a great studio engineer. That was what he was doing. And he played in my band at that time. Uh, so I, I, have a, I have my own band. And uh, so the main worry was I was going to lose, my, lose a drummer and a producer. But <laughs> so, uh, no, I was delighted, to be honest. I mean, I could tell he was really, really good at it. And it was something he wanted to do. And he decided to move to Malta. That was where he became a professional when he was in Malta uh, with Phil Gruesome, who, who was out there. And Mor uh, Anton Morgenstern is another of his friends. And... Um, they brought him on, they sort of mentored him, helped him, and um, I've always trusted Jack. I mean, he's, he's, he's brilliant. I tell you what, I know we're meant to be impartial, but after listening to <laughs> Jack's dad, idea. David, and after hearing that story, I am firmly on Team Sinclair right wow, now. Wow, what a great guy David Sinclair is. Big legend. Yeah. That was absolutely delightful. Yeah, that was lovely. What's going on here, Griff? Well, Ravage is uh, feeling the wrath of Sinclair's chip lead here, um, having to fold the best hand under the gun to the button. Really no avenue there with ace-five and the way these stacks are distributed. It's just a tough tough break, buddy. Yeah. Um, Get the showers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, was, that was sick. Also, I feel like David was on a roll that we could have asked anything. Oh, anyway, yeah, no, we could have no. said, like, who was Jack's first girlfriend? Play one of your songs. What, what, yeah, like... what was he? <laughs> it was like, he was just ready to give up the gold yeah, there. Yeah. Have you got any photos of Jack? Oh, no. Like, any embarrassing story? I mean, it was, it, we're getting the works there yeah. from David. Uh, but yeah, that was absolutely, that was he, absolutely was, he was name dropping people, full names. Full names like, like, you know, way. like, he knows Anton Morgan. He knows he needs to say the full name for people to know. Like, yeah, yeah. Part of the community, this guy. Yeah, I love that. Love that. That's one of those things where the spin-off is going to be more successful than the original. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Jack Sinclair Dad Show. The Better Call Saul to our Breaking Bad. In other news, hello Joe's babies. Hello, my babies. There he is. Welcome back, me. Welcome me back. Just want to make sure you got your catchphrase in there. You Thank know, you. Sometimes yeah, you no, forget. I don't, I don't get paid without it. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't notice that. T-shirt sales aren't going to drive themselves. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Philip Muir. Making it 300K from the button. King 9, Hamilton. Look at this. Everyone's three better. Like, look at this. Everyone's just, yeah, got an ace. Let's go. Yeah, and it, it make, makes for such, you know, such a different dynamic now it's sort of nip and tuck you can each player able to sort of leverage the other one's entire stack yeah with a, uh, a three bet you know really filtered down to the oh, look, oh wow there they are do you think that there's they, a what are they composing something are they <laughs> is, is them we want to introduce violins yeah, and I can't it's drum right ba, now ba, ba. <laughs> i'm playing for 650 right now man i can't know uh, call me after it's fine do you think there's a certain dulling of the the nervous system that once you're like all in and survive a bunch of times that you can get a little Risky. looser? Yeah, because just just physiologically your body's used to the stress. Yeah, that's interesting to think about. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps there's a bit of a sense of okay. The worst has happened, I survived it, and now let's... Like riding a roller coaster, right? You, like, yeah. do it two, three times, but yeah. the time you're in line the fourth time, you're not, your heart's not really racing anymore. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it may, may well be that kind of physiological or, or psychological dynamic at work uh, some of the time. It's also just sort of uh, that these guys, you know, there's a lot of replays, there's a lot of coverage of final tables, and, you know, people know this sort of... Uh, strategy of taking the of the, you know they know everyone look at the hands everyone's using the offsuit ace as the the blocker you know the ace to open and then the ace to three bet you know there's a real understanding of of of, of hand selection as well which i mean you know this game moves very quickly pre-pandemic you just wouldn't have seen final tables play in this sort of manner um and we filtered down into the player pool I mean, something that's happened post-pandemic is just extreme focus on ICM also. Absolutely. Where all the money's made. Hobbits with ace-king is going to Raise limp. me now, buddy. Yeah, limp in the small blind. And he's going to be, what, 8-4, 7-3. I was close enough. Oh, you're yeah. too good, Jack. And Sinclair, you know, because of the suited 
properties. Doesn't want to get blown off the 7 3. And actually in pretty good shape versus Ace King. Oh, that's a good start. That uh, is a very, very wow. good start. Two clubs and a wheel draw. Fitty, fitty. Yeah. Boy, this could get dicey. Yeah, I mean, Rabbit is, is going to be very aware that the wheel interaction is good for the big blind, but can't help himself but bet. These stacks, I mean, obviously, just because it's a limp pot, the, the SPR very, very deep. And Sinclair going to be deciding whether he wants to push his equity now and raise or just call, see, a hand that can do either call is a very, very nice option. And what? Yeah. And in she blows. You can find me with two clubs. <laughs> Flashing out on the turn. <laughs> that joke might have, that song might be by 50 Cent, but the joke is worth a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and deflating for Hrabic. Definitely can't get in any clean value bets now. No backup club in hand. And Sinclair with license to kill in position. And Sinclair probably can go on the, the big side in this spot, right? Because you would be doing so, you know, with your bluffs to try to represent big strength, put pressure on. Yeah. And, you know, you're expecting to get called by the ace -X's and, you know, fold out pretty much most of everything else. Yeah, absolutely. You, and, you, and, you, and you want sort of protection and, and value now. Yeah. And, and also this, Harabach knows this is sort of a down payment, right? Okay, it's 375 now, but he has very sort of, yeah. I don't know what the word is, fragile equity. His hand can't improve yeah, here. It's a million plus on the river. It's going to be, it's, a, it's, a, it's okay now, but it's a very fragile bluff catcher on the river. And I wonder what it comes. A club would be great for Harabach. Comes a seven. Seven is always coming. <laughs> yes. So even one of your it, catchphrases. Even when it's insignificant. And Sinclair now will have to decide on sizing. Does, is, you know, would rather not have a seven in hand so that was some, some time. It feels like, more often it feels like it's going to be eight or 850. I mean, I think. But he can it, also it, go much bigger. Yeah, right? he can. Yeah. It's just whether the, the low flush yeah. wants to go. Go a bit smaller. It goes what? 1.1? 1. 1. 1. 2, I think. 1. Yeah. Yeah, and he, and, and really tough spot for Rabbit. 1.4. Wow. Yes. Over bad. And there's a lot of, I mean, I was going to say there's a lot of 5 6 with a club, 3 6. 3 6 with a club sometimes raises uh, and such like. There's just the bare king of clubs, right? A king, king five with the king of clubs. Some, some of the time, again, sometimes raises. I mean, you, when your opponent's repping a flush, it, you really want a club in your hand. That's Rabbit chucked a chip out, made the call. Wow! And Jack Sinclair, once again, the overwhelming chip leader. Wow! That is a big old pot, and plummets. Roman Rabic, who was chip leader just an hour ago, down to the short stack. What a hand. Absolutely. Ace King versus 7 3 suited, resulting in a major shift to chips. Sinclair was already on top, but now. Now. All powerful. Catapults, yeah. To more than twice the chips of Ian Hamilton. Yeah, and 40% of the chips in play, 45% of the chips in play. Absolutely commanding chip lead. And, you know, he's played very well, Roman, and he's had a real, real tough run of cards. I wish, and don't get me wrong, Jackson Clare is going to have a bluff there plenty of time. Perhaps in such a big spot, a, a, a river bet that is worth so much money, I wonder if he'll regret just not taking a little bit longer. I can't quite see here how many time banks he has. Yeah. And, of course, time banks are very valuable. In absolute hand strength, you, you certainly are pretty high in your range. But I don't know. 
maybe you just want to dwell on that spot a little bit longer and, yeah. and work, work the problem a little bit harder. Going off against the rail, and what a disastrous few orbits for the young Czech player. And Speaking of sevens, Ian Hamilton. I think with 30 bigs, we, have, we shouldn't be shoved. No. Yeah, we're just going to be... Yeah. And again, just shows these guys really know how uh, how to play these finals. Obviously, didn't know much about Alexander coming into today. Um, myself, seems to be playing really, really well. Not a super happy board for either of these hands. King, Jack, five, two hearts. Bill Lemire checks to Hamilton. Yeah, and, and obviously, although it's not a good flop with sevens, just the way your range is constructed, you know, because you have so many strong hands, lets you go for a sort of value slash, you know, I mean, more just sort of protection bet here with the sevens. And weird spot with the sixes. So you sort of under somewhat pre-flop. You'd rather have the heart, both so you can back into the, a flush, and also so that the six is just that little bit cleaner. Obviously, it's absolutely fine if you do turn a set of sixes, but, you know, when it brings okay. the flush, it's, it's it's not ideal. For yeah. that reason, nice just, just, will, just will pass. Yeah, you just hate to fold here, and your opponent just had ace, four, spades, or, yeah. you know, something about, like, luckily, and, su and such as, and such like. And such like, such has. Such and such. Such and such, such. Hamilton, despite being on death. Do we have his dad? Well, well, no, this Watson is a 10 is kill in this. High roller so final table. Cena Devare, Mike Watson, Adam yeah. Miller, Juan Pardo, Renan Brushy, Davide Katai. We love to see it. Sam Grafton, <laughs> your old buddy, Alex Keating. There he is. He, and in Daniel this particular. Aziz. In this particular simulation, Alex Keating has made the final table. <laughs> one of many. Yeah. So our overlords have decreed. Yeah, he gets this one. I'm just glad it wasn't, and no offense to Alex, I'm just glad it wasn't the simulation that was all Alex Keating's. <laughs> I've actually visited there. It's terrifying. <laughs> There's a lot of things getting And they spotted clogs. me a mile away. <laughs> right. Sinclair with clubs of the ace-king variety. I wonder whether Hamilton's going to raise on the break. He's going to be like, Gran, get down here. He's the more sympathetic character in this narrative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's willing out elderly, elderly family patches. members to his, testify on your behalf. The, uh, the, the sailor that found Ooh. his shipwrecked <laughs> bassinet. Yeah, and... Two pair, in case you didn't want to know where that woo was coming from. Two yeah. pair for Hamilton. Yeah. Ace King not doing well. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that was my two pair. Got it, okay. <laughs> Hamilton checks Sinclair. Oh, and yeah, this is you do certainly get to bet a bit wider and value and protection as we talked about as chip leader. Oh, the ace king falls into the category, but it is a little bit weird. Deep stats when the board's going to change with two pair. Uh, I think I think we do probably want to check raise, but. It's a little bit dicey. And yet, this this is just not an eventuality that happens too often. You don't get check raised very often as the chip leader. Um, Hamilton interacts with this low board a bit less than normal because he's forced to fold. But the reason to, to check the ace king would be to avoid this situation. Just, But you're not expecting to happen super often. Yeah, just draw to the dummy. Maybe it's just fine. Just bet and, and fold. Fold, yeah. Uh, you just can be dead or just drawn to nothing. But people get quite attached to ace-king. And, you know, we can see, obviously, that the two is very clean. Um, you know, and even the two of diamonds is fine, but I don't know. I mean, what if Hamilton just has... <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. That could be a, six, a seven. <laughs> pricey card for Sinclair. And now it's a super weird spot with the 4-3. I mean, are you going to find yourself up against ace-5... You know, pocket deuce it. Like, where are you in, in your range? Like, how much equity does 4 3 have? Do you want to just get value from the ASEC, which is going to be a lot of Sinclair's range? Super, super weird turn card with the 4 3. And I really don't, I mean, I guess we go into a block bet. 
line would make some sense. 2.1 you know? million in the middle, almost 2.2. <sighs> Hamilton like? betting. Yeah, this Eight, 900. This pot gets 50. Uh, go, goes I, again a little bit just uh, this is my hand trick, but I think it makes some sense. And Sinclair is involved now. Obviously, you know, does have outs the five, the king, the ace, the two for the chop. Um, can't fold now, Sinclair. You, you feel just, just taking stock of the situation. You know, real live player Jack will be trying to work through what this exact sizing means. I mean, certainly we just call. And big river card incoming. Big river card, big pot. 3.3 million. How about deuce in a song? Jack of clubs. Yeah. So, 4 3 is good. Bottom two, just weird because there's so little visibility. Like, ha have we just. Ba you know, has Sinclair just backed into Ace Jack? It seems quite possible. Ace Jack with the diamond. Has he just backed into, you know, Ace Five? You know, were we dead already somehow? Uh, can we bet this for value? Um, if you, if, if we, you can't if, bet this for value, what can you bet for well, value? Well, but if we block, are we just going to get bluff raised by King Six or something, you know? Or are they, mm -hmm. is Sinclair going to turn Six Four into a bluff and, and, and take us off our hand? But does... It yeah. does look a little like block sizing. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly how much... Wow, it's 1.3, so it's yeah. a little over... This would be an amazing third fold. Kind of, kind of nice bets all the way down, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this would be a bit. This would be a, a, a really stunning fold from Sinclair if he can make it. By the way, because don't think, yeah, is he gonna, yeah. Look at this. He's not. He's not happy. I mean, and this is maybe the problem with calling check raise on the flop because you've got the ace yeah. and you're still not happy. But you know, Jack Sinclair will have played a lot of poker with Ian Hamilton will have a strong sense of his game. He, re You know, what... I guess there's plenty of obvious bluffs. 8-7 of diamonds. But are you going to bluff the ace-jack run out, you know? I mean, isn't that really the name of the game is if you live by the hero call to not also die by the hero <laughs> call? Just as you say that makes the call shown as bad news. Very well played. 4-3 of clubs for Ian Hamilton. Vault him into the chip lead. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's a very strange hand and very tough one to play. But let's give Hamilton some credit there. Yeah. Went for a chunky value bet. You know, you could be tempted to just check and, like, let the pot's yeah. big enough. Getting that 1.3 million off the chip leader is really big. And does that change the chip leader to Ian Hamilton? Come it back. does. It does indeed. It's unbelievable. Knows Ian Hamilton with 66 big blinds. Jack Sinclair with 63. Villamare, 4.29 million for 35 big blinds. And Roman Rabbits with 19 bigs. So, no longer a far and away chip leader. Wow. And any player here, just no matter how big or small the stack is, can do a lot of damage to any other player. Yeah, yeah, really, really. Interesting few orbits. This was a two horse race for a while, but now they are back and forth jockeying. Photo finish. Yeah, a little twitch there on Sinclair's face. He's just a bit like, nah, they always have, he, you know, he, he can feel maybe that was a spot to make an above the rim. Would have been an above the rim fault, but yeah. you know, not saying by any stretch that he's made a blunder. Maybe even just theory would say we just pay here always, mm. but um, did sort of feel like certainly has made more chips than he's lost today making calls like that. Sure, sure, made it. You know. Ooh, now coming after the button open as the chip leader just throws the jacket on and starts three betting. Rebetting sixes over the open from Alexandra. I wonder what, what he would do here if he shoved. I think he just fold. I mean, yeah. you can't. It's, it's just turning into a block. It's like a hand that... I mean, in that sense, you don't really want two sixes in your hand. Yeah? You're yeah. not getting flatted too much. Maybe you just jam is better. 
I mean, Roman would just fold nines. The 19 bigs again, the 33 bigs. I like Jam as well. I, I don't know, by the way. Maybe that's... Yeah. I mean, it's going to work. It's going to work, so let's give yeah. Hamilton some credit. But it seems like just the blocking properties is, is, is not, not great for us there. Not to get too technical. I think maybe it's also, like, the strength of... Like, it, he's prepared to call off Roman for the 19 bigs. Sure, nice. Yeah. So I think that's what makes it kind of... It telegraphs that, like, okay, well, you know, if I have to call off Roman here for the 2.3 million, I can because I put in a million... And if, if somehow Vilmir is prepared to shove or yeah. post flop, then like, you know, that sucks. But he's probably just raised holding a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, makes sense. Joe Stapleton, Griffin Benger, Sam Grafton. Twenty-one minutes left on the level. Yeah. Whoa. Was that an ace eight folded on the button? I was just playing it. We th I thought that Ian Hamilton was just going to pick up the chip leader reigns. Sure. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Play, play your game, mate. It's brought you this far, but I, I, I I've would... seen some curious tight folds pre flop from, Al from Ian Hamilton. Um, and bet. I think that's probably, you know obviously works into some sort of strategy that's been really working for Hamilton, but it's just it's just going to be too tight for, for me. Sinclair with a hand, he can think about bluff racing. You don't want to go crazy with every offsuit queen, offsuit kick, just checks. Having said that, you know, Ravage may have shoved the 20 big blinds over the open here, and, and if he's not prepared to raise the ace, he certainly wasn't going to call it for 20 big blinds, so... Pair of sevens for Sinclair on this flop domination rotation. Yeah, and another bad flop for Hrabic. Pretty strong hand pre. As you say, had Sinclair in bad shape. Had a queen come out there. The seventh is always coming. Playing the games with the big and the seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Sinclair, confident again, just going for the thin protection bat. Rabic out of there. Rabic down to 18 I mean, bigs. I mean, the thing I would, I'm sure, long-time viewers know this, people are sympathetic, but it's very demanding, very grueling to play five days of poker in a main event. Very emotionally draining, not much sleep. The s emotional swings, the all-ins, the change in stack sizes, really, really, you know, intellectually tough as well, playing the streets against other tough opponents. And, um, yeah, and as much as, you know, um, we're here in the booth and, and those of you watching at home or wherever you are, you know, you're seeing most of the hands, you're probably watching a lot of the hands, but these guys are, like, hyper-focused in every situation, they're noticing so many more things than we are. So when they are in these tough spots, you know, that ace-king, for instance, maybe you saw something in a tendency that, you know, Hamilton, Hamilton's done in certain spots that has led to the conclusion that, you know, I'm going to bet call this flop and, and keep calling down, what have you. I go back to my room and cry every night just from commentary. I can't even imagine <laughs> the pressure of playing in this event. Well, do you, do you yeah. feel pressure when you do stand up still before you go on? Do you feel nerves or? I do, but it's getting less. It's getting less and less. Mm -hmm. it also depends on the situation. There are certain situations probably is very much like poker where there are certain situations I'm a little more comfortable. Is it easier when people you know are in or is it harder when people you know are in? It's harder. It's harder. It's harder in that uh, my expectations and the pressure I put on myself is more, but it's easier because the deck is stacked. Right. Okay, yeah. But, like, when I know that, like, say, you, Sam, you've been to see me a bunch of times, right? Yeah. If you came, let's say, twice in six months, I would go back to my notebook and be like, here's what I did the night Sam saw me last. I got to do some different stuff. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and I do that for almost everybody that comes to see me. Sick. So wow. that's a bit of a that's a bit of a, a stretch that most comics don't have to give an about. F about. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, and you also know that, you know, we're going to be – Laughing, cheering them on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, you know, that's it's not like your book club where you'll go in and you'll eviscerate the book no matter who chose it, how much they loved it. Well, if the author were there, he might hold back a little. Yeah. Essentially. 
<laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Travis Maybe. Falls, King mind. Nine under the gun. She's <laughs> laying into Margaret Atwood. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so She's really, yeah, her early stuff was good you, since yeah. she's, you know. Will you welcome back to the book club? Are you still uh, I'm booked up, booked Actually, up. I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind I'd love being J.K. Rowling a thing or two. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind being in the book club. Yeah, as a book club, they want to fantasy, sci-fi. Yeah, and Ham- Hamilton, interesting again, sort of two qu- decent hands folded, by the way. What we're left with is eight four and eight three. Yeah, so snap checks the eight three. Could potential there to just just raise and yeah, the three and the eight of clubs in hand. Lumia. Where did you go last night, by the way? Knitting factory? Knitting factory? What? What? what what's that? Uh, cotton club? <laughs> what, what, what's out there these days? Uh, yeah, when, we went. We Ministry went, of Sound. Where were you? No, we were, we went east. Went to Dulcan. Went to saw a punk band. It's pretty cool. What's the name of the spot? We went Jaguar Shoes. Jaguar Shoes. Yeah, okay, Dream, yeah, Dream Bag Jaguar cool. Shoes, and then uh, we went to Brilliant Corners. Uh, I don't know that one. Yeah, Who's, cool. Who'd you go with? Just. With I took, took the Brazilian guys out. Okay. Show them a, show them a few sights. I was invited to the box last we night, went, and we, I was like, ah, I'm good. I, we, I've been there before. We went, we went to the bar that's name is Shapes till, till 4 a.m. Mm. Interesting little spot. Shapes I've been to a bunch of times. Oh, uh, yeah? With, yeah. with the, the ice cubes. with the, the, They're a bit ahead of the Squid Game. they got the Squid Game almost logo. Really? Of, uh, yeah, well, because it's Shapes, it was just, yeah. Oh, that's cool. You, oh, mate. By the way, this is the, the place you go where there's no one else open at three. It's, it's like, yeah, I'm a regular day. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. Drink, looking for a place to drink at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday. The face yeah. I was making was that I usually would walk in there and then see the condition everyone else was in. And it would make me feel <laughs> yeah, really, like really eight, bad. And, and I would have like to leave. 8.5 or something. And then Rabak's got like two. And this guy's got like four. So very legitimate button hand for Alex coming in for a raise. And Roman is out. And it'd be interesting. We obviously, you know, the chip lead is sort of fractional over Sinclair. But it'd be interesting to see Ian Hamilton now in the catbird seat. New yeah. spot for him to see what he wants to do with it. You know what? I think that um, what I'm gathering from some of the ways that Hamilton has played certain hands is that he's clearly very, very capable but maybe a bit inexperienced. Sure. And, you know, when it comes to a big chip lead on a big stage, you know, if you are you need to open the ace-eight off on the button, right? Sure. Um, you know, you should probably ISO the eight-three off when, you know, the shorty on 30 bigs, uh, the third in chips, pardon me, limps in from the small. I mean, the fact that Alex is even limping in the eight-four, I don't think he'd be doing that against yes. Ravitch, you know, yes, or, right. or Jack Sinclair. So, yeah, you know, yeah. the other players are going to be aware of maybe his, his inexperience as well. But having said all of that, we've also seen Hamilton play yeah. a couple of hands very, very well. And, and so I don't think they're underestimating him, but they probably have a, have a good idea of what they're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. Roman Rabbits, ace-king suited, 16 big blinds. Yeah, probably just a shove and hope your opponent wakes up with something to call with. Something like, you know, the ace, eight plus, king not, jack plus. Not shoving. Went back for one more chip before making this raise. 320. Sinclair with eight high. Pretty good price here. We're looking at a, you know, just over a two and a half X. Um, Sinclair with that connected hand, going to want to see three. Yeah. And Sinclair, you know, you don't get many raises here as the small blind and a very polar range that wants to raise. And H7 does not immediately connect with this. There are some back doors you might get excited about if you weren't expecting to be up against such a strong hand. Yeah, and aside from actually flopping a pair, this is... Pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's much different an 8-8-6 eight, eight, board to a 3-3-6 three, three, board. The raise just knocks out a bunch of 3x, and it's going to give Kravach reason to just go for a protection bet, a value bet. 175 is that value bet. Very small. Yeah. And I wonder whether he would do this if he if he had tens of jacks or some of the other hands in his range. Sinclair, three straight and three flush is the glass half full way of thinking about this hand. And for that reason, 
he's going to call, gives him a sort of bluff on a diamond of five, etc. And interesting turn card to come. And that is neither a straight nor a flush card. Yeah. Sinclair. And how good does Roman Rabic feel? Occasionally, of course, you could be beat by the 3X, but that doesn't really matter too much at this stack depth. Absolutely beautiful card to see with the Ace King. These glasses are kind of growing on me. <laughs> it's like he's playing poker in 2037. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a little futuristic, a little, you know, cyberpunk school. I don't. He's going for the check. I'm a little surprised at that. And, you know, but let's let's be clear. If you could see Jackson Class cards yes the check would be the far superior option oh right? uh, yeah to allow a diamond to come off and, and sinclair to bluff i think with the, i mean maybe everybody loves a good trap I, uh, and sinclair you know very controlled check from jack by the way i mean he's like why would you check a king like that's just your card also you can, <laughs> also, you can yeah, just keep suspicious. value betting jacks you can still keep value betting queens i i, I don't see. your king bro Why'd you check your king? And does Prabic continue with the trap check? I mean, I mean, it's certainly strong enough to check raise all in. But, yeah, it's going to go for value. <coughs> and goes for the tiny... Blocking back. A little bit weird because I think Queens, Jacks, Tens say you had A6. A6 would be worth more than this. You don't actually have too many medium strength hands. And he's trying to bait Jack Sinclair into a race. That's what he's trying to do. It's almost a sort of an exploit, I guess. And Jack Sinclair doesn't a smile there for Roman and sweet relief after a terrible couple of orbits so because it didn't work it doesn't mean it was a bad idea right no no i mean, I mean you was, know he did everything he could to try to get money out of that ai yeah exactly he got more pre-flop than most would yeah because a lot of people would have just shoved or maybe limped yeah got you know some on the flop somehow with a small bet yeah i i think i think you you basically got to be a little bit careful maybe it is a sizing that is a absolutely fine sizing i i don't know but you got to be a little bit careful just trying to play it's just a card that that's just a river where you would tend to bet pretty big with jacks ace king if you had king five for some reason you would bet it really big and so it, it's a little bit weird and against someone as good as jack sinclair you see he does hasn't fallen for it basically. no i know that and i just want to say yeah. i think that in, in it's very rare we can say both players played something really well because someone has to win and someone has to lose but yeah that i seems mean like a pretty good example to me of i mean if you just bet that size and jack just calls with six five i think you maybe you just made a mistake i i, I don't know Again, I'm not, I'm not here to be critical of such an accomplished player as Roman Rabbit, so uh, I could be completely off. Um, Rabbit's with Queen Jack on the button. 6-5 suited for Sinclair in the small. Rabbit's still the shortest stack. He's probably this hand with just over 20 bigs. Around 29. Yeah, wants to play the 6-5, but just can't. Doesn't fit into the strategy too well to have flats there that much. Behind. Not part of the okay. game plan. Billy Mare with a dominated queen. It looks like he's just about to roll his sleeves up and, butt and burst into bum, some bum, rap banning off. Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, you guys are finally doing music that isn't. License. No, 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 no. Okay, that actually oh. particular arrangement is licensed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to have this, you know, Johan Sebastian's backs, backs state no. on us closing down our YouTube channel. Johan Sebastian's backers. <laughs> <laughs> 883 on this flop. Queen Jack is ahead. Ways to chop this pot paired board. It's going to be interesting to see Alexander's strategy. Most of the continues here come through a check raise. 
seems maybe a hand we can consider continuing with. Poker, so different these days, so sophisticated, so hard to play against. One big blind into mm. six. Ha feel a bit silly folding, feel a bit, am I overdoing it if I start raising? Yeah. Can much good happen if I just call? Yeah. When you bet the one big blind and you don't get the fold, you also feel silly. <laughs> like, what did I think that was going to do? <laughs> yeah. I think Ian Hamilton is sponsored by Burberry in some way. You think he's contractually obliged to get the Burberry gilet into I mean, as many and as much? If he is, he's doing it way more subtly than I would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like naming a hand the Burberry, like pocket aids. I'd be like, you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> Two Bs for Burberry. <laughs> Look at the lads, they're all standing still. That's riveting. I mean, it's hard to see from out there, and if you're sitting, it's you're not seeing anything. Oh, right. Alexander, and even I, he's so demonstrative. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> Hamilton, ten six. Griff said he should start raising your big blinds. Oh, oh shit! Oh, no. So maybe he's just randomizing. By the way, this also is more also than possible. Yeah, just. Do you think he randomized the ace eight fold? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there you go, mate. What there gonna, he is. What are you going to do with your Jack Deuce now, buddy? There he is. Let's go, Ian Hamilton. Have a go. Have a go, Adam. He played, he played Jack Deuce, and uh, Hamilton went full re-raise. Full re-raise? You never go full re-raise. <laughs> <laughs> re-raise, right, okay. Second time today, Tropic Thunder's come up. Mm -hmm. so about as far as we can go there, the Sam will start calling us out, you know? Correct. <laughs> I, I, it's a fantasy of mine that one day that I'm going to be in one of my Twitter fights and that Sam's, Sam's going to come from out of nowhere like the ultimate warrior and just come down. Uh, on your side, side or on, on my on, side? On your side, yeah. On my side with the, with the liberal <laughs> with the liberal backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radical. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, well, no, the, the liberals call for the radicals to come yeah. over the hill and support yeah. them. Sam's the kind of support there that it only comes when you truly need it. A guy told me. Waiting. A guy told me last the week. The hero that was, you that need that don't deserve I was or whatever. Too deep in the matrix. <laughs> and a four tweet rant. <laughs> in fairness, that's also something that I've thought. Really? Told me. Yeah. Yikes. He sent out like seven tweets in a row. I was just like, hey man, you dropped, uh, you dropped your red pills here. <laughs> TLDR. <laughs> Eptox asked, Joe, have you ever bombed at any of your stamps? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Not a lot, but occasionally. It's been a while, so I feel like I'm due. That's another thing that I, that yeah. sort of makes me nervous. I'm like, I'm bombed in a long time. Like, yeah, I'm due. And being booed off stage and driven out of town. Actually, oh, pocket queens for Billy Mayor. We can pause this. Tell your story. I was doing a, I was doing a gig <laughs> in North London, and it was like the middle of the afternoon, which is all automatically bad idea. The only guys in there are a bunch of construction workers. Sure. And uh, I did some joke like, "Yeah, I just turned 37 years old," or as I like to call this, uh, the, "This ain't funny anymore." Age, and this guy just goes. I'll say it's not. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Surely you must know when you say that you're opening the door. As for soon this. as he said that, I was like, okay, that was the dumbest thing I could have yeah. possibly ever yeah, led with. Uh, uh. Thank you and good night. Just a couple of minutes left on the level. You ever seen the, what's the Chris Rock, Rock movie, top three? Top five, top five. Top five, yeah, I think. 
you know, that. It's terrible. There's some awful politically. I remember, there's I, I remember should being be gutted. Not very good. Yeah. Some of the middle is. There's really it has a really nice ending where obviously he's sort of sold out and done movies. A period, phase of your career we're looking forward to. It doesn't seem to. You know, we're looking forward to you selling out for the money. But he he goes back to his roots. He sort of gets his limo driver and then jumps in and runs into a thing and does a stand up. Just imagine uh, okay. that, that for you. It's yeah, a really it's a nice ending. movie. You haven't seen it. It's like his. It's I think his, I read his, a really uh, scathing indictment of uh, like how disgusting. homophobic it is, yeah, and disgusting. I was like, ah, I can skip it. It's disgusting. Yeah. Okay. Roberts opening Ace Five on the button. Might be one of the last hands of this level thirty. Twenty-nine big blinds to start the hand for Dapper Dan. My, it's a little it's mannered a pro, uh, sort of uh, style to putting in the chips. I, I like it a lot. Ten, eight, six, monotone, street flash board. Yeah. Bates also good. Yeah, and Hrabec not loving the sight of that board, both for his range and obviously particularly for his hand. I can't catch a break. And just checks back. Uh, I like that a lot, actually, from Hrabec. And... Alex deciding now whether he just wants to go for a little bit of protection with the backup of the straight draw, the flush draw, can have the best hand. Or if you want to hold it back and, and, and make your check calling range a little bit more robust. We'll put the aggression up front. Quite common approach. Just get it done. Rabbits need some discipline. Opening with a weak ace as short stack is pure frustration. <laughs> chat pro, chat pro Thursday, chat pro Friday. <laughs> ah, I mean. Yikes! You have a check mark next to your name, sir. Well, that's the end of that hand, and that is the end of that level. Unfortunately, we're leaving with one of the most inane comments that's been made today. <laughs> and we have Griffin in the commentary booth. So. <laughs> Sorry, so we're gonna Just take it. We're gonna take a break from all <laughs> that. Turn me down for dinner. I love you, bro. Um, he turned me down for dinner to ride a bus too. What a slap <laughs> in the face! Yeah. What a slap in the face! It's okay. The Brazilian's worth it. We're gonna take a look at the chip counts before we go. Seemed like this thing could be over quickly at one point, but it's done what poker does and defied expectation. Roman Roberts, who at one point was first, one point was second, is now bottom of the leaderboard, 16 bigs. 26 big wides for Alexandra Villapierre. Sinclair hanging on to that second place spot. And Ian Hamilton was at the bottom for most of the day and faced elimination on two lucky rivers, is now on top. Still all the big money left up for grabs. Everyone now guaranteed over 225,000 pounds, nearly 300 for third. More than 400,000 if you're a runner up, but 664,400 pounds to the winner. Take a look at this beautiful city before we head into break. There it is. Old Lighty. Players are going on break, and so are we. 18 and a half minutes until there's more from EPT London. So the runner up's going to get 346 grand, the winner gets 611,000 pounds. 20,000 for Florent to call. Quite the comeback from Langman. Obviously, yeah. he played the huge part and was, uh, you know, decimated 
But manages to claw his way back and uh, ride out those elim eliminations. Finds himself heads up for the EPT title. It was the mixed fortunes with fours, down. wasn't it? It was the pocket fours versus the ace king that did the damage. And then he did, got the triple up with pocket fours, which put him back in contention. Yep, and then won the flip against um, against the fours with the king seven just. And Florin passes, Joseph taking down the pot. Wow, we <laughs> all right. Power Joseph, poker. 20,000, 40,000 with a running 4,000, please, gents. Yeah, early goings here. Moad coming out firing, re raising the 7 3. Hopefully, that is uh, indicative of where this heads up is heading. I'd like to see a nice aggressive game, don't we? Glory, trophies, and big monies. They're up for grabs because these guys are playing on the EPT. Someone? I still don't think there was any way for this to go at the time other than 50, being an aggressive heads-up match. More to Florin. Oh, this could be dicey. Pair versus pair heads-up. Florin calls 110,000. Langman calls Marwad's raise. And we see the flop. Is it always coming seven? Six of diamonds, no. spades, jack of hearts. Ten Up still the, the best hand. Checks. Langman checks. Seabet coming from Marwai just grabs that much. <laughs> I was thinking maybe that was like a, a 100,000, you know, maybe a 20 stack of 5Ks or something, no. but it's 200 and something thousand. Two thirds pot size bet. <sighs> you thought it was going to be an even bet. You thought that there was some consideration there. Ooh. I thought that Langman would be calling on the flop, but he's not. He's raising. Why? We don't know. Do not we think that... Stick around. Is there any element that there's a... Sorry, is there any chance there's an element of a grudge match here that Langman wants revenge? Is that reading really too much into it? Nope, nope, I don't think so at all. I think that's pretty much exactly how this heads up is going to go. Oh, my Langman God. Is... <laughs> a Moak response <laughs> by moving all in. I mean, he can't call once he Passes. raises, right? Folds. No. Takes down the pot. Yeah, I, I think you're right, James. I think if anybody, given the way that Langman's kind of been at this final table and was clearly unhappy that the ace king was called off uh, and yeah. kind of ruined his chip lead, I think there is going to be a certain amount of like an, an ego battle here that he won't want to be seen to get run over. That's in addition to the ego battles that poker already was at the time. Yeah. Like every hand was this battle over like who would back down last. It yeah, was as we mentioned, personal. Uh, yeah, as we mentioned on the first final table, that that's already yeah, very true of the heads up. I think when you get someone like Langman playing and he's already been kind of what he's seen to be like diamonds, slighted clubs, in that pot, space. right, with the fours Jack versus ace king, that I think they'll both be out Florin to uh, outdo each other. I think it'll be conducive to a very aggressive heads up match. Four of diamonds. Two pair for Marwad <laughs> and another tower of pink. I love that his bet sizes are just whatever he can grab. Uh, please forgive me. Have we had a German winner yet? Have we had a German winner yet? 20,000, 40,000. I'm not sure we have. That's a really good question, Joe. So, because either way, it looks like we're going to have our first Lebanese winner or our first German winner. 25,000 for Florent to call. Who am I missing? Who am I forgetting? It seems weird that we've covered like, you know, a dozen events and there hasn't been a German winner yet. I mean, yes, we have had a German winner. We have had a German winner. Tender win in Baden. Fair enough. Joseph calls. But the real ascent and dominance of the Germans is still to come in later seasons. King of Hearts, Ace of Club, Seven of Spades. Joseph checks. Pretty good flop from Moad. Can Langman get him off the best hand again? Flora makes a bet of 110,000. I hope they can deal with this bird's nest inside the Vic. <laughs> <laughs> 
So does it cause the 110,000? There's no chance there's any creature that happy in London. We have the Ace of Diamonds. Joseph checks. Gonna be even harder to get him off the King now. Check, check. And the River card. Oh! Oh! Joseph checks. What a huge get there for Langman. And as you said, Joe, I think it's going to be hard for him to want to fold a king given the repeat ace on the turn. 450,000 in the middle. That looks like a very sizable bet. 250k. Tough for Moad to want to fold once he gets here. Makes a bet of 250,000. Call. Yep, has to call it. Calls. Full house is good. House of nine Thumbs words. up. How much? Took it pretty well. Florent takes down the pot. Looks like Moad still has a chip lead. Just pure underreaction there from getting rivered. The button moves to Joseph Moad. Twenty-five thousand for Joseph to call. Joseph passes. A walk the for Florian Langman. Uh -huh. And takes the button. Twenty-five thousand for Florian. What a donkey folding his button. Heads up. What a what loser. A what a donk play. <laughs> And again, bear in mind that this was 13 years ago. My memory isn't that good, but I do seem to recall that the way that this show has been edited does reflect the pace, the dynamic of this final table, that it didn't actually take that long to get down from eight to two players, but it was quite a lengthy heads-up battle. Joseph calls the 70,000. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm quite surprised by that, really. Like I said, I would have expected these guys to to go after each other a little, little harder, which would, you know, naturally think that it would be ended pretty quickly. You know, when I think back, though, on the absolute heads-up grudge matches we've seen, like where it seemed kind of personal, they always take longer. Yeah, you think about Buonanno and Salter, for example, where there was a lot of ill feeling. If you think about Tim Vance versus Soren Jensen, still to come, everyone. Luckily, you get to see the cut down rather than real time heads up. Bit of animosity there as well. So, Marwad with the best hand, King High, folds. Yeah, lays it down pretty tight as well. You know, he had the King of Hearts in his hand, something that maybe he could have. Utilized at the river on a, on a heart completing river, but Hangman's bluff. You're gonna get the job done. So I referenced earlier on that Daniel Negrani signed with Stars in the summer of 2007 and made his first mm -hmm. appearance on the EPT in Barcelona. But bear in mind that the TV cameras didn't start rolling until like the second or third day when the event was already in the money. I don't think Daniel features in any shows for some time. And in fact, the first time Daniel made a deep run in an EPT was at an event that wasn't televised. So we won't yep. be covering it on these streams. 50, and that was the first EPT I attended as well. And also, that's a much later season. If we stop at the end of season six, that will still be before that happened. And we see the flop. Four of spades, nine of clubs, five of diamonds. Oh Florent checks and Joseph checks. We see the turn card, the eight of hearts. Pretty good turn here for Moad. Did they even have any action? Like, did they, did they just skip straight to the turn? It was a very quick check through on the flop, and Moad at, in position on the button, I would have expected maybe to make a bet here, has reasonable bat doors, is going to fold out probably a hand like King Jack uh, that is beating him. Uh, we do see Langman now making the bluff, and Moad making the call. Here's the thing, right? If you bet 10-7 on the flop, you're just going to get a fold from King Jack. Whereas if you call here and you brick, you're going to lose to King Jack. Seven so betting on the flop is going to give you a number of advantages. Uh, he does pick up a 7 here, but Langman looks to continue with his bluff. Four-liner on the board. But just a kind of a miserable pair. I mean, he gets there, but it's a miserable get there for Moad. Mm. 
anything that was bluffing with any reasonable equity, you know, like, oh. you know, that straight draw or whatever. <laughs> six, <laughs> he's going to get there. finish he's... explaining, Spraggy. He just snaps <laughs> yeah. it off. Undeterred. I'm just yeah. going through the reasons why he probably can't look this one up before he's, yeah, cool, whatever. Okay. Win 1.03 million chip part. At this point, hopefully it's lesson learned. Don't try to bluff this guy. If he has a piece of the board, chances are he's going to call. Yeah. 25,000 to call. Queen Jack for Langman. Foran makes it 100,000 to play. Raises to 100,000 and gets a fold from Jones Moad. Picking up the blinds. You never know what's going to happen in these heads up matches. Sometimes it's a massive cooler, sometimes it's raise and take it. They're running 5,000, please. <laughs> heads up, heads up. 25, that almost worked as an image. I will allow it. Queen Joseph three Paul. suited. Merwad completes. We are reminded that Florian Langman has posted the high blind and has 9-8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Could easily take the check here. I think there's a preference to check hands that have some sort of playability. Something like 8-9. Obviously, it's connected. You can make some straight draws. Maybe raising hands with a little less playability. Maybe something like king four offsuit. But 8-9 going for the raise, and Moad sticks around with queen three in position. Six of hearts, nine of diamonds, queen of diamonds. And flops best. So top pair versus second pair. Langman continues. And Moad says all in before the chips have even been pushed across the line. I mean, it's a draw-heavy board, but that is a huge shove. Florin calls, cards on the back. Langman calls with the 8-9. He's way behind. Nine of spades. Way behind. And Joseph has three of clubs and queen of clubs. We see the turn card. Queen. Yes. And that's it. It's over. Florian Langman is the runner-up, and Joseph Merwad is an EPT champion. And the last card, eight of clubs. So long, man. Joseph takes it down. Langman cashes for 346k. Joseph Merwad receives 611,520 pounds. And as you drew attention to earlier on, Joe, Joseph Merwad becomes the first Lebanese champion on the European Poker Tour. I think everybody plays different on TV. Nobody wants to be bluffed on television. I'll defer to Joe in a moment because he knows the big game much better than I do. I, off the top of my head, can't think of any hands that you specifically played, but you witnessed one of the biggest hands in big game history, which was Vanessa Selps, and I'm going to use the word in inverted commas because it's slightly unfair, Vanessa's punt with Jack Seven against oh, Pallad Freeman. Pallad. Pallad was yeah. on the punt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. I and remember thinking, whoa. <laughs> there is... There is a great moment after the hand, after the board runs out three times, all bricks, and Prahlad scoops the part. And Vanessa turns to you and went, why do I do this to myself? And you say, with all sincerity, I have no idea why you did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand now and then why she actually did it, because he could only have aces in that spot. And it's like one of those spots where you're on TV and sometimes people want to be a hero. And Vanessa just was like, okay, well, if you have aces, one in 220 times, great. If not, I'll be a hero. And it kind of backfired. It happens. It happens to the best of us. I remember there. doing the commentary on that and trying to make the justification for her with the Jack 7 and my boss stopping me and going, no, just, <laughs> just live out this moment the way everyone else is going to see it as. What is she doing? I was like, well, actually, there is kind of an argument and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, none of that. We're just reveling the fact that there's like a five hundred thousand dollar pot right now, Jack Seven versus Aces, and I'm like, okay, fine. 
whatever. I think Antonio might be the worst person in the world to make that statement to on the way away from the table, by the way. He's not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not going to – he does not care about your feelings in that moment. He's just going to go, right, but think yeah. about think about all the times she got paid off moving forward in her career because of that hand. I mean, there's some value in punting on TV, especially in that moment. People are way less likely to bluff you in the future. And when you actually make a hand, you're more likely to get paid. So, yeah, it was obviously a big punt, but there is some value in it long term. Did you ever do things differently on TV during that era in the hopes of it paying off for you later in non-TV situations? I I think everybody plays different on TV. Nobody wants to be bluffed on television. And so, and everybody wants to be a hero. So I think it just changes the overall game to many different levels. I know that I probably played a lot looser um, on TV. Um, And so did everybody else. Everybody wants to be a hero. Well, the other TV show we want to talk about is Shark Cage, which is a show that was built around bluffing. Um, And both you and Maria played in both seasons of shark cage and both made the final in the second season of shark cage so you both have plenty of of experience at this show um in in turn i want to get your honest answer to this maria when you heard that stars had come up with a tv show where they wanted to put people in a cage were you thinking what are they doing (laughs) i mean i kind of thought it was brilliant like just when i heard about it like i was like okay this sounds cool and i I love it um I didn't want to be sent to the cage, but I thought it was a really cool concept. Yeah. I I mean, I think a lot of players, Antonio, just heard it's a million dollar free roll. I'm like, yep, you can do what you want to me for that. (laughs) Of course. First of all, I think anything that brings some sort of fun and something new to poker is great for the game. And I actually love that show. And I'm still bitter because I had an opportunity to put Phil Ivey in the cage. And I didn't. If I just called him, he's going in the cage. Instead, I raised like a ding dong. And uh, he didn't go in the cage. So that would have been nice. But that was a great, fun show. And, you know, anytime somebody puts up a million-dollar free roll, kudos to them. You know, we got nothing to lose and a million to win. I mean, that's pretty strong. Welcome back inside the Hilton Park Lane. We are here for the Pokestars European Poker Tour. It's the London main event hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. It's final table day and we are still at four players. But things have changed. I'm James Hartigan alongside me, Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me, James. Bit of a change at the top. Ian Hamilton is now chip leader, 57 big blinds. Jack Sinclair, second in chips with 48 bigs. Alexandra Villemur with 27 big blinds. And one-time chip leader, Roman Harabets, is now the shortest stack with just 16 big blinds as we go to 100,000, 150,000 with a 150K big blind ante. I mean, for so much of this final table, it's been the Sinclair Harabets show and now Hamilton has suddenly cut through. Yeah, absolutely. Had a couple very fortuitous all-ins to keep him in and prevent him from busting. And now he's turned it around up to 57 big blinds and now our new chip leader. And Hamilton, one of the more, I think it's fair to say, inexperienced players at this final table. Jack Sinclair, probably the most experienced. Two seven-figure scores on the World Series of Poker. A six-figure score from his second-place finish in the record-breaking Estrella's main event in Barcelona a couple of months ago. And close to $5 million in live tournament winning. So one of these four guys will lift that trophy tonight. We're playing down to a champion today. There's 664K up top, and cards are in the air once again as we kick off level 31 of the tournament. Uh, James, remind me, or sorry, inform me if I'm incorrect in saying this, but I believe it was, in fact, Sinclair all-in against Hamilton for his tournament life on two occasions. Correct. With the best hand. And he still has 50, uh, and he still has 48 big blinds. He's not that far behind, so he's done really well. It's very close at the top, just as it was when it was Robert Sinclair in the one and two positions. But right now, officially, it's Hamilton in the catbird seat. And in the middle of the pack is... Volumier, who's opening here in the small blind with King-Queen. Action folded to him, and he completes 
and Hamilton checks his option with 9-8 off. Also, a quick shout-out here to Curling Master in the chat. He reminds us that, of course, that mini EPT London main event is going to be kicking off in about five minutes' time. $5.50 buy-in, eight max. There's a bunch of money and a bunch of other prizes added, as James alluded to earlier as well. We're giving away an EPT prog package and a whole bunch of other WCube tickets to take part in as well. So jump in there and uh, join it. I'm going to be playing that as well if you guys want to try and bust me up. Well, we've got two pair on the flop for Hamilton, who leads for 150,000. Apologies, action was checked to him. He's playing in position. And with the King of Hearts in his hand, two overs to the board. Lemire makes the call. Six of clubs on the turn. Checked a second time to Hamilton. Now, of course, that six, James, means that if uh, Volumier did, did have an overpair, he's now counterfeiting the two pair of eight, nine here. Although, given the action, I'm not so sure if he's really representing a hand like that just yet. Perhaps we might have seen a raise on the flop or something like that. And the queen on the river is the counterfeiting card now. Queens yes. and sixes do now beat nines and eights. And this is where, with the benefit of hindsight, everyone will be saying, why didn't Hamilton bet the turn? Uh, I wonder if he might have missed some value on the turn here. I mean, I'm not sure if King-Queen would have called a bet there, James, but certainly other combinations that would float would continue there once in a while. Now, obviously, allowing the King-Queen to catch up for free. Question from Yoni here in the chat asking about, do we know if Vicky Corin Mitchell still plays? She, in fact, did take part in this EPT. We saw her earlier this week. Um, weird spot for a race. Which is quickly called. Villamia made it 150,000. Hamilton raised to 500,000. And with that quick call, Hamilton will be down to 51 bigs. Villamia up to 33 bigs. That's an unusual line, James. I wasn't really expecting that from those hands. But um, nice hand there for Villamia. And uh, yeah, just being very, very consistent and solid throughout this whole tournament. Thank you to Optical JW on YouTube, reminding us there is, of course, two hours of late reg in the mini EPT London main event. This is the online series that's been running alongside our live streams from EPT London. And just to highlight once again, $5.50 buy and a 50K guarantee, WCube tickets added to the prize pool, and an EPT Prague package for the winner. Yeah, kind of unusual there, for sure, guys. A couple of people in the chat kind of talking about the, the raise there. 8-9 having a lot of showdown. Definitely a more unusual line on the river, but into hand number 85 now. Hamilton in the small blind with ace-jack suited, playing into our short stack. 14 big blinds of Roman Hrabec. Might be tempted just to put him in here. Instead goes for the raise not all in, it looks like. There it is, 450K, so a 3X raise into the 14 big blind stack. Like it a lot. It is cool. I think I think in these situations, James, you kind of like to shove ace-jack off, and then you raise ace-jack suited, not all in. It's one of those, because it, if you do get looked up by the big blind there, having that suited um, ace-jack means it has much better playability, and therefore you can raise sometimes with ace-jack, and you can shove sometimes with ace-jack, but you have a reason or a yeah. strong reason to do an alternative line uh, with the suited combination. So very close to the top now between Hamilton and Sinclair, the two Brits at this final table. Alexandra Volemier looking to become the second Swiss EPT main event champion. Roman Harabets looking to win the title for the Czech Republic. And Alex under the gun opens with King Six of Spades. Ian Hamilton, 9-3 of clubs on the button, folds. Rabetz has pocket tens in the small blind. I think this is a pretty easy shove, James. No messing around here. We are four-handed. Pocket tens, very, very strong combination, but vulnerable, of course, to overcards coming on flop turn river. 
I think this is a very clear shove, especially as the shortest stack. If he was a middling stack with 14 big blinds, then one it's a one little one. bit more tricky, but I still think it would be a jam regardless. Well, I think this is going to be a virtual all-in, a very committing three-bet from Harabets. Makes it 1.5 million, leaving himself 725k behind. A little bit of posturing here. King six of spades. No chances is a call. The Lumiere not going to be gambling with that combo today. Kravach does pick it up. Now up to 19 at big blinds. Still the shortest hey, stack at the final table. <laughs> Turns around to his rail and says, hey, guys, where was the cheer? I won a pot. You're not exactly. doing your job. At the very least, raise a beer for your boy. Exactly. And 87 of the final table, and action's going to start on chip leader Ian Hamilton. Hamilton with ace-queen. Ooh, very nice. Our new chip leader, 53 big blinds to start the hand, guys. But, of course, he'll be looking at the stacks behind him for the effective stack to decide how to play this hand. I think it's always going to be just a raise, not all in, though. Oh, Ace Queen for Jackson Clare as well. <laughs> Jackson Clare now one of the middling stacks, although he was, of course, our leader for so long with 44 big blinds. In fact, 46 before he makes his call. And Valimia with King Eight of Diamonds, having already invested the ante, the big blind, 200k to call. Nope, lets it go. The flop is Jack 7 6. So if this hand goes to showdown, it will be a chop. The operative word in that sentence being if. Such a big word for just two little letters. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely see some action here. Flop turn river that might award one of these ace queens the pot at non showdown. Two checks, though. It's looking good for the chop thus far. Yeah. Ten on the turn. It gives both players the gut shot to the nut straight. Both players with a diamond blocker as well, which might come into play at some stage. comes a delayed continuation bet from Ian Hamilton having checked the flop he will bet the turn 475,000 yeah weird spot I'm not entirely convinced that Sinclair is just going to give it up at this point there it is. A raise to 1.4 million. My guy is just so spicy, dude. He just knows what's up. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, James, I just figured he had ace-queen, so I just thought I'd go ahead and raise. Another. Yeah, I just take it away from him right here and now. How? How? How does he know? Jack, what's your secret? So it's 925,000 for Hamilton to call. And he does call. And this hand is going to the river. We have a pot of 3.8 million. The two biggest stacks at the final table. And that river card is the eight of clubs. Changes nothing. By the way, king eight would have been the best hand. Just saying, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, he's blocking the queen nine straight, guys. He was trying to tell a story on the turn. Does he continue telling the story now is the question. I mean, I wouldn't have found a check raise on the turn here, so I'm just going to default to whatever Jack says because he's the man. He's the boss. Four million. Four million. The overbet River James. In a situation where we can see he can't lose, if Hamilton somehow finds a call, <laughs> it's a chop. <laughs> what but a beast. How the hell does Hamilton find a call here? You guys, how sick is this line? What are you if he if he has kings on this river, how does he feel? It's so savage. The absolute beast that is Jack Sinclair. And there is the fold. Let's go. <laughs> Hamilton gets pushed off a chop as Jack Sinclair reclaims the chip lead. And there is now some distance between them. Sinclair with a 60 big blind stack. Hamilton has dropped below 40 bigs. Yes, Team Sinclair. Guys, take note. That is the man right there. What a play. Absolutely unbelievable bluff. I mean, bluffing with the same hand, but doesn't matter regardless. Wins the pot. Absolutely fantastic poker there. Really, really cool spot. Don't bother me with details, Bert. Just give me the diamonds. It's a great bluff. <laughs> see the stacks of all four players nine six four just shy of three roman harabets still playing fewer than 20 big blinds still in last place right now jack sinclair just walks off to tell his friends guys you won't believe i just pulled the sickest one of all time <laughs> couldn't contain himself <laughs> hamilton now with queens in the big blind Brumier just limped. Hamilton is raising. Yeah, it looks like we're doing well. Did I get the... Uh... Oh, sweet. <laughs> Much obliged. <laughs> Getting information from the stream and beverages. <laughs> he goes, anyway, buddy, I'm over here playing for like 600K. Did you bring that Coke? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry, sorry about that, Jack. Totally forgot. Come on, Rail. Sort it out. I don't know. A couple, couple interesting pots there from Hamilton. And Sinclair taking control once more. Yeah. You know, you got to give Hamilton credit, though. Making the call on the turn with the best hand still. So in a, in a very un unusual and sort of underplayed situation, I would argue. Not a super f frequently uh, that you're going to be check raised on the turn like that, especially not from a hand like Ace Queen. Yeah, opening here on the button with Ace Four, three hundred and fifty thousand. Robert's with ten three of diamonds. Just a note here, guys. Robert with seventeen big blinds in the big blind. Sorry, seventeens. 17 big blinds in the big blind, having put in his big blind and his big blind ante. Too many big blinds. He's just going to fold. He wants to stay out of the way now. He's aware of the fact that he's in a precarious situation, and he's going to avoid it there. Here's an interesting question. Is Jack Sinclair the only player at the final table who has someone on the rail watching the stream who he can go over and check hands with? Because... Granted, it changes the dynamic, and we've said this from when we started doing Cards Up coverage of final tables. Of course it changes the dynamic, but that information is available to everyone. Yeah. All players could do that, conceivably. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lesson to be learned here, James. Be nice to people. Otherwise, when you make it to a final table, nobody's going nobody's gonna to be your rail ninja and give you, give, you know, watch the stream and, uh, you know, spot for you. In the small blind, 10-7 off here. Folded round. And in his big blind, so punishing. Only Jack Sinclair to act behind you. One of the biggest stacks. I don't know if this is a little bit ambitious, James. Limping when you have Jack Sinclair in your big blind. I feel like he's going to try and lean on you at all times if you limp at all here. 
Having said that, you can sneak in some uh, traps as well. You can limp jam and all kinds of stuff here too. Ah, ah, what did I say? So yeah, Sinclair raises to 450,000. Teruli, I'll respond to your question again in, oh, I'll respond to it now, hands over. Uh, with the stream being on a 30 minute timer, I think you mean delay, What's the point in taking phones away from the final table if they could just ask the rail about a previous hand? For game integrity reasons, we don't want the players to have electronic devices at the table because even though we have full confidence in our systems, we want to employ a belt and braces approach and we don't want the perceived impropriety of people receiving text messages or phone calls or any form of communication while they're at the table playing in a hand where there is live hold card information being relayed. All the guys around the rail are just watching the stream. So they're just telling them stuff that's happened 30 minutes ago. There's nothing wrong with that happening. Yeah. Really, really tough spot here, James. On the button, ace-deuce off, only 16 big blinds behind. It's like almost a hand. You feel happy, you know, shoving, but it's not quite strong enough at this stack depth. Looks like he's going to play it just as a pure raise, also acceptable. There is a significant amount of dead money out there to pick up if it goes through pre-flop or if you can take it down post. Yeah. And I know there has been a lot of conversation in recent Running weeks about live streams, about RFID technology. We're very keen to highlight that we have an in-house graphic system which was custom built from the ground up. It utilizes a bespoke card reading system. We utilize the latest encryption technology. And crucially, it's a closed system. It is not connected to the internet in any way. And it's managed and maintained by our production team. So Queen Six does defend their big blind here. Queen Six off. And on the flop, Queen Six off does not improve. Ace two is still the best hand. And of course, Rabec with that sort of gutter ball scenario, the five will give him the wheel straight. Precarious spot, though, James. 14 big blinds behind for Hrabec. It's one of those boards where I think the C-bet is fine or the check is fine. It really depends on what you think your opponent's going to be defending with here and how frequently you're going to be able to get them off on later streets if they do come along with a 3 or a 4, for example. <laughs> come on, Rail. One other little detail, Nick, in case you're interested or anyone else is interested. Our RFID cards are manually coded. We don't get these off-the-shelf pre-assigned cards. Ugh. And you'll notice the deck is changed frequently, at least once per level. Disgusting off-the-shelf cards. Don't be ridiculous, chat. Custom, bespoke RFID cards. What an industry. Okay, back in the mix now. He is UTG, but don't forget that's basically just the cutoff, guys. Okay, another pot picked up. So Harabet's up over 20 big blinds and closing the gap between himself. And Alexandra Belumia is going to say, and the crowd go wild. Absolutely, guys. And, you know, he is the, he is the shortest stack at the table now with just 20 big blinds, but he's only one double away from being second play, you know, second in chips here, something like that. And this is where it gets really spicy. You know, so much can change at any given moment with the turn of a card.
blind v blind situation queen jack versus king six hamilton completes roberts raises For the most part, this would just be a limp call in most cases, James. But I'm kind of reminded of a hand we saw earlier where Hamilton did use Queen Jack as a, as a three bet. It was a very it was a different setup, but I wonder if he's going to kind of value Queen Jack off in the same manner here. And it looks like that's exactly what we're getting again. Again, having that recall is so good in poker, right? To be able to remember the patterns that we see, and obviously we see the cards, we're, we're looking at it from a different uh, different angle, but being able to recognize patterns in your opponents is a very, very important skill in these scenarios. Hamilton likes the queen jack off as a raise here, and definitely a big chunk out of Frobeck's stack. Now down to 18 big blinds. He only loses a few, but in terms of his total stack, very, very significant, more than 10%. And to answer Verd's question on YouTube, how much longer is this level? It's only just started. Still got an hour and 10 minutes to play at the 100,000, 150,000 blind level. It's an hour and 10 until the next scheduled break. And we will continue playing 90 minute levels for as long as there are four players. Once we are down to three, the levels will go to 45 minutes. We'll keep on playing so there ain't no more cards left. Epoch fails. Is what kind of blind system does 100, 150, WTF? The, there are some funky blind levels which were brought in to compensate for the big blind ante. Look, this is not my area of expertise, Nick, but this was done in consultation with players to compensate for the big blind ante. There are some small blind adjustments that have been made yeah. over the course of the last couple of years. I, I don't see any problem with this either. It seems fine. I, you know, it, and also if it means that we have fewer colors on the table as well, that's, that's fantastic. Because don't forget, guys, at this stage of the tournament, you know, knowing what the other chip stacks are is so critical. Like at, at the start of each hand, you want to know exactly how people are stacked and where they're positioned at the table. If you can look over at just two colors, it makes your life so much easier, especially if you are colorblind in any way, shape, or form, which I know I struggle with when I play live poker too, especially when we're looking at two very pastel -y similar colors and um yeah fewer chips is better you know absolutely and i think having a slightly larger small blind really doesn't isn't going to upset anyone it seems fine action here is on jackson claire the small blind with a6 moon child watching on youtube says i'm going to focus on the mini main I'm assuming that's the table you've got open on your computer there, Nick. Yep, I'm in the mix with you guys. $5.50. We're rolling deep. 2,945 entries so far. Late reg open for another 1 hour 50. And that EPT Prague package contributed by PokerStars. Worth nearly 7,000 euros as we go to the flop here. Unraised pre and a Queen Jack 10 flop. 75% chance of a chop. But there's one thing we know about Jack Sinclair. He loves to push a player off a chop.
Sinclair's bet of 150,000 has been called. Nine on the turn. The board gets straightier. And now there is an 88% chance of a chop. Sinclair being out of position here is just such a huge disadvantage in situations like this, James, because even if Illumier just has a complete airball float, you know, as soon as you slow down here, they just have so much information with you acting first. But if there's anything we've learned about Jack Sinclair, it's he yes. knows what to do in every spot. And look at this, the continuation. It's, I mean, I don't see any way that Lumiere can continue here unless he wants to just pure chase the gutter ball to the straight. Turning his disadvantage into an advantage here with the lead turn. Doesn't even have to put that much more in. It's just so punishing. Even if Lumiere has like a 10 or a jack here, you're just like, eh, come on. Nice hand. Very well played from Sinclair. Just leveraging that big stack, right? He's like, okay, yeah. you know what? I'm going to put him in the tough spot. He might have a king here once in a while, but I'm happy just to go ahead yeah. and lead turn again. Absolutely fantastic poker. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, guys, but I see some conversation from people who are based in parts of the world where PokerStars does not offer a real money service or where Mini EPT London is not available, talking about potentially using a VPN. Please be advised that is against PokerStars' terms of service. Chances are you'll be protected. Your account will probably be closed. Funds could be confiscated. Certainly anything you win would not go to you. So three words, don't do it. Yes, in the words of Joe Stapes, it's a negative free roll. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, just a reminder, guys, even if you're joking, absolutely no spoilers. It's not even a Joe Stapes ban. It's a lifetime ban. So don't just be cool. Just be cool, guys. Behave yourselves. Thank you to you, 000 Bino, who's on my table in the $5.50, says enjoying the commentary. It's kind of you to say that. Good luck in the tournament. So we've got Hamilton here who is open-ended, and we've only seen one of Harabetz's cards. We know he has the four of hearts. What if his other card is the five of hearts? <laughs> he took the words out of my mouth, James. Uh, Hamilton now in the big blind. First to act. I feel like this is a good spot to speed up. Yep, here it is. It's not big, but it doesn't need to be. 275k, trying to lean on some of those small pocket pairs, lean on some of those ace-king, ace-queen, ace-nine suited, ace-eight suited kind of hands. So Hamilton is going to take that one down. Ian Hamilton hovering around the 45 big blind mark. Sits in second place on the leaderboard as Roberts drops down below 15 big blinds. He is in the danger zone. Danger zone! Indeed. I don't know. I didn't feel that one. It was all right. like it fell off at the end there. Sorry, guys. Try my best out here. I'll never never be able to do it like, like Joe. Okay, hand number 97. Sinclair UCG with pocket jacks. Four-handed absolute monstro. Big blind... Robich, now only 13 big blinds. We've seen him avoid some of these shorter stacked big blind defends, and rightly so. So much pressure on him to remain in this tournament. 
and try and find some more ladders and potentially a win here in London. 8-7 suited, sorry, 8-7 off, excuse me, might be a hand he wants to continue. He does make the call. Currently miles behind, only about 18% pre-flop. And queen nine, Jack still good. Sinclair, huge favorite on this board. Yep. Uh, obviously not the best flop for Jax, but you're still pretty confident you have the best hand a lot of the time when you have this four-handed dynamic, James. Yeah. Um, happy just to check. This seems like a very, very standard check, especially when your opponent has 12 big blinds behind. You don't want to bet and get check raised by, you know, a weird straight shot, uh, straight draw or, you know, a complete bluff, and you're forced to kind of get away from it. Check, 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 turn as well. I think it's fine. Having the jack of diamonds here is relevant, too, because your opponents will have fewer flush draws that you're trying to get value from when you bet turn here, which is one of the one of the considerations. Like, you go, if I'm betting this turn, what am I getting called by that I beat? Maybe a three, maybe a nine, maybe the diamonds. And it's a pretty clean run out for the jacks. I think if your opponent checks again on the river, there is 100% value, though, because I'm sure Hirabach at this point would realize that even a queen would be a pretty clear value bet. So if we see a check on the river and not a bluff, I think Sinclair should probably try and go for some value here. This is not a man that misses these spots as well, James, right? We've seen it so often. Ah, he's like, is he, I'm not sure he's going to call me. Yeah, he, he's like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm winning here, but uh, I don't know if a three, a six, or a nine calls. Well, Jackson Clare has now increased his chip lead and is back up over the 10 million mark once again. 10.23 million for Jack. 66 big blinds. Oh, and it's 10. And then it's 10. Roman Roberts hovering around the 10 big blind mark. Juice. <laughs> Around the blinds with her all bets in the small, and that means it's Jackson Clare's big blind. Hold on. Seems like a clear shove, James. <laughs> oh, I can beat that. The hammer for Jackson oh. Clare. Oh, <laughs> savage thing to do if I had aces, wouldn't it? Be like, show you. And <laughs> <laughs> I think I should go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty sick. There's a very bizarre conversation about geography taking place. I don't even know myself. I messed it up. Yeah. YouTube right now. But for the avoidance of doubt, guys, there are two continents over that side of the Atlantic. There's North America and there's South America. Correct. They're, and they're Mexico is officially in North America. Correct. There is an improvement. <laughs> Sinclair shoves small to big, gets fold. Oh, yeah, more than I thought. Right? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, okay, I miscounted. Could you add five high? That's 
<laughs> Nick Hayward says James is wrong. What am I wrong about, Nick? Uh. So we do see the opening here from A6 off from Frabech. Still one of the shorties. Hamilton in the big blind does want to defend. Coming along with the jack-10 off. Currently pretty close to a coin flip pre-flop. And a huge flop for Hamilton. The absolute nutterinos. You're on the final table, guys. Picture this. You're on the final table of EPT London 2022. You've got jack-10. You defend your big blind. And you flop the nuts. Your heart's got to be pounding out of your chest here, keeping it cool. Sportswear Sith Lord. I'm waiting for Nick Hayward to come back and tell me what I was wrong about because I'm looking forward to having a financial bet about the geographical location of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Ravage with the C bet. It is really small though, as you would expect. Jack-10 with the jack of hearts. Again, I, I know a lot of you guys hate the blocker situation, but having that jack of hearts does make it really hard for your opponents to beat you in this pot a lot of the time. I am aware that some people, by the way, class America as a single continent, but it is more commonly split into North and South America. If that's what you're referring to, Nick, okay, we can agree on that, right? Yes. Uh, he's gone away. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say again there, Hamilton with the check raise on the flop with the nuts. When your opponent's that short, James, just flatting, I think, it, it, you can you can get away with a flat there for sure, especially with the heart blocker a little yeah. bit more often. You want your opponent to go nuts on you there. You want to keep the bluffs in. And I think uh, even though I don't think Roman had the kind of hand that would blast off, you never know, and you're not afraid of a whole lot when you're about 11 big blinds effective after he puts in the C-bet. Oh, oh, Sinclair is open with ace-jack, and Harabet's playing fewer than 10 bigs. He's got ace-10. Yep, absolutely mandatory shove, and he is going to be dominated, guys. There, there's no chance we miss this spot. There is the shove. You have 1.5, right? 1.5. And Sinclair makes the call, and this is a domination situation. Roman Harabets at risk and way behind. Hey. <laughs> Sinclair with the best of it again. He's had so many people on the ropes this entire final table. Can he get it done this time? Let's see. To ladder into coming. top three. Is the tempo coming? Tempo. Davi Lemos, Central America is not a continent. Thank you for your question. There's a jack on the flop. The gut shot for Harabets. So you're saying there's a chance, James. He does not have 44 outs. He has four outs. He needs a king. <laughs> we, want, we want low cards. Pair the board or low cards. That's low. Only a king on the river will save yeah. Roman Harabets. King of hearts. King. king! It's a deuce, and the online qualifier cashes out in fourth place. Yeah. Coming into this final table, many people, including myself, predicted a heads up battle between Sinclair and Harabets. But. He was never able to get back into the game after sliding down to become the short stack, and that will see him bust in fourth place. He will receive £227,800. We are now three-handed, Nick, and Jack Sinclair has 12 million chips. Yep. I think if you're one of the shorties at this table, you're thinking, please, oh, please do not give the chips to Jack Sinclair. This guy is flexing super hard. And that means we're down to three players. Jack Sinclair now a significant chip leader. Uh, this is this is incredible. I told you at the start of the day I was in Team Jack, Team Sinclair. 
And I'm very happy to see him stacking chips. After getting his opponents in so many times with the best hand on this final, he finally eliminates somebody in fourth place. I mean, we know variance is high in tournament poker, especially when stacks are relatively shallow. But Sinclair must be, not just because of his chip lead, but also because of his experience, because of his focus, has to be the firm favorite now. I, I think he was probably one of the favorites going into it when we actually came back with six, but certainly in, in a three-handed scenario. You know, guys, I'm going to say it again. You guys hate me for it. If you play a lot of three-handed poker, you play some of the hardest yes. positions in the game extremely, extremely well. And, you know, the best players in the world know how to play those tricky spots because they practice them so frequently. I'm really excited to see what Jack does at this point because he can really start flexing at this point, as though he hasn't already been doing that this entire time. goes for Hamilton who's playing around 8 million chips at the moment, around 50 big blinds. Sinclair has close to 80 big blinds and Alexandra Volumier is playing a 16 big blind stack. Thank you. We're three-handed, James. This is where the real poker starts. Well, also, we've got 45 minutes left to run on this level, and the blinds will now be 45-minute levels. Now we are down to three players at this final table. Thank you to Curling Master. Great question here, James. Yo, Nick Walsh TV, is there any regular programming on PokerStars that shows a lot of shorthanded poker per chance that one might watch to learn to play shorthanded? Why, yes, Curling Master, yes. I do stream frequently on the PokerStars channel. In fact, every Wednesday and Thursday when we're not doing EPT, etc., I, in fact have a regular spin and go stream that you guys can join and uh, come and hang out with me. So go and check it out. Sinclair has shoved on Lumiere, who actually has the same hand, ace four. I can't believe, by the way, this argument is still continuing. <laughs> guys, use the internet. There is no such continent as Central America. Death Paul says, this is like a spin and go, your fave. I know, I know. That's why I love it, you guys. That's why they get me on these streams. You know, I actually know what I'm talking about once we get this shallow and three-handed. So I'm useful at some point. Still playing 12 million chips. This time I knew how much you had. <laughs> a reminder, WCOOP take two is just around the corner. After what happened in September, we are finally going to conclude the series from the 5th to the 9th of November with boosted guarantees for take two of the main events. And of course, the high buy-in main event, the 10K World Championship of No Limit Hold'em will be streamed on Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> Three days of coverage, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of that week. Cards up through the bubble, down to the final table, down to a winner. There, there it is again. Goes. There it is again. It's so cute. I love everything about this guy, from the way he sits at the table, to the way he dresses, to the way he says, Olin. 
I'm glad he's made it to at least third place. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone now Down guaranteed <laughs> nearly 300k. But still, significant prize differences between third, second, and first. I would say, Nick, that there will be a few people asking very soon, oh, deal negotiations? For as long as Sinclair has this chip advantage, I don't think he's going to be open to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A player like Sinclair goes for gold, and I don't think he's one to back down, especially not in the current circumstances with yes. the blinds the way they are. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, we're going to settle this once and for all. We're bringing in our American correspondent, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. All in. Joe, you're here once and for all to settle this geographical debate, which is raging on the YouTubes right now. Mexico is, in fact, in North America. Correct. Central America is not an official place. Correct. What else? That's it. Okay. We're good. We concur. We agree. Oh, and I do love chimichangas. We've got a Mexican food reference. The exec <laughs> producer will be very happy. <laughs> oh, she's on a Zoom call. She missed it. Save it. <laughs> There's more where that came from. All right. So the flop went check, check, guys. Hamilton now up and down. Three, four, five, six. Needs a seven or a deuce to make the straight on the river. Sinclair with position still. No action on the flop, though. Just goes check, check. Uno diez. Cuatro diamond. So what do we have here? I know Sinclair and Hamilton have gotten into some dicey spots. Nine high doesn't have a ton of showdown value. Not a fun spot to have to bet. He don't care. Yeah. Rep those diamonds. Rep those diamonds. Nice and small, too. Doesn't have to bet big here. Yep. Love it. 250K. Get out of my pot. You know, we've seen some wild stuff. There's no reason why this necessarily has to go bet fold here. This could go bet raise fold. This could go bet. Okay. All right. Nope. The sim simple one is that. <laughs> simple one works. Every hand just started on the river. Yeah. Sorry? Wish every hand started on the river. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. The rest of the street, so. It's the most important one. Jack has played his rivers quite well. Ian Hamilton's had some good rivers also in those all in situations. Okay, so right there, that's the uh, that's the Brazilian commentators. That's the South America, French commentators, Europe, German commentators, also Europe, Spanish commentators, not Central America, Europe. <laughs> Joe Stable and Nick Walsh. Uh, I'm actually not really sure where England is these days. Uh, International waters? <laughs> <laughs> just floating out there. Yeah, we're just that island floating out there in the middle of the middle of this North Sea. Sinclair with 6-4 off. Threads up poker, my babies. Threads up. Down to the final three. Yes, indeed. Everyone now guaranteed around 300,000 pounds. Alexander Volumier in the big blind with King Deuce off. Considering his options, 16 big blinds, is it... Oh, yeah. I honestly don't know. It's a fold. The cards are going all in to the muck. Yes, indeed. A raise and a take it.
So Roberts wasn't feeling like doing an interview, but he said he would if our producer won a coin flip, and he did. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm a little bit disappointed getting fourth after having cheap lead, and like, but it's okay. You know, there's some hands just didn't go my way. I had to bluff a couple of times and go through with bluff. This, this is how poker is, you know, so it's, it's normal. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm happy with my fourth place. It's fine. To be fair, no, I think I misplayed quite a few hands and um, I had a little bit, choose a little bit weird dynamic with, with Jack, I would say, so I, I, I was not too happy about how I played, to be fair, but uh, that's how it is. Nothing we can do. <laughs> that was a better interview than most people who have happily agreed to yeah. give me an interview, so I appreciate Roman Roberts taking the time to talk to Pete down on the floor. Sinclair and Hamilton going to the mattresses here. 5-5, five, five, deuce, one diamond for Hamilton. Flooding the chat says, England is not an island, Nick. Well, I think Winston Churchill would disagree with you, sir. Yeah, it's a tough one there. It's like saying that Jamaica. No, it's like saying that Kingston isn't an island. I mean, it's it's on an island. <laughs> check, check on the flop. Ace on the turn. Mick says, is it just me or does Villiers have a button missing in the left-hand sleeve of his jacket? I think that jacket may have been a last-minute purchase. So, anything could be there. Sinclair, given the opportunity, is just going to fight for every pot. I don't envy Hamilton or Lumiere at all having to face Jack Sinclair at any point in this tournament, let alone now when they have to face him literally every hand. Piano Conspiracy asking, what's that little dog on his chips? It's actually a hippopotamus. <laughs> the chipopotamus. We call it chipopotamus. Jack calls it Marty because it's named after Martin Cabrell. And the chipopotamus has been with him for this entire event. It's been sleeping in the bag overnight. Unreal says, do you think that smug look on Sinclair's face is part of his game? I think I think he'll... I wouldn't say he looks smug, but if he does, it's probably because he's the final three of the EPT London 2022. Yeah, I think it's just his face, honestly. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest possible way because he seems to actually be a bit of a jovial Olin. fella. Olin, 9 8 suited. Olin. Olin. The chipopotamus. Olin. Jack can't call with the hammer. Ben Martin says, hope you win the mini EPT London online, Nick. Is registration still open? I believe so. It should be for a while yet, I Ooh, imagine. Who's that? Can we, who's that? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> late, reg late registration ends in one hour and 21 minutes. There's still plenty of time to jump in, guys. It's not against the terms of service for me to just scope out the people you're playing with, right? <laughs> who, yeah, who is that? Germany? Okay. <laughs> XCU111 ASL? Just, just write, just write ASL in chat and see, what, see if they answer. <laughs> Hamilton with the suit and kick on the button. <laughs> All right, Hamilton. He's probably going to raise this one up. He does make it the absolute minimum. Three hundred k to go. Going to a flop. Pair of 10s now for the Lumiere. Pulls ahead. Now 84%. Yeah, you 
got to be pretty happy with second pair here. Yeah, when we're playing three-handed poker, second pair is extremely strong because of the ranges being so wide. And these are the adjustments you need to make as you get... Oh, baby. ...deep into the tournament. Trip tens now for Volumier. Trip tens. Short stack. Now you're hoping to be up against the jack. Checks on over to Hamilton a second time. Hamilton does not bite. King High would be the best here sometimes, the way this hand's played out, but probably sure. a little too much showdown value to, to bet it if check two again. Yeah, absolutely. I think at this point you got to try and get some value, right? I mean, there's still hands that will call you if you bet river, if you lead river with the, with the trips. Like, maybe some small, maybe like a deuce once in a while might check down, try not to build the pot. Maybe like pocket fours, pocket fives, although they probably like to bet the turn, I imagine, some of the time. So 850k was the pot. The Lumiere goes for 650. Yep, yep, yep. Chunky I like this. side. Yeah, it's chunky. It's one of those spots, Joe. Like I think you're either they've either got a, a hand that they're gonna you know check call with all the way down or check check and then call river, or they've just got something they're willing to give up here. It's not completely crazy for King Hyatt to make a hero call here. Definitely worth consideration. He has played his hand quite passively. Some players will interpret that as weakness and try and exploit that. I would bet into Jack Sinclair this way, knowing Jack makes hero calls, but Jack would also know just to insta-fold here because I would never do this without a monster. <laughs> Hamilton's Rouse lost a little bit of their steam. And these stacks are kind of incrementally doubling each other. Hamilton has got half the chips as Sinclair, but twice as many chips as the Lumiere. Alex the Great asks, the Lumiere is not tired to stand like that for five days? Look, I have a feeling that once that's your, when your posture is that good, his core strength's got to be unbelievable. Yeah, guy's got a six-pack for sure. I could probably plank for eight hours if he needed to. <laughs> Hashtag fun fact. He's got the world record for planking. Uh, by the way, Joe, that's not a hashtag fun fact, guys. I'm joking. It's a hashtag fake fact. It's yeah. a hashtag fake fact. But also, I think the I need to look it up, but the record for a plank is absurd. Somebody told it's, me the other it's day. It's definitely over eight hours. It's like, it might be something closer to 20. Yeah. Nine hours, yeah, apparently. Nine hours. That's, I, I, I mean, I don't know about you, Joe, but like a minute 30. Is usually about enough for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think if there was a lot of money riding on it, I could do two minutes. <laughs> Soda pop with a real fun fact: it's not good to plank for too long in the long run of things. That's good. Then we're good at ninety seconds, bro. Very nice, Karavich, for your kind words. Thank you. 86 big blinds, nearly 14 million in chips for Jack Sinclair. That Zumi Chess asking, it's V Yam Ya. Yeah. Referring to the player from Switzerland. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, get it straight from the horse's mouth. Should he take this down, make sure I get it right when I hand him the trophy. I will say that every time I say his name, it is a struggle. Top pair for Sinclair. That's right, there he is on the rail, V. Yamier. 
V. Yamier getting some <laughs> information <laughs> from Good. his frere. Good shot for Hamilton here. Vian Yerk might be right. I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the Yumier. The Yamier? The Yumier. The Yumier. Another pot for Jack Sinclair. That one's a little easier. Oh, excuse me, is that pronounced Jack? As in Jack? Oh, the C is silent. Okay. Are you sure it's not Yak? It could be. We're like gonna, like we're gonna yogging, find out. like yogging, like yogging, like Martin Jakobsen. Jakobsen. All right, guys. So, Mr. Hamilton on the button. Queen six off. Does decide to fold. Says nay. We are but men. Rock. Ah. We can just about get away with that. <laughs> Clear with ace eight. It's gonna limp in, right? No limp in limp? Nah. No one does that. Five hundred thousand. Eight seven for William Ye. I don't think I've said that name the exact same way twice in five days. And we are gonna see a flop in this domination situation. King, deuce, deuce. Yes, indeed. Sinclair with the continuation a lot of the time here. King, deuce, deuce. Very frequently continued board. Get tons and tons of folds. Yeah. It's pretty hard for your opponent to have a combination to continue that doesn't contain a king or a deuce. You know, blind be blind, we'll see some queen high floats here once in a while, especially if the c-bet's nice and small, which it should be, but this is just a bet and a take it. I was about to say all of that, except for, you know, um, I'm not smart enough. And he said nay. I am but Jack. Rock. Thirteen hands played today, guys. This is the 113 pan. Sinclair is on the button. And I imagine he's going to be playing a very wide range here, guys. He can open pretty much any two from the button at this point, and he should do as well. Absolutely critical that he oh, doesn't take his foot baby. off the gas. Kings in the small blind for the Yumiel. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there it is again. And that should be the end of that. And it is. Kula Fish says pronounce veal um me a. I kind of like that one. Veal um e a. It's in the game. <laughs> That's a good one. What a time to have kings there. Up to 20 big blinds now for Alexandre Villumier. All right, you guys want a little trivia question? A little trivia question. If Jack Sinclair wins this, he will become the fourth player to have won an EPT main event and a World Series of Poker Europe main event. Who are the other three? Who are the other three? James Hardy just walked in the room as if to say, I know the answer. 
I'm sure you could name two at least. Uh, what was the name of that that girl that won when she was like 19? What was her name though? Annette, Annette Oberstad. Not her. Does not have an EPT main event. Remember, you need a World Series of Poker Europe main event. I can think of one. Buenos Dias, Adrian, who won not only the World Series of Poker Europe main event, but won the EPT when it was the grand final. So that's like a little bonus fun fact. So there's Buenos Dias, Adrian. I'm trying to think of who else won World Series of Poker. Europe, that's easier because there's a lot more EPT main event winners. I know Davide Katai is a triple crown winner, but I don't think he won the World Series of Poker Europe main. Were there any Americans that did it? I'm getting a nod, okay. Oh! Okay, hold on. We got an all in. Not getting through. I sorry, did get through. Not getting called. Uh, John Dewanda. John Dewanda. One. Of, okay. Sometimes he flies under Indonesia, but not not the American. Okay, so John Dewanda is two, and now there is an American still. Hmm. Who's the American? Jason? Nope. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> the the World Series of Poker main event Europe hasn't been around that long. Well, in all in. This one maybe could get called by King Nine? Uh, no, I think it's too many bigs now. Too many big blinds. Another pickup there for the Yumier. Did the person was the was the Europe event they won, was it Berlin? No. I mean, sorry, the EPT event. They're both Europe events. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> yes? Kevin McPhee? Kevin McPhee. How did I forget? Good job, chat. I, I kind of stole that one from chat. How <laughs> could I have forgotten that Kevin McPhee won the World Series of Poker Europe main event? You know what it was? It was back in the day where I just ignored the World Series of Poker Europe. I was like, yeah, it's not it's not my brand, and it's not, and it's not my country. The World Series of Poker Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Poker Europe. <laughs> Absolutely. So we got another hand here. King eight off, folded on the button. Alexandra, the Yumier picking his spots carefully. Little blind v blind action here. Hamilton with queen ten off in the small blind. Mr. Sinclair, eighty five big blinds. Right behind him. I feel like if I was Sinclair, I'd raise this limp with king five off. I think this is a nice one. But let's see how Jack feels. Yeah, boy, that's what I like to see. 450K. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Queen 10 raised and Jack defended. Excuse me, guys. Sorry, I thought the King uh, Queen 10 was the limp. As played, defend. Yep, seems good. Queen high flop. Hamilton now in front. Kevin McPhee, by the way, came dangerously close to winning a second EPT last time we were in London, I think. Queen high, top pair for Hamilton. Wonder if he has any checkbacks on this drier texture. We saw a, a hand very similar to this played by the Yumier earlier with a, a king queen where he opted to check and allowed his opponent to barrel into him on three streets, which actually worked out really well. He selected one of these very sort of like weird high card rainbow, not a whole lot going on situations. Instead, Queen 10 is going to bet here, bets 300k, and quickly called by the King 5 off. Seems like Sinclair's floating here to try and take it away on a later street. Hamilton now 
in the driver's seat. First to act on the turn. So there is 1.35 million on the turn. Puts in a bet. Quick fold from Sinclair. Seems good. On to the next hand. minutes left on this level and I believe it's after this level that things might shorten up a little bit we might get uh, it's been 90 minutes throughout the course of the tournament and I believe policy now is once we're down to three-handed get a little bit shorter half as long Get too close so the universe will fold in on itself. Oh, this is nice, Don Pre. I watch Premier League, MLB, NBA, golf, and a couple of other sports, but honestly, the commentary here over the last few days has just been brilliant. The best, in fact. Thanks so much for the great content. Thanks, Don. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your 3,000 channel points. The Umier. Oh, Yin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got him again. Ace Queen off is all in the big blind. Do you think and... he's trying to be adorable when he does it, or is that just him? <laughs> I don't know, but I want to buy that man a drink. I suppose he should be the one buying the drinks, given the fact he's guaranteed at least 300K or just shy of. And another King Nine forced to fold. And every time one of those all-ins get through, it makes it less likely he can get looked up light. I mean, he's up to 27 bigs now. My man just wants to be balanced whenever he's all-in, right? He doesn't want to feel weak. He doesn't want to feel particularly strong. Just saying the same all-in every single time, keeping him guessing. He's probably not shoving too light, though. What's the lightest he's shoved? Uh, no, probably he, always strong. It, it's always been strong thus far. Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen any any super light shoves, absolutely. But if they ever do arrive, I imagine it's going to sound like this, Joe. Oh, you. <laughs> it's crazy how many people in chat are saying the exact same thing as Don. I didn't think everyone felt that way. But. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys agree. Can't believe everyone watches all of those things. Hamilton in the big blind now, 37 big blinds. Jack Sinclair is just kind of slowly pulling away from him, Joe. Should be defending Jack Deuce suited, I imagine. I think pretty much any suited hand should be a defended at this stage of the tournament. But he lets it go. Okay. Does not want to get involved with this one. I do think every once in a while that uh, Hamilton makes a play, a fold specifically, uh, that's like a lot of people just kind of feels on the line. Yeah. That the really experienced players, like Sam Somfold, ace eight or something one time, right? Well, it was four or five handed. And uh, to me, because I can spot my own, sometimes it just feels like, you know what? I just yeah. not feeling it this time. This yeah. one time. And that's why they, uh, Griffin and Sam thought maybe he's randomizing a little bit. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, and I also think that a hand like Jack Deuce to Spades, it's not like you're you're throwing away tons of equity, right? You know, it's a, hard, it's a hand that is difficult to play well post-flop. Yeah. It's not a hand with great playability. The fact that it's suited should give it enough playability yeah. to call profitably, theoretically. But um, potentially he is doing that. And, uh, yeah. So let me talk let, Talk to me about randomization for a little bit, if you can, Nick. Yeah. Is it pure randomization, or is it randomization based on the hand that you have? So, like, Correct. if it's king-8 suited in order to fold that, it's going to have to roll, like, a really rare number or whatever. Right, right. Okay. So, so, so it's like the situations where you really know your range as well, and let's say that you're in a situation where you will 3-bet ace-queen some of the time and you'll fly it with ace-queen some of the time. You can randomize to decide whether or not it's going to be a 3-bet or a call in that situation yeah. so that you're not always doing the same thing, even by your own bias. Because you might go... I've always preferred playing ace-queen as a three-bet here. Just made the hand simpler. 
and therefore, if you were just to make, make the decision without randomizing, you would you would be doing it more frequently, even if you would be unknowingly doing so. Yeah. But then you can make the same decision. You go on this river. You know, there's a chance that I should call him in this situation, but it's really a close on the it's on the line. Yeah. You know, this guy's capable of bluffing here, but also he's not. So you can randomize to decide whether or not you're going to call rivers too. Uh, or in any but, situation. So I let's say. say you're randomizing in general and you have aces. Is there any role that can come up that you fold aces and no. you have to go with it? Okay. No, because because if you were looking at that pre-flop range, you play aces 100% of the time. So there's not any, so any you're not, spectrum. You're not rolling on the aces at no, all. No, it's, 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 like, it's more like when you're in between two decisions and you know that you're supposed to do one once in a while. At some frequency, you can randomize. So you go, okay, if, I, if I'm supposed to raise this hand 25% of the time, if it comes 1 to 25, I'm going to go ahead and, and raise it. Otherwise, I'm just going to play it as a call or whatever. Pocket 102 in the chat says, does spinning go strategy come into this? 100,000% it does. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. We are playing three-handed. Uh, the only thing that's different and is significantly different is the fact we're playing with ICM in this situation. Spinning goes are pre predominantly a winner-take-all format. Therefore, we can play very close to what is pure chippy V strategy. So every move that you make is usually in the acquisition of other chips. But in this situation, if there is a differentiation in, in stocks, it can be correct to play tighter and or looser and more aggressively, etc., cetera, uh, in order to navigate yourself into a position to ladder and to win more money. So that's the big difference. But if you are starting from a basis oh, nice where you know you're three-handed, if you're starting from a base where you know your three-handed strategy very well, so if you know spinning goes very well, you'll have a great base upon which to build uh, your strategy where you can include ICM adjustments thereafter. So a Dub Jack says, I have a D20 on hand. I told my girlfriend I have a D20, but it's really more like a D5.5. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty average. You can make it work with either one, though, right? You don't have to have a D20. You can get the job done with a D6. You can always roll the dice, Joe. Yeah. Ace six suited for Sinclair. I mean, this is basically a monster at this stage. We know Sinclair, being the chip leader, can open basically any two cards if he wants to. A six suited now. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Lumiere, oh yeah. Here comes Joe. Yeah, this could be it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. Yep. How do you not smile after that? <laughs> it's very cute. <laughs> it's very endearing. Sinclair not loving it. Yeah, I think he he probably wants to know exactly the amount. I think it's a little bit too much. But it's but you know once we get to these suited aces, you're like ace nine suited is a call, right? Like absolutely. What, what about it. ace five suited? No, I think that's still a little bit too wide. Ace six suited, I think probably a little bit too wide. But with the addition of the of, of the big blind ante, honestly, it does get a lot lot closer. This is right on the line, in my opinion. So the difference between the wheel ace and the ace six is, does not make a difference here when trying to call all in. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I think it is a fold, though. Sinclair out. We have a question here. Are the rules in live poker against having the use of dice? If so, why? I don't believe that there's a rule against having, like, a dice on the table. Justin, is there? I think it would slow the game down too much if someone was, like, rolling a die every single time. I don't, yeah. I don't think you could really get away with that. I, I think the other issue that, that you have is that if you're rolling a dice, you might actually be giving away more additional information. Yeah, you know, you're like, okay, course. cool. Well, everyone else can see what you're rolling. <laughs> So you you roll a one and then you're all and then you're like you're like you're like five betting and people are like oh okay so there was a guy you know what we haven't shown this clip in a long time <laughs> we should dig it up there's a guy that used to flip a coin there were two guys one would flip a coin and he was faking it I believe there was a Russian guy who would flip a coin and pretend like he was going to do what the coin okay. told him to do. Okay. There was another guy that would flip a coin older, previous to that, and I'm pretty sure he was actually just going with it. Does anyone else remember this? I know Chris does. Yeah, Artem Lifanoff was the guy who's faking it. That's right, Longaro. He was a lot of fun. I miss that guy. Peter says just roll the dice before every and hand. Changis I mean, you, yeah, was the other guy right. who I think was actually just doing what the coin said. If I were going to do it, I would uh, flip the coin, and then I would keep flipping it until I got the answer I wanted. 
I'd be like, if it comes up, heads, I'm calling. Tails, I fold. It comes up. Tails, I'm like, all right, one more time. Tails again. All right, one more time. Heads, hey, got to go with the coin. <laughs> what can I do? I can't fold. The, the coin says call. Man found with loaded dice at poker table. Yeah, right. Just comes up six every time. It just keeps rolling seven. I feel like if you brought a loaded die or dice into a place where a, a craps table also exists, I just wouldn't risk that. <laughs> One. Just have like four guys in suits standing behind you. Like, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna need those, and uh, you banned. Yeah, congratulations on your WSOP win, sir. Now uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to come with us. Sinclair three batting, the open from Hamilton. Queens ten suited, three handed. Your three bat. This you're in position. This feels like you can uh, stay involved here. It's a lot of your chips. Now, from a theoretical standpoint, a lot of these sort of suited Broadway hands do become defense versus three bets, Joe. Yeah. But, you know, you've got another player who is relatively short. That's coming into play. The ICM considerations are here. Yep. You know that Sinclair is absolutely capable of three betting combos like King Five Suited. King Five Suited, by the way, being a very, very specific one that we see a lot being used as a three bet here. Other combos like Ace Five Off are also in here, too. Uh, we do see the call from the Queen Ten Suited, and we're going to a flop. There's a 10 on it, but it's king oh high. Oh, boy. King, 10, Trey, three clubs. Sinclair with the best of it. So SPR at this point, guys, about two. Hamilton's got about two times what's in the pot here. So Sinclair definitely within range to put him to the test for all of his chips if he sizes his bet correctly on the flop. There is a continuation. The pot was 2.3 million. He continues. For 450k, and this is such a bad spot for Hamilton. Yeah, I mean, you have a 10. You know that you don't want to be exploited. You know that you probably can't fold flop, especially for such a small continue, right? Yeah. You've got such a good price here. Oh, you hate it though. I think there always has to be a call, but it's so hard to improve. Yeah, if there's one guy that knows how to play these spots as well, it's Sinclair. Yeah. Now, I would go out on a limb here, Joe, and say that given the fact there was a raise and a flat. Some of those ace of clubs that Hamilton is going to have here might have been played differently pre-flop. So if we do see another club, it we might could, be a situation we where... We could eliminate the nut flush draw from... Oh, Hamilton just oh, itches wow. it. Wow. Wow. Does fold the worst of it. But if you're... I, you have to ask the question, Joe. If you're defending Queen-10 suited and you're folding a 10 on the flop, then like, are you looking for a top pair scenario? Are you looking to, to flop stronger? That feels like a fold you can't always make. It feels like a fold that I think you probably shouldn't make if you're yeah. going to continue with the Queen-10. But, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to throw any shade on Hamilton. It's a really tough spot, as Joe indicated. But to be clear, good fold. Yeah, and <laughs> in this case, was 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 a good fold. I, you know, and I, it, there's a good chance. Maybe Hamilton's like, yeah, I gotta, I've been working on this tell on Sinclair, and now I finally got him. Oh, I would love to chalk up all of my non-GTO decisions to a tell. <laughs> To the Oreo cookie. In any case, good fold by Ian Hamilton there. On to the next hand. Keep the big blind there. Xanadu with Mark and says, do you continue if you don't whiff on the three clubs? I think the point is you're supposed to continue anyway. <clears throat> but I know I would be more likely to stick around that hand if I knew that the very rare chance I would. Wow. Over 14 million for Jackson <laughs> Claire. 94 big blinds, three handed. Yeah, really, really flexing at this point. Triple the chips of Hamilton, more than triple the chips of Villume. I don't know. I, I would love to actually go back and do more analysis on that hand. It's a bit of an awkward stack depth show, but yeah. I'm wondering if it's one of the spots where if it does come more clubs that like Sinclair could just go nuts because there should be some of the ace of clubs played more aggressively pre flop from. Uh, from Hamilton, but maybe they were deep enough where there's still plenty of flats there, too. I'm not sure. Really, really, really specific stack depth, really specific sort of um, interaction between the button and small blind range there, too. It's better if I give it to you first. Closing in on the end of this level and of this session. Kind words here from Homie. 
who says, I don't know anyone who knows as much about poker as Nick Walsh. Imagine what he could achieve if he ever won a flip. <laughs> He's not wrong. And actually, it's funny. I was saying this to uh, to James earlier today, and he sort of gave me the, all right, stop crying. But then he proceeded to watch me play a few poker tournaments, and all of them got wrecked. Yeah, I wish that I had the receipts that you have to show how bad that I've been running right. for the last two years. Yeah, that's the cool thing about playing online. You can actually you can graph it. You can map it yeah. statistically. Yeah. Everyone just has to take my word for it because I only play live. <laughs> Alex the Great says, I already missed Alexander's. Oh, dude. Maybe we'll get one more in before the break. Yeah, potentially. Only three minutes left on this level. All in. Oh, it's begun. Joe, Joe, it's begun. The power poker has begun. He's not even going to bother playing post-flop now. And this is exactly why you do this. You don't, you get hands like Queen Jack to fold. You deny the equity. It's a bit of a... Uh, this is 23 big blinds effective, Joe. This is very, very, very close. Because Vumier knows that Sinclair can shove like literally like 8, 9 suited here if he wants. He can shove 9, 10 suited here if he wants. I'm not saying that's what he would do. With the ice cream machine. Beep, pop, boop, pop, beep, pop, pop. Carry the one, says. <laughs> Very nice hand there from Jack Sinclair. <laughs> I wonder how wide push. he goes in that push-fold <laughs> range, though. That's really interesting. If you're playing pure push-fold, he can shove extremely wide, but I think he mixes it up there. Acid Bunny says, I would call, and I'll tell you this. With no cameras, I call. With cameras, I probably fold. I think you will... Think about it and make the right decision. Because the last thing that I want to do Maybe is he have has one, one chip. Everyone in the world. Had to, uh... <laughs> uh, you're like, ah, I stayed off. It's kind of costly. <laughs> Tell me that I gave myself ICM seppuku. 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 Sinclair now with ace eight on the button has made 300,000. B. Yum Ye holds check 10. Hamilton with ace deuce also going to be ahead of Sinclair's button raising range. Hamilton with more chips than VM Ye. Sepeku me ye. Thank you, Yoni Pup. To the flop, 977. Both ace highs faring well on a flop like this. Ace eight still winning for now, but as you can see, there's a large chance of chop. Just a few chop opportunities. But when you're Sinclair, why would you allow your opponent to get to the river? Why? Why? What's the point? Why? That's right, Death Pulse. The seven is always cuming. Just an insta fold from Hamilton. Taking some passive lines late in this session. Still has VMA slightly out chipped. Jack Sinclair, Dad Sinclair. And game two says that might be too passive. Yeah, it might be. Now, it's kind of easy. Easy, I should say. Jack Sinclair, by the way, over 15 million, just under 100 big blinds. It's uh, it's a little easier to excuse it when we, we see him folding the worst hand over and over again. Um, so I'm willing to chalk it up to intuition because I don't have to be GTO. I can be like, great read. I can be like, in a vacuum, that's a good fold. This is going to be the last hand of the level. Jubetti says, Joe and Nick, can you say hi to my mom? Like something like that. Uh, hey, Jubetti's mom, thanks for tuning in. We're happy to have you. What's Good stuff. On? Hey there. Like that, something like that. Absolutely. We yeah. Um, no, we don't do that. <laughs> I make tight fold for break. All right. Nice hand. Makes sense. Yeah, he's going to win the last hand before the break. The benevolent god, Jack Sinclair, says, you know what? Let him live. Let him live for, for a 20 minute break. Let him live. For the break. 
My goodness. Well, at one point, it looked like Jack Sinclair had this locked up, and then it didn't, and then it did, and then it didn't, <laughs> and now it does. Never a doubt in his mind, Joe. Coming back from play break with blinds at 100,000, 200,000 with a 200K big blind ante. That leaves Ian Hamilton and Alexander BMA with under 20 big blinds apiece. Really all about Jack Sinclair right now. Niels Poodle out in sixth. Dan Kishu dispatched in fifth. Roman Roberts was the last player eliminated some time ago. Two eliminations to go. Threads Up Poker continues from here at EPT London in 20 minutes time. Lines 80k, 40k. I think everyone at the table is looking for that busto 100k to try and get that ladder. <laughs> Mr. Treniak shorthanded decides to call with a seven. No doubt to try and bust the 100k stack here. I think everybody wants a piece of this. They all want that sweet, sweet ladder as we head to a million for first. Michael's going to raise all in, another 15,000. So Martin pretty much forced all in from the big blind. Hasn't looked at his cards yet. We're going to have a side part, side part between Martin and Mike. Michael is our all-in player. Just going to keep that pot in front of him. All right, let's see the flop on the side. All right, well. Six of diamonds, king of diamonds, deuce of spades. Martin's this is check. everyone. Check behind him. Which is good news for Martin. Yeah. King of spades. It's now king Ooh. six. King Such a clean turn. Diamonds and two spades on board. Martin has checked. Mike has checked. Behind. That's right. You don't mind the king hitting again. You just don't want any new over cards to hit. Yeah. They all quickly check. So the four. Michael's turning over eights. Eights are good, right? Mike has ace seven, and Martin has queen. Triple up. Triple up for Michael Martin. He's still in this thing. Mike brings us in for a raise of 240,000. Martin has folded and Michael says all in. An all in bet of 300,000 off the 240,000 chip raise. It's over to Eric. How much is it to me? 300,000, 220. 220,000 for Eric to call. He's going to pass. So Martin all in again. We saw him get that triple up. He's sitting on 300K now. All in with nines. Tereniak calls with King 7. Michael has so not quite a flip. Martin. Mike has King Seven off suit. King of Spades. Very likely to double up again. Never underestimate the power of a complete Seven free roll. Lions, Jack of Clubs. King of Hearts. Okay. One, Michael is, one Mike has flopped one top and bottom pair against Michael's nines. <laughs> Martin saying it's unbelievable. You do have three big blinds, my friend. That's the seven of spades. Mike on Mike. Michael's looking for one of the two remaining nines, or he's going to finish in fourth place. Let's see the river. GG, USA. Oh! It looked like his miracle comeback was over, but no. Michael Martin rivers the nine to survive again. Gets the double up through Tereniak. What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love having that hand on an EPT feature table. That's got to feel fantastic. Chip and a chair, my babies. Uh, by the way, Raksha, if you could grab that name for me, please, and just confirm with them that they have a real money account. We're coming up pretty quick, guys. I, uh, the spamming will end very shortly, but I feel like it's only fair. Make it a little bit of a ritual He's gonna pass with the claps. Aces. Aces. How much do I have? <laughs> Wait, Mike Martin has aces now. Yeah. How much do I have, he says. This is legendary. This this is when the aces get cracked, though, right? You're like, <laughs> triple up, then double up. Now you're like, got him, and it's like, nah, king-queen just runs you down. It really feels like the poker gods play with you like that, right? You're like, wow, I made this amazing comeback, and then I still busted in fifth. 
So all in the 695. Tyreniex says Queen Jack is one of his favorite hands, and so he's going to call. And he says he's going to call with it. Well, Mike, okay, I know I just said the bad beat's coming, but this is an absolute gift. <laughs> this is a courtesy double up. Queen of spades, Jack of hearts. We'll see. Come we'll on, see. one time. Michael has ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, deuce of spades, five of spades, three of clubs. Spades. The aces are still in the lead here. Let's see the turn card, please. It's a four that's going to give Michael a wheel. All right. Six. One more. Let's see River card, a six. It's a nine. Wow, what a life. How do you feel? So triple up. Same nine of hearts on the river. Double up. Double up. Wow. And Michael Martin is now a contender again. Yeah. I will not have invented all it takes is a chip and a chair I almost went. <laughs> for another six years, more or less, after this. Had I watched this final table, had I been there live, maybe I would have coined it then. Because this guy is chipping and chairing it with the best of them. It's over a mill, Eric. It's just got all the hands. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> wow. Eric's all in for a little over 1.1 million. I mean, you know what needs to be done, right? You know what needs to be done, sir. You can take your time. Michael announces call. He makes a call. Can he find another double up? That would be pretty bananas. Eric shows 10 jack. Eric has the jack of spades and the 10 of hearts. Michael has the ace of clubs and the nine of spades. Ace of hearts. Oh. It's a gut. pretty clean flop. He's just got to fade that queen. Yeah. The all-important gut shot for Eric Lou. Let's see the turn card, please. The ace of spades. Michael's got three aces now. Eric's going to need one of the four queens, or he's going to be eliminated in fourth place. Queen on the river. No. And Eric Liu exits in fourth place, cashes for just wow. shy of a quarter of a million, £234,920. That's ridiculous, man. <laughs> Give me a plug it up. That's Hello, awesome. Man. Take it down. Hakim Mkhadari and Adrian Beckerman. going to move all in on the button. Hakim Kadira and Adrian Beckerman. Thank you. Again? It's not Germany, it's Deutschland. Very good. Is this four or five hands in a row that Martin has said the words all in? It, you, as you stepped away there for a sec, Joe, he also doubled through with ace nine again. Queen of spades, three of clubs. Six of spade. And he also uh, exited Lou. Does anyone else think it's weird that there's two Mikes and two Martins and one of them is Mike Martin? Oh, damn. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, I didn't see who he was all in with. Dodge a jack and he's going to double through. Let's see the river card, please. It's a jack! Oh! <laughs> what a sick run. Oh man, what you... how have I never seen this before? This is, this is the sickest run I've ever seen at an EPT before, for sure. Michael first. Well, we've got 6120 blinds now. King 10 for Michael Martin on the button. 250,000 is the raise.
Queen four call. seems like a, a reasonable defend hand heads up. 250,000. All right, let's take a look at the flop, please. Jack of hearts, 10 of spades, and six of hearts. Mike's going to be first. He's going to check over to Michael. <laughs> Check. Michael's going to go ahead and check behind him. These guys Mike the Martin turn. flops best with a pair of tens. It goes check, check. Turns to three of spades. Yeah. Michael Tereniak, what are you doing? <laughs> Assuming that Mike Martin isn't going to make a pair every single hand. <laughs> A naive assumption to reach. Yeah. Michael's going to make the call of three hundred and eighty thousand. Let's see that river, please. There's a jack of diamonds. Jack ten six three jack on board. And Treniak is loading up. Mike Mars is licking his chops. Please give me those chips. 680,000, the river bet from Treniak, creating a pot of nearly 2 million. I mean, maybe you're not super confident in the 10, but you have to call. And let's remind ourselves that this is a 500,000 pound heads up battle. There's right. half a million quid in difference Michael between calls. second and first place prize money. And Martin does make the call. Mike shows queen four, queen four. Tereniak tables a bluff. Martin shows the winning hand. I can't figure it out tonight. Michael Martin has not had a chance to restack his oh. chips. And he's now shoving Michael on Tereniak, who's got King 9. Yeah, King 9 is probably just the call here every time. Mike says call. Tereniak calls, and it is a flip. And if Michael Martin wins this flip, he will have won EPT London and the first prize of £1 million. Let's see the flop, please. Flop is deuce of diamonds, three of spades. It is a low board, a great board for fours. Let's see the turn card, please. Yeah, just not even any sweaty turns. It's either a king or a nine or it's nothing, and that's it. No, there is a five for a chop. Mike's going to need a five to split this pot. Otherwise, he's going to finish in second place here in London. Let's see the river card. Tereniak looking for a split pot, but it's a deuce on the river. It's the full house for Michael Martin. And what a comeback. Um, Left with a unreal. bowl of rice. Triple up, double up, double up. Takes the chip lead, gets heads up. Congratulated by his friend, another EPT champ, Brandon Schaefer. And Michael Martin defeats Michael Tereniak heads up. Tereniak cashes for 525k, but Michael Martin gets the first prize of one million pounds. We got three hand in, I think we should need. And then I, I just put them all in. I was just like, all right, guys, you find a hand now. I don't know how much detail you're willing to go into, Sam, but we know on the super high roller circuit that players are often not playing, paying the full buy-in themselves, either they're backed or they're selling action. When you play a $200,000 buy-in, is that all your own money? No, absolutely not. No, I mean I've never I've never played a, a buy-in above twenty-five k with all of my own action. Um, 
the, the good thing about this one is that, you know, it was obviously a spot to take a little bit more than you would. The, 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 the most responsible way, there are, by the way, there are players that take, I mean, people think that, that uh, Tom Pozel and Mitting, there are guys that are really gambling. There's, there's professional players who have 100% of their action, that's all matter. I know that. Um, but, but, you know, for someone for me who's much more careful, doesn't have as much money, you know, I normally estimate things in, t- in taking a certain percentage of my net worth and putting that at risk each right. and every tournament. And But this was obviously a spot to gamble a little bit more because half the field was going to be business people. It, there was a kind of sense this is going to be one of the best value tournaments for a poker pro. So I knew that I was going to gamble quite hard and, and you know, and it, and it sort of paid up. So it was a very gratifying result financially. Obviously, I didn't win anything near 5.5 million. Okay. So uh, you mentioned that there are captains of industry in this game as well, uh, b- business people. When you study and you're learning how to play against the Linuses and the Sam Greenwoods and, uh, you know, the, the, the best of the best, does the studying work as well against the business people or is it less effective? Yeah, I mean, I mean um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good question, Joe, actually. Um, obviously, the one thing you can do, firstly, is you can watch tape of VIPs playing. There are some, like, VIPs that play regularly and having a sure. sense of their tendencies on final table, are they just gambling around? Are, are they pretty, uh, some, some of them are very good poker players, right? And some of them are complete recreationals who are just playing for fun. And ha- having a sense of that player before you arrive at the table is, is going to be useful. Then obviously there's a, a sense of like, if someone's three betting you more, like what would be the counter to that? Someone's putting in too much money. What's the counter to that? Like, again, just a good understanding of poker fundamentals, right? Uh, it's not, I, I don't, you know, you speak of memorization. I don't really do any memorization. It's more just understanding, you know, what, um, what, h- how things work out when people play different strategies. And then, of course, there's just a, 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 card, a, a card playing element to the game. Okay, so and that's that, still there. Oh, of course. And that's why Stevie's there, Fadal's there, Ben 86. You, we actually don't see, we, we do see players break through, uh, of course. But actually, a lot of the players that are at the top have been playing for a long time. And that's because, as happened on the final, I, on the left of me was a great guy, Carl, but he's a, a cryptocurrency trader, amazing guy. He's drinking at the table. He's having fun. He's putting a lot of pressure on people. And he, and there's if you just memorize stuff, let's just say you looked at charts and you were like, here's this would this would leave you absolutely bereft. Right, you have to play completely. When one player is playing every single hand at the table, you need to now completely readjust your your strategy, and that's where, of course, twelve years of not to be aggrandizing, but twelve years of experience is yeah. really, really useful. You know, like uh, I've I've played against different types of player. I can adjust my strategies. I have a sense of what the other guy, how other players at the table will be adjusting. I mean, one thing I just had to do with him on my left was was tighten up, and that's also just being in control of your own ego, right? Like not saying. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to war with this guy, and one of us yeah. is gonna. That's how I would have approached it, by the way, eight years ago. I would be like, right, you know, you know me, buddy. One of us is getting ninth. Um, you would have Robbie J. <laughs> delude him. Yeah, exactly. I'd call him down with Jack Four off and hope it's good. Um, obviously, Sam, there were some of us who were very busy streaming W Coop while this event was taking place and didn't get a chance to watch the live stream. So I am asking this. Out of genuine interest, what kind of final table was it for you? Were you in control the whole way? Were you kind of playing ICM considerations? What was the dynamic? Yeah, no, it was it was um, it was quite unique because Carl came as chip leader, so he's um, you know he, he was he was playing every hand and also just calling all ins very liberally. So you know he he got shoved on first hand by someone. He just called with queen ten suited and he knocked out Tom Bolgesang. And then Seth shoved on him, he called him seven, six diamonds and knocked, wow. knocked Seth out. And so now he had even bigger. And so now some of the strategies, you know, we do this little like, oh, we shove ace deuce because they're only going to call, they're going to fold ace eight. Well, now if someone's not folding ace eight, or indeed they're not folding queen 10, you now need a completely different type of hand class yeah. to go all in with, right? So, the, the, you know, really, really made things difficult for the pros who, who are used to having things their own way. And so I was I was a lower stack or a mid stack, et cetera, et cetera. And then um you know, I it, it just reversed. We got um we got three hand in, I took the chip lead, and then I I just put them all in. I was just like, all right, guys, you find the hand now. 
and um, and yeah, it was, it was it was great. I mean, it was a it was a lovely final table to be at. There were some really really strong poker players there, um, really nice people. Ebony was there, Carl was there. There was a few newer faces, which gave it a bit of glamour, a bit of excitement. Obviously, it was a kind of glamorous tournament as well. And then obviously, to beat Linus heads up was a was a kind of you know not something I would have picked to be you know not the player I would have been picked have picked to be playing heads up. But I didn't think that that added a little something you know to it. Not that I outplayed him or something. I went. I had a seven to one chip lead heads up. You know, it was very, very likely that I would win. Just eventually I'm going to win one of the all ins against him. But that, but that was, it, you know, it was, it was a real, honestly, it was a, it was a dream to play. It was just a very, you know, I won my all ins. I, I, I'm very proud of playing this tournament. It was a very enjoyable tournament to play and just a really nice thing to win. Welcome back to London and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. Our live coverage of the main event final table continues. We're in the Hilton Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino for three-handed action. And right now it is a tale of the have and the have-nots. Jack Sinclair with a phenomenal chip lead, close to 15 million, 74 big lines. Alexandra Volumia, 3.8 million, 19 bigs, the same size stack for Ian Hamilton as we go to 100,000, 200,000 with a 200,000 big blind ante. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Benger. Hello, everyone. And as if there weren't enough people in the booth, just to make sure we have more commentators than players, Maria Ho's on the line. Guys, I'm here. Welcome, Maria, for the business end of this final table. Just three players remaining, Maria, playing for at least 296 grand. And as you just saw from those chip counts, it kind of feels like it's Jack Sinclair's tournament to lose. <laughs> it's definitely cuffing season on the other players. Uh, they're going to be in quite a tough spot, trying to basically outlast one another as Jack Sinclair just continues to chip away at their stacks. Well, here's the question, Griffin. Should he be chipping away or are we in open jamming territory? Yeah, I think in, in some way it's going to depend on the hand, but certainly you can put a great deal of pressure um, on both players uh, doing an open jamming strategy. You know, I, I have a feeling that Jack Sinclair is not going to be um, folding many buttons, and maybe the hands that uh, don't have at least a little playability in an all-in would probably just play as raise folds. Well, first hand back from the break which is hand number 130 of the final table, sees the action folded to Jack Sinclair in the small blind. This is one of those good all-in candidates. But going to play it, it's just a call. Now, Maria, I know this is the first chance you've had to see the finalists today. Do you agree that Alexandra Villemier deserves bonus points for making an effort, for putting on that jacket. I do. I feel like, you know, maybe Sinclair is rocking something a little more casual because this is his lucky jacket. You know, we've seen him wear it in previous days. But, yeah, you definitely have to give props to Villamir for just stepping it up a notch, you know, classing it up here. I like it. Um, just Not a lucky flop. <laughs> just flop in the straight. That's what Jack Sinclair does. So a bet of 200,000 and a small piece for Alex here, a pair of 10s. And I can understand making a call here, but I hope for his sake there isn't a 10 or a 6 on the turn. Yeah, your hand strength a bit too high here to even consider folding. It's not like your opponent's going to have a straight or anything. Super straight now for Sinclair. Great card for Vulmier to be able to get away from this otherwise pretty strong heads up hand on the flop. Yeah, especially considering this is a limp pot pre flop. You know, Sinclair's not really going to try to go for traps by checking here because this 
type of board isn't really going to be smashing Villamir's hand if he didn't raise pre-flop. So just going to continue to fire and hope your opponent has a hand strong enough to call with. Shout out to Ben 10 watching on YouTube. Currently 19th in chips in the mini EPT London main event. Registration closing soon. Yeah, the only problem for Sinclair, I think, about getting value on the turn is there's not that much uh, interaction with the king for Volmier. Not As you mentioned, Maria, not raising preflop, but more than that, the calls on the flop. Um, you know, uh, maybe king seven might call, king nine uh, certainly will call on the flop. Um, you know, king ten, king jack probably plays some raises. So most of the time... It's going to be a card that isn't going to be good for Volmier and therefore might get some folds. But certainly the Jack X hands and the 10 X hands that include a straight draw would probably be interested in continuing 10 nines and the like. Well, the net result is that Sinclair increases his chip lead. So there is a decent chance that the EPT Trophy stays in the UK with two Brits at this final table, including London's own Jack Sinclair. And then we've got Olimier from Switzerland. Is he going to say it, Griffin? He might just... <clears throat> About 16 big blinds, including the small blind that he has in there. All in. There we go. <laughs> All in. <laughs> you must know how much the fans love it. I would love it. And by suggesting this, I appreciate software developers are going to hate me because now they're going to have to make good on this. I want the ability to have him say that word whenever you move, move all in in the yeah, Pokestars yeah, client. This, this, this needs to happen, <laughs> or at least a, a Sunday Million graphic, you know. But let them we'll take be doing it a lot, They could work on this on Monday. <laughs> the novelty would wear off incredibly quickly. Well pointed out. Uh, by the way, we did highlight this during the last session, but now we are down to three players, 45-minute blind levels. So in 40 minutes' time, the blinds will jump. We will go to level 33. Of course, there is a prospect of not getting to the end of level 32, considering the advantage that Jack Sinclair has right now. Looks like it's going to be Hamilton's turn to put the chips in the middle. Yep. audience on the rail for this final table. Very different dynamic to what we saw in Barcelona a couple of months ago. That's pretty surprising though because Brits are usually very boisterous on any rail I've ever seen them on. I mean, it's still he says looking at watch just gone seven o'clock in the evening local time maybe it might not go the distance but maybe in another couple of hours Sinclair 
again choosing just to call in the small blind and Villemier checking his option. Yeah, and it's interesting because <clears throat> as we've pointed out, obviously Jack Sinclair has all the right in the world to just put maximum pressure on his opponents and just be sort of open shoving hands like this. But perhaps Jack feels so confident <clears throat> playing post flop, maybe keeping the variance down. A double up, you know, of a 20 big blind stack would eff effectively bring him down to about 53 big blinds and then a double up to 40. And suddenly that lead isn't what it used to be. So maybe just happy to know that, that his opponents can't really get too out of line and uh, just, just play some post flop poker. wins a small one both he and Hamilton still have sub 20 big blind stacks Sinclair still hovering around the 15 million mark yeah Villemier nicely getting away with one there I think it's definitely important to also just touch on the fact that you know in the last four to five years of the game especially you know people don't feel in some type of desperation mode when they have these type of stacks, you know, the 20 big line stack, the 15 big line stack, the 10 big line stack. People have found a lot of playability with those stacks, um, mm -hmm. even in post flop situations where, you know, before people might not have thought that that was possible. And so I think this, this is kind of reflective of the low variance approach and also just the fact that the other two players don't feel like the, the, the game is won yet by Jackson Claire. They feel like they still have a chance to, you know, play smart and find good spots and be able to double through. And then all of a sudden they're right back in it. Yeah. I mean, obviously Sinclair can leverage not just his chip lead, but the fact that the other two are pretty much tied right now. And there's a big jump between third and second place prize money. But also... Does Sinclair want to be in a position, Griffin, where he is the one eliminating? For example, if Volumier knocks out Hamilton mm -hmm. and those two stacks combine, it's not as easy a job as if he's able to knock out one of them and then take on the other for, like, crumbs. Yeah, that collision factor, you'd like to see the two short stacks just sort of knock each other out, not put, you know about 30% of your stacks at risk to try to eliminate one of the players. But do you want that? Do you want the collision of the short stacks or would you rather be the one picking them off? Because, as I said, if Volumier were to knock out Hamilton, then suddenly you're playing heads up 40 big blinds effective rather than only having, like, between 15 and 20 picks. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the thing is, I think, obviously, you would prefer to be the one eliminating, but whether or not you want to be the one that risks those okay. 20 big blinds, you know, it, obviously it's going to be better to, to be heads up 95 to, to, to 18 big blinds as opposed to, let's say, 75 and, and 40. But having said that, you know, like I, like I remarked earlier, if you do lose an all-in against either one of these stacks, you're suddenly floating around that 50-55 chip mark, and the person that's doubled up is at 40. Now you're staring down the barrel of, you know, m maybe losing the chip lead after a few hands. 58, right? Hamilton all in from the button. We've only caught one of his cards. The Lumiere in the big blind with the decision. And these two have traded places, by the way. And again, it, it's going to keep happening. But as things stand, Hamilton now has the Lumiere covered. 20 bigs for Ian and just over well, around 15 bigs for Alex. Stacks of the three remaining players in this EPT London main event. Mm -hmm. 
Jack Sinclair raising the button with 8-3 of clubs. And it's a case of raise and take it. Playing 15 and a half million now. Definitely don't want to discount, you know, the type of run good that comes in when you raise a button with one of those hands where you're just hoping to get folds and your opponent can't even defend in the big blind. You know, if you do that a few times, you definitely cut them down and put them in a more precarious situation. So just not running into hands that are playable from your opponents is also a type of running good at these late stages, I think. Yeah. So the difference in prize money between third and second is what, around 120 grand? Again, just highlighting the problem facing Hamilton and the Lumiere right now. Hamilton on the button with Queen Jack offsuit. Going to be a bit too many ship chips to just be open and shoving a hand with a lot of playability. I think I like playing this as a raise fold here. And, you know, hopefully, if you do get action, it's in the call variety, but it's just going to open shove. Yeah. Requests the triangle, gets through the small blind. Jackson Clare has folded. Ace queen for Volumia. Oh, wow. And it's a call. <clears throat> And it looks like Volumia is the at-risk player here, but has Hamilton dominated? Other, yeah. I would highlight yeah, that Hamilton yeah. has been running obscenely good in all-in situations, yeah. even when he I is mean, way behind. Like a chop, but that's pretty unlikely. Yeah, and I think this is the exact reason. You don't want to risk one of these two waking up with a dominating hand. King at 9-5. Lumiere roughly a three to one favorite, but Jacks and tens are working for Hamilton. Ten. It is a ten on the turn. He has the straight, and now the Lumiere is going to need a jack on the river. He does not hit, and we are going heads up here in London. As Alexandre Volumier from Switzerland bows out in third place, he cashes for £296,150, and it is an all UK heads up battle. Very impressive performance from Villemier. You can't really point out. I can't really think of one hand he didn't. I didn't think he played well, uh, but at the end of the day. Um, you know, you got to win your all-ins on the final, final table. And, you know, that one's obviously massive. It's huge. It would have left Ian Hamilton with just three big blinds and all but out in third place. But instead, bows out in second. You have to think back to that rivered five with uh, James. You'll know a bit better than me, but it feels like five, six, seven people left against Hamilton with the ace-queen to ace-five and how, you know, just the runouts can can burn you sometimes. And that's the crazy thing about this game as i highlighted he has been running superbly hot in these all-in situations regardless of how far behind he is how low his equity may be yeah. and hamilton now gets to play heads up albeit at a major disadvantage both in terms of chips and let's be brutally honest experience 76 big blinds for jack sinclair 33 big blinds for ian hamilton but the uk leg of the european poker tour is going to have a uk champion Hometown hero for the win is always I, great. I think somebody needs to bring some drinks to the rail. Wake them up a little bit. This is exciting. So here we go with two players remaining. Having lost Poodle, Kishu, Arabets, and Lumiere. 
It's now Ian Hamilton versus Jack Sinclair. And a big difference in prize money. There's a quarter of a million pounds separating second and first. This is a £250,000 heads-up battle. Plus, these guys want to be an EPT champion. They want that trophy. They want that title. Yeah, absolutely. And I do, <clears throat> I do worry a little bit about Ian Hamilton in this heads-up match just because of a couple of spots we've seen on the final table playing maybe a bit overly tight pre-flop um, when there's only one or two or three players, two or three players in the hand. You know, we saw some open folds with Ace-8 and, this, and like, stuff like that. I mean, you have to play pretty wide when you're playing heads up, and Jack is going to be playing every single hand. So I'd hate to see Ian get blinded out. It has shown his ability and, 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 and being willing to stick the chips in, which is something I think would be nice to maybe up the variance a bit against a very talented Jack Sinclair. Yeah, and again, just to highlight, we've got Jack now breaking the $5 million barrier in live earnings, regardless of whether he finishes first and second. We've got Ian Hamilton scoring 156 grand in that mystery bounty event back in Prague, but only has 10 reported live caches to his name. I highlighted his biggest result there, and I don't know how much heads-up experience he has, whereas Jack Sinclair obviously has a great deal of experience but sometimes Maria all you need is luck to win a poker tournament yeah and maybe for Hamilton the fact that he's guaranteed you know quite a bit of money it'll loosen up his game a little bit he'll feel like he's able to play for the win so a little luck on his side and maybe yeah. just opening up that game being a little more aggressive and he has a shot to take it down So blinds will remain 100,000, 200,000 for another 28 minutes. Bold predictions, including Ellie Moose on YouTube, who says, I'm calling it now, the Brit will win. <laughs> I'm willing to put some money on that. Ooh, so this might be it. Uh, I think it would be Jack Sinclair's intention to play these pocket threes as a limp shove for 33 big blinds. 33 big blinds, 3-3. Three, three. And Hamilton has just a good enough hand heads up to actually raise and call. So, I mean, we could have the all-in for the title happening right here. This is a 5x to kick things off. I think that's raising a bit of an eyebrow for Jack. And actually, he doesn't want to increase the variance. He doesn't want to just get an all-in here and give an opportunity for Ian Hamilton to double up to, you know, essentially even the chips out. Actually, would take the lead. Yeah, so Sinclair limping the button. The huge raise from Hamilton. The call from Sinclair and a Queen-Jack 7 flop. You know what I, I mean, right, Maria? I mean, oftentimes you'll see in Heads Up, a player will limp a pocket pair and maybe try to induce a weak uh, steal and then the shove. But here you can see Jack, a bit unorthodox, just calling because doesn't want to increase that variance against Hamilton. Yeah, and especially if, you know, Sinclair's perspective of how Hamilton has been navigating this final table thus far has been that maybe he's unwilling to get it in without a good hand, then, you know, he feels like that big race size might be indicative of strength and doesn't want to put so many chips in with what, you know, at best would be a flip for Sinclair if he were to be called in that spot. I know this is a superstitious way to, to look at it, but maybe the fact that Jack Sinclair has seen how well Ian Hamilton has been running in all ends, <laughs> you know, doesn't want to just force this flip at best scenario and just, you know, see that king pop off on the turn there uh, to, to get Hamilton that huge double up in an all in. I mean, I've definitely been guilty of it when I see someone at the table winning hand after hand. I'm like, maybe I don't want to get into <laughs> yeah. a big pot with them. Sinclair technically ahead with just one card exposed for us at home. <laughs> I love it. He only needs one card to yeah. beat Ian Hamilton. Yeah. 
now has a pair of nines, at least a pair of nines, I should say. Yeah, you know, bottom of range here, you might want to start finding some bluffs, but wouldn't be surprised if Jack would pick that off thinking, okay, I think Hamilton would have bet a Jack by now, and now suddenly he's betting, and maybe that nine would have been good enough. But certainly unorthodox, you know, being the aggressor with the limp in and then checking it all the way down with six high. Um, definitely not something you see very often. Well, this is the action replay of the moment. But Alex was eliminated in third place. Why are they moving so slowly? <laughs> the dapper gent departing the main stage. Shine that trophy. Getting ready for its big night. Deja vu. Obviously, in heads-up play, you are going to have to start finding some continues with some high cards. You know, I'm not necessarily saying that Jack Six was uh, the spot to take one off necessarily, but also you just have to be aware that it will be really easy to be exploited if you're just playing extremely passively. I mean, ranges are going to be really wide, you know, heads-up, especially with the big blind Andy. You don't expect to see really any folds pre-flop. Who was that rich guy on the rail? That was Espen Jorstad, <laughs> wearing a very charming coffee cup adorned yes, sweater. Yes, yes. Wants to show everyone he hasn't changed, you know. He's still got a goofy side. Now that he has $10 million. So he is the reigning World <clears throat> Series of Poker main event champion. Jack Sinclair, of course, is a previous World Series of Poker Europe main event champion. And we had a Hashtag fun fact during the last level. I don't know whether you heard it, Griffin, but Hussein Ensam is the only player to have won the World Series main and an EPT. But there are currently three players, and there could be a fourth after today. There are three players who've won the World Series of Poker Europe, Europe. main and an EPT. Nice. And between you and Maria, you can work out who those three are. Mateos. That's one. Um, John Juwanda. That's two. Um, that's all I know. Leave the third for Maria. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. I, I was kind of hoping Griffin was <laughs> would Maria, just get them all. We can hear you clicking and clacking on your keyboard. The hook. You can't look right? up. Right? I know. I do have long <laughs> fingernails, and uh, it's giving me away. <laughs> to be fair, I, the third is the player that no one, no one was able to get. Yeah. It's Kevin McPhee. Oh, Wow. Kevin McPhee. So Jack Sinclair would be the fourth. But he has to close out this heads-up battle first as he raises the button with Jack Four. Five four for Hamilton. <laughs> Jack Four. Not just any Jack Four, it's the Jack of Clubs Four of Hearts. No. And there you go. There's a jack and a five on the flop. Wow. Okay. 
King of Spades on the turn. That is going to give Hamilton the four high flush draw. Yeah, Sinclair decided to check back that flop and just protecting his check back range there obviously allows him to bet here pretty freely and feeling good a lot of the times, but does check again. Yeah, maybe you just, you know, you think you have the board to crushed is a bit strong, but you're trying to get your opponent to, you know, river a nine here. Um, and Hamilton hasn't done that, but does have the five and, and might work in some calls uh, facing a bet on this river and actually is going to go for what appears to be a sort of block value bet. Uh, it's very large, so I don't, I yeah, don't that, like this bet. Same. I think that sizing is definitely not really a block bet, right? <laughs> Well, suffice to say, Sinclair makes a pretty quick call, wins the pot, back up to 76 bigs. Hamilton back down to 33 bigs. Yeah, very strange bet. But more for Jack. Yeah, it's definitely a little problematic, you know, when a player on the end there chooses to value bet a hand that really isn't going to get calls from worse very often and also seeing them check backhands that have no showdown value like we saw with the four deuce and not stabbing and trying to win the pot in those type of situations so I think if this is a sign of things to come it might be a, an uphill battle for Hamilton try to get tricky with the jacks here oh it's always coming seven Sinclair now with a pair maybe Hamilton does get a bit of value here I would like to see a bet here from Hamilton um, because those sevens and sixes are going to continue. So unlikely your opponent has an ace here. Quickly checking back after you limp. Going to the river, no help for Sinclair, so this pot is likely going in the direction of Ian Hamilton. on to that all-important two-to-one chip advantage. As we reach hand 146 of the final table. The final day of this EPC London main event, which started with six players. Now we're down to two. Two hundred and fifty grand heads up battle plus the trophy and title in play. C three. Yeah. Sinclair raising ace nine, Hamilton defending five four. the open-ended straight draw for Sinclair plus ace high still the best hand <coughs> all pairs on the turn Sinclair now an 86% favorite Diamonds completes the board, and Ace High will play. Good. Was 72, says so states for the win. I have foreseen him holding the trophy. It's a bit of a curious bet here um, from Sinclair, but 
maybe just just in case Hamilton has an eight here, something like eight seven. Um, really wants to make sure and doesn't think that he'll call that. Yeah. Just trying to work out whether Was is trying to say that Sinclair looks like Stapes or he's making a joke <laughs> that at the winner's presentation, Joe will have the trophy. Because he won't. It'll be tournament director Toby Stone who'll be holding the trophy and will present it to the winner. I uh, feel like Stapes' beard has to be a lot longer than Sinclair's. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> Oh, great. Another beer joke. By the way, we did consider allowing Joe to present the trophy himself, but we just couldn't guarantee that it wouldn't get dropped. <laughs> Hamilton trying to pull a fast one. Yeah, and King Deuce offsuit is sometimes a good candidate, you know, to potentially three bet in these situations. But sometimes it just depends on what you think your opponent is going to be opening with, if you think they're going to be opening on the tighter side. And also, again, we've talked about just low variance approach. You know, maybe Sinclair feels like against a 32 big blind stack, he just wants to let it go. Giving him a lot of respect, though, you know, I think some players would at least be calling there. So did registration close in the mini EPT London main event? I believe it did. Hold on one second. Yep. So 9,428 total entries. That means added value in the prize pool as well. 3,000 players roughly remaining competing for that EPT Prague package up top. Plus a first prize of nearly $7,000. Noice. 9,000 players are loving the mini EPTs. I do this every time. Definitely going to do it again for Prague. Hamilton with a gut shot, but doesn't try to take a semi-bluff line here. Sinclair just trying to show down the pair fours from the flop with the check back. Trippity fours on the river. Be careful, Hamilton. Thinks about it. Yeah. And then elects to check. <laughs> yeah, certainly seen a bit of a pattern of unwillingness from Hamilton to bluff hands with no real showdown value, I think. Sinclair obviously going to go for value here, but most likely going to get a quick fold out of Hamilton. Unless, you know, guys never want to rule out some type of crazy check raise with a straight blocker, but no, didn't think so. <laughs> and Sinclair adds 400K to his stack. Back up to 15.8 million. Lines will be going up in around 10 minutes time, by the way. And this heads up battle will become shallower. Darla, deals are allowed, but no deal has been discussed. If anyone was going to raise the concept of chopping the prize pool, it would probably be Ian Hamilton. But to the best of my knowledge, he has not asked. He's not said anything. And I don't know, to be brutally honest, what Jack Sinclair's response would be, whether it would be an outright no <laughs> or whether he'd be willing to come to some arrangement. He must feel that he has the advantage, both in terms of chips and skill right now. So 
Maybe if the stacks were to even out, might come up again, or rather come up for the first time. Zanatas, can I see the rankings somewhere? Zanatas, if you are new to poker and you're looking for the hand rankings, you will find them over on the PokerStars homepage, but I'm sure we can sort you out with a link as well. Always enjoy it when someone tunes in and is discovering poker for the first time. Yep, there's a link to PokerStarsLearn.com. You'll find everything you need to know there. Thank you, Tom. Hamilton very balanced with his timing, even when it's a clear fold. Takes a couple of seconds. Five for Hamilton. Raises and gets a fold from Sinclair with eight deuce. Somley says, wouldn't it be funny if the winner would join the chat right now and start messing with people? Well, <laughs> not allowed phones at the table. I think they're saying it, oh, it was already it over. It was already over. They might well, be we too would have busy to ban celebrating them for spoilers, <laughs> to obviously. go on the YouTube chat. Can you imagine if it went to appeal? We're going to have to revoke your EPT title because you went into the YouTube <laughs> chat and started doing spoilers. Right? Sorry. Very interesting. Uh, three bet there on 35 big blinds. Um, you have to imagine with pocket threes, you would hate to three bet and then fold. So that's why oftentimes in a situation like that, that hand is going to play as a shove or a call. But uh, I don't fault Hamilton for maybe just trying to take more aggressive action. Maybe up the variance a little bit. Try to find spots to steal chips from Jack Sinclair, who's going to be playing, like we've talked about, 100% of buttons. We've seen the queen three raises, the nine four off limps. So Hamilton may be making a bit of an adjustment. Sinclair calling with a6 after Hamilton opened with king three. And there is an ace and a king on the flop. Hamilton continuing the 500,000. Yeah, definitely expecting to get called by, of course, you know, some type of gut shot, some type of, you know, potential for, for back doors. But here, Sinclair hasn't beat with the ace. Jack of spades pairs the board. lead here and could potentially get value from the exact hand Hamilton has but we've also seen some big folds from Hamilton with middle pair and the like even go as far as to say as unconventional tight folds that have often been correct and this would be another example but a 550,000 
chip bet in the 2.2 million. You know, on the yeah, certainly. Team. Sinclair can have some jack X's, but of course, just a lot of draws possible on that flop that could potentially be leading on that paired board turn. Sinclair going to be chopping with a lot of aces now. So does he try to size another blocky size bet or is he just going to check now? You know, if you think that Hamilton's a little bit tighter in these spots and you get a call, yeah, perhaps you just end up checking it here. Sinclair wins. A not insignificant Please pot. cheer, friends. It's now 81 <laughs> big blinds playing 30 big blinds. Nice swing in Jack's favor. 16.3 million playing 6.1 million. But you guys agree, right? This feels very subdued for a Brit on Brit heads up match with what I presume is a heavily British rail. It just feels like there's usually chanting. There might be some shoe bombs in the mix. It ain't 2013 anymore. <laughs> Back in those days, the rails were out of control. I mean, the last time EPT London ran, 2014, Jake Cody was at the final table. There was a very boisterous rail led by some loud chap by the name of Sam Grafton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just a reflection of how much the country's changed in all these years. Plus, Kevin Colleen was at that final table. She had yes. the Irish crowd in their outfits. Finton wearing his Riddler outfit. You know, when I... I don't know if you know this. I won the Irish Open back in 2017. And when I did, James, I just want to say, because you mentioned Kevin Colleen's rail, all of my friends in that circle, the Kevin Colleen circle, were all there at the Irish Open. And none of them came to watch me win the Irish Open because they were so hungover from the night before. <laughs> I would have had the great boisterous rail. Instead, I just had this, in fairness, great Canadian contingency of these people that I didn't know very well, but they had an annual trip that they would go to the Irish Open. And they were just cheering me on with the Canadian flag. And I just met them all. And so I got to celebrate with them, which was great. But it's always nice to have a really boisterous rail. <laughs> Hamilton calls on the button out of the small blind. And there's the raise from Jack Sinclair to 900,000. He's got ace jack in the big blind. Yeah, you would assume, you know, off of the stack size, you would find some limp calls with a type of suited connected hand, like eight, six of diamonds. You know, that's kind of your intention when you elect to limp with this hand is to be able to find a way to see a flop in position but Hamilton here just going to give it up yeah it's a bit of an exploitative sizing against that stack size you know you're you are being asked to call nearly 20 percent of your stack there um, with the eight six of diamonds I mean I think I'm probably limp calling with that hand and trying to flop something. Yeah. It's a, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is life is made a bit difficult when you're faced uh, with a four and a half X like that. Um, and, yeah, Jack is able to fold out a hand that had a great deal of equity against him. Yeah, Griffin, I'm sure you don't really win Irish Opens and, you know, shark cages by folding suited connected hands. No. flop. Just no. wanted to help you drop some more yeah, yeah, yeah. resume no, bombs anything, in there. Anything you know, else you I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this surprises me a little bit. Um... Hamilton 4Xs the limb from Sinclair, and Sinclair happily calls the queen eight off. I mean, I think it's okay. I'm just surprised Jack is so clear in his ranges that he knows this is a hand he's going to call for the, 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 the 4X. Certainly queen nine plus definitely going to be, in my head, calling uh, that kind of a raise. But, uh, yeah, queen it off good enough for, for Jack. And in fairness, very live. King 
on the turn. Hamilton now 93% favorite. And turning a double yeah, gutter maybe. for a pot, about a pot size bet here, Maria. Could just shove here. What do you think? Yeah, very interesting. Certainly, you know, the King of Hearts is probably going to favor Hamilton's range. And having all of that equity with the double gutter feels like a really natural spot Three to million. put the chips in. Three million. That's an effective shove, pretty much. You even tricked, even tricked the graphics department. <laughs> the blinds going up Hamilton has able to gain a little ground nearly 8 million to Jack's 14 that is Jackson close dad David who we heard from earlier on explained now his son was a talented musician and audio engineer and when he decided to become a poker pro David was very sad to lose the drummer from the band. <laughs> Just realized the blinds have gone up. We're now at level 33. Blinds are 125,250,000. So it's 58 bigs for Sinclair and 29 bigs for Hamilton. with queen at six of diamonds Hamilton with ace nine in the big yeah it looks actually like a, a limp here from Sinclair and, and Hamilton's going to come out with the raise as he so often does has um, again a 4x we saw how quickly Jack was able to call the 4x with queen eight off this is technically you know technically ranking wise a worse hand but a much more playability with the queen six of diamonds so um, I definitely like this call from Jack. Pretty fair fight here, 59 to 41%. And all spades on the flop. Hamilton with the nine of spades in his hand. Thomas Gould asks, where's Maria? Maria, where are you exactly? I am actually in Las Vegas. I'm here, but here as in on the broadcast, but also in Vegas. Very nice. Are you staying in a swanky strip resort or do you have a private residence? Uh, I'm staying on the strip uh, at a place that many people would be familiar with, Aria. Nice, very nice hotel. Very small bet here from Hamilton. Um, I don't think this is the kind of hand that, that Sinclair wants to mix in many moves other than fold, but maybe it could be an opportunity. Yeah. Nice by Hamilton. Well, that's narrowed the gap. 50 big blinds playing 36 big blinds. Yeah, it's definitely nice to see that Hamilton does have a few tricks up his sleeve. You know, at first it did appear that he was going to be playing pretty straightforward, you know, not really taking any bluff spots and not finding thin value uh, and sometimes even overvaluing his hand. But now definitely creating a little bit of momentum on his side. Sinclair still with the advantage right now.
Yeah, the thing that I like about Hamilton's game, you know, so much of our focus on this final table has been you know, the, the, the real star play of, of Jack Sinclair and, and, and others, but the thing that I found interesting about Hamilton is although he has been tighter in spots that we wouldn't expect, some of these, you know, tight button folds or blind on blind, maybe folding middle pair on the flop to a small bet, He's also been looser in spots we wouldn't expect, and that is very a very difficult style to play against um, because you you know you have your preconceptions of how someone's going to play a hand, and then they they do something like what Hamilton just did was play that hand as a check raise, um, and that's gonna, that's that's going to sort of cross up Jack Sinclair from time to time, and it's it's narrowed the gap here in this heads up. Yeah. Griffin, I know there's not a lot of time in between hands when they're playing heads up, but are you a little surprised that it doesn't kind of appear that either player has somebody on the rail, perhaps, you know, calling them over sometimes to relay some information with the delay? Yeah, that's an, that's an interesting point. I mean, I guess, I guess in heads up, it's a bit um, more difficult to do something like that. I mean, getting up between hands wouldn't... I mean, certainly, you know, when it's three, four, five, six-handed, we've been seeing some players on the rail maybe relaying some, some information from the delay. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, I, in, my, in my head, that isn't something that's really commonplace. In your experience, have you seen sort of like between hands, people will go, yeah, heads up? Um, I wouldn't say that it, it happens very often, but certainly, on you know, deal, when yeah, that like hand, some, yeah. right, yeah. when that specific hand maybe airs and broadcast live, I would expect that that would be some information if Sinclair had somebody on the rail would mm -hmm. call him over, you know? We're kicking off in one of the side events. I mean, the side event is getting more action <laughs> than, than uh, this main event. I feel like People are sweating it hard over there. And I think, to be honest with you, that might explain the absence of a lot of Jack Sinclair's friends on the rail. They're playing. You've made too enticing a schedule, James. Just too good a schedule. Everybody just wants to be playing poker here at EPT London. Nobody's skipping a mystery bounty to rail their buddy, you know? 1.15. Well, if Sinclair wins... He might not be inviting them to his after party. <laughs> I think that the where were you guys the, at? I think the money and the trophy will probably be a, <laughs> a good <laughs> substitute for friendship. It always has in my position. <laughs> <laughs> And the jack pushed back the very next hand. Oh my god, that was Jack Moore. You need some change. I don't even notice in the chat. Thank you, chat. You know, there was that Helmuth hand and everyone just wouldn't shut up about Queen 4 for about three weeks. I think eventually people <laughs> forget about Jack 4 and we can all go back to normal again. Oof. Not Good without question. some merch being made. Yeah. This is kind of an interesting question. Like, is that hand going to be in the pantheon of, of ha hands people think about, you know? Or no? For our sake, I hope they do forget about it. But I don't think so. Well, just how, like, aces versus kings was never really a thing until me and Kasuf, you know? And now everyone's always joking about aces versus okay. kings. Call it the big cooler. 1.1, <laughs> right? It had never happened before in the history <laughs> no, no, of poker. No, no, it's just like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And this guy's screaming at him. <laughs> King 10 versus Jack 7. And it is Ooh. a 
Bulls hand the high flop. There is a seven out there as well. There's one club out there, so some backdoor equity for Jack Sinclair outside of just the seven and the jack, which would pull him ahead. Sinclair's watching on from the rail. As this hand goes to the turn, which is the five of spades. Yeah, and although the flush gets there, you know, most of the time, especially in heads-up play, you've got to find a value bet with top pair and a really great kicker. And a real opportunity here for Hamilton to mm -hmm. take the chip lead. I mean, this is a very enticing bet. Oh, it's actually 2.5. I thought it was 1.5. Yeah, I mean, if Jack Sinclair can get away from this, um, you know, about 55% bet, which is a difficult thing to do mid-pair. I know there's the three flush out there, but, you know, maybe you think Hamilton's just taking one more stab and might give up on the river. Discipline. And would you look at those chip counts, James? Yeah, this is the point where... Stephen O'Dwyer appears on a pair of scales because it is oh, yeah. Evans oh, yeah. Stevens. 10, or rather 11 million each. Sinclair with the slight chip lead, but they are tied right now. Yeah, and James, you had mentioned, you know, perhaps when the chip stacks got a little bit closer, if they would perhaps step aside and be interested in talking about a deal, but. Uh, I think when there's a good structure and you feel very confident that you have the skill edge, yeah. you know, you're probably just going to continue on. But you never know. All that momentum and then you just get 8-3 offsuit. Oh. Played Pretty anyway. Pretty strong comeback from Hamilton so far. Another spot that I'm surprised to see Hamilton is actually looser than I expected. Maybe we're kind of going with that game flow a little bit, not wanting to just give Sinclair a free pass after all this momentum has been created in Hamilton's favor. Yeah, okay, just kidding, man, just kidding. Yeah, but if that was the case, Griffin, I feel like at that step, depth, I'd probably prefer to see just a raise from the button with the bottom of your range then yeah. you know it's a very clear raise folds and when you limp you're just asking to oftentimes get taken advantage of Thirty minutes left until the blinds go up again. And I think we are scheduled to take a break at the end of this particular level. I guess I have to ask the players what they want to do. We are at that time of day when we will sometimes take a full break for dinner. Understandably, these guys may just say, can we take a short break and play on? But we'll need to get their buy-in. Hamilton getting after it.
Still at the 125, 250 blind level for now. An action on Hamilton. 6 3 of clubs. That is a raise into all 100k chips, so he's made it 700,000. Jack Sinclair defending with 10 8. And a 9 7 6 long. Wow. So the straight for Sinclair. The flush draw for Hamilton. Also has a pair of sixes. Hamilton continues with the action check to him. And Jack Sinclair is now facing a bet of 600,000. A lot of reasons for Jack Sinclair to find a raise here. You unblock all of the pairs on the board. That's the great thing about flopping it straight. It doesn't happen very often, but oftentimes <laughs> you should play it fast because odds are your opponent, if they're betting into you, especially on a board as textured as this, it's probably on base in some capacity. Now the question becomes, can handle Hamilton, despite flopping a pair and having a flush draw, show some discipline and just call because it's, you know, it's a bad shape. Not horribly, but don't want all the chips to get in here. Yeah, with, you know, a shallower stack, obviously, you're able to realize your equity if you just perhaps shoved and get to see both the turn and the river with all of that flush draw equity. But here, definitely calling, I think, is the best course of action. So Sinclair raises to 1.8 million. Hamilton calls... Ace of spades on the turn. Sinclair now 75% favorite. Hamilton still with that pair. And the flush draw. Bit of an annoying card for Sinclair. even though you still obviously have the best hand pretty much always. Sometimes you are going to be now chopping and also, you know, your opponents, their relative hand strength is going to go down a lot if they don't have a straight. But this check, oh wow, this check is going to wow. work. And as we <gasps> talked about, more aggressive in spots you wouldn't expect. Turning that hand into a bluff with a, a massive bet. Yeah, that is pretty surprising. You would think a lot of players would just want to check back in that spot and realize their equity, especially because, you know, SPR is a little bit interesting in terms of what's going to happen if Sinclair just calls here and then you get to the river with, you know, about a half pot back. Sinclair calls the 3.5 and we go to the river with more than 12 million in the middle and just to be clear Hamilton is the effective stack here he has 5.1 million Jack's got 5.13 behind the river card is the nine of spades pairing the board. So Sinclair has a lock on this. And even though the actual Sinclair's hand strength has gone down with the board pairing, it's not really something to worry about. Um, if Hamilton had a set or two pair, wouldn't have been betting so strongly on that turn. So you're not really worried about full houses at this stage. 
Really, you're only worried about the 10 Jack and the 10X that you're chopping right. against. And Jack Sinclair announces all in. And Hamilton with just a pair of sixes. Yeah, and once you fade the snap call, then you're just hoping for a call. What do you think about this shove, Maria? What, what do you think it's uh, trying to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, I think that's really interesting. I feel like if you're basically saying that you don't feel like your opponent's going to, as you mentioned, have boats here, so obviously, and you would never try to get boats to fold, of course, then it's, it's kind of surprising to see that Sinclair's going to take this line on the river. I, I yeah, don't so really I have a theory. I, I think it's because, um, you know, Jack is going to split Hamilton's range into bluffs like the hand he has and then tens, right? So mm -hmm. because Sinclair check raising the flop and then check calling the turn is in a lot of ways perceived as two pair, perhaps he maybe wants to, you know, rep that he's just made a boat and sometimes he's going to fold a chop. Well, Hamilton has played a time bank card. Is not going to call, though. Folds, and all that hard work he did is gone in one pot as Jack Sinclair is back out in front with 17.38 million. 70 big blinds for Jack and fewer than 10, 20 big blinds, rather, for Ian Hamilton. As Joe Stapleton rejoins us in the booth. Hello, my babies. Wow. I mean, if that river's a six or a three, there's a chance it's over. Right back to four to one. Seventeen point three million for Sinclair, five point one for Hamilton. How many big blinds is that, Griffin? Um, for Jack Sinclair, it's sixty-nine big blinds. And as a robot, do you know why that's hilarious? <laughs> I do. I know the deep hits ring of 69. Oh pretty deep. Pretty, pretty deep. I wasn't expecting your programming to understand either humor or lovemaking, but it turns out you're quite advanced. You would be surprised how much information is on the internet. <laughs> 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 Sinclair flops. Oh my God. Flops a 10. It's going to be good enough for 93% of the equity. Check, check. Hamilton checks a second time. A third time, actually, if you count pre flop. You do count pre flop here at the EPT. And a seven on the river is two per for Sinclair. A lot of people, by the way, betting a full, a lot of people think that Griffin's robot voice is a grandma's boy reference, which I thought also, but it turns out You've never even seen Grandma's Boy. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> it turns out that the nerdy loser <laughs> from Grandma's Boy just inside has the me. exact same thought process as <laughs> yeah. the nerdy loser sitting uh, next to me. It's a wild coincidence. Maria, have you got a robot voice? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that counts or not. <laughs> that was one, of these, one of these robots Don't is lying. Robot the other is telling a truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. Hamilton with 10-7 suited. Your feeble mind doesn't understand the power of the dark side. I would be all about these Sith references if I haven't hadn't been doing them for like 15 years with anyone that's got a hoodie on. <laughs> but this guy kind of takes the cake. 800? Sinclair coming over the top of this limp. 10-7 suited. Pretty strong. In yeah, position. and I think this is 
This is where we want to see Hamilton start defending again with the suited semi-connected type of hands. We've seen him fold, you know, when he limps with hands that perhaps other players would find limp calls with. And we were talking about how Sinclair, you know, is going to be pretty balanced with some raises out of the big blind that are bluffs and some, you know, that are going to be for value. So <laughs> glad to see Hamilton call pre, but Sinclair here, interesting flop for both. Action flop. Five, Trey, deuce, two spades. Bottom pair for Sinclair. Two overs and a flush draw for Hamilton. A dead heat after three cards. Sinclair checks it on over to Hamilton. Gives up the betting lead. Check, checks it back. Turn card is a seven. That deuce no longer the best pair. Hamilton all but got this locked up. Yeah, I gotta imagine Sinclair is actually probably feeling pretty decently about his hand when you decide to raise after a limp with six deuce and then get the deuce three five and have it check through. You expect your opponent to have something like, you know, queen ten off. Maybe uh, maybe Jack Nine suited some sevens, but yeah, mostly cards bigger than that. Yeah. Huh? So this is sort of a blocky value bet. Like hope to just take it down. Six hundred K. But Hamilton would like to show the power of the dark side. <laughs> Big old raise here. From 600K to Ham to Milton. No, that doesn't work. Uh, two million. <laughs> ham to Milton. Two months to Mil uh -huh. to Hamilton. Okay. <sighs> Is this live? Don't get crazy, Jack. Come on. Bin Claire. Send it to the bin. There you go. Doesn't seem all that convinced. Tom214 says on Twitch. Oh, Jack moves Ooh. all in. Wow. And a snap call from Ooh. Hamilton. Ooh. This would be quite unlucky. We could have an end right here. If there is a... In. Then so be it, Jedi. Uh, we're looking for the seven outs you see on screen. Sixes and fours. Making up the majority of that. Deuces. Not all of the deuces. Oh, deuce Shay. Ah, deuce. <laughs> That's a touche joke. Catch that? <laughs> I got it. You're a douche. Sometimes, sometimes you don't laugh, though, so I figure you don't understand. River my joke. card, because I'm <laughs> thinking maybe this tournament's going to be over, Griffin. <laughs> Luckily for you, the, the last hand wasn't you going, uh, douche. <laughs> Whoops, champion time. <laughs> Clip it. Clip it. We got it. We got it. It's a great finish. Oh, my God. Double up Ian Hamilton, and things aren't even Stevens, but Hamilton certainly off the ropes. You know, I really thought I was going to win EP2 London, and then I put in a six deuce. <laughs> yeah, it sounds bad when you word it like that. <laughs> That's not what we think, Jack. You played great. I mean, that is not a lot of distance between them. 13 million, 9.5 million, 51 big blinds, 35 big blinds. Oh, Dell Vision says, dumb way to let your opponent back in the game. Yeah, some strong opinions from the chat pros yeah. on that one. I don't even blame him. I think we should just give him, you know. Carte Blanche, let them go for a little bit. I mean, I'll Chat Pro Saturday is exactly um, it's close. It's soon. three hours and 40 minutes away local time. It's Chat Pro Saturday somewhere right now, right? 
Where would it be if, if it's forward time? Asia? Asia, yes. It's the land of the rising sun? Yes. If you can prove you are in Asia, then you can go. We'll, we'll go allow it. We'll we allow will it, allow yes. It. Oh. And Hamilton is going to take this down pre-flop on the very next hand. Ultimate power. Picks up a couple more big blinds. That's right, in Australia. Chat Pro Saturday in Australia. Australasia, I should have said. Mm. So Jack, you can see the first time we've seen him smile in a while is when he sees the bad news. How British is that? Watch this. He sees it. Well, that's not how I read it up. There it is. Ah, the Brits love a bit of pain. Whoops. Double up time for Ian Hamilton. Yeah. And another pre-flop win for the other Brit, the underdog. But it was slowly creeping his way back toward even, back toward the chip lead. Am I the only one that gets spam about Camp Lejeune every three minutes? Anyone else? Is that just a California thing? Yeah, I think that's a Cali problem. Check okay. your privilege. Press one in chat if you're getting, uh, if you're getting Camp Lejeune spam. Every couple of minutes. What's Camp Lejeune? It's a place? It's a place where there was something in the water and people got poisoned. Yeah, there's a lot. See, a lot of people in chat. I mean, how many people went to Camp Lejeune? All right, we're going to see a flop this time. Dominated six. Hamilton with 8-6, Sinclair with 5-6. You know, we were razzing Jack about that in a little bit, but the way we broke it down, it does make some kind of sense, you know, when you talk about the range you're expecting your opponent to have. And also, I mean, credit to Ian Hamilton because it also reinforced the other thing we've been talking about, which is that Hamilton has a couple moves up his sleeve. He's looser than you'd expect in certain spots, and that... that because right. Ian Hamilton has shown he has the ability to take spots like that, make big raises without it, um, you know, that act, that really convinced Jack. I mean, if, if we hadn't seen Whoa. Ian Hamilton do anything like that, yeah. Jack Sinclair would not have been shoving um, with a hand that turned out to be absolutely crushed on the turn there for the EPT title. I have an important poker uh, follow-up also. Mm. Turns out Camp Lejeune is a marine training base, so... Lots of people have gone to Camp Lejeune. I've just never heard of it because I need to check my privilege. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. Because <laughs> I've never had to consider being in the Marines. Yes, Joe does not defend his country. He just makes it laugh. <laughs> Should put that on a flyer. <laughs> hey, I'm doing my part. And gives this one up pre-flop. What will be interesting is to see if Sinclair is going to start adjusting his play a little bit more now that he is perhaps giving Hamilton some credit for getting involved in more hands than I think Sinclair thought he would. Just going to find an ability to hopefully exploit that now, especially when it seems like Sinclair thought that you know, Hamilton might have been a little bit of a one-trick pony when heads up play started. Fun Patrick writes in to ask, when does Joe start making us laugh? You ready? Oh, wow. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I'm you ready. ready. I'm ready, baby. You ready for Hit me to start hammer. making people laugh? Hey, Fun Patrick. Now you're banned, Patrick. That wasn't that good. I'm not no. going to lie. Someone laughed doesn't matter. He can't answer anymore. You're, you're banned. You, you, you are banned, though. 
fun ba band trick. Nope. Nine nine dues. We have nobody's cards here. This is fun. Oh, oh there we go. Don't quit your second job, Joe. <laughs> Claire betting with eight high and is going to get queen high to fold. Nine and a half minutes left on the level. Esquire says, not hard to get banned here. Tread lightly. People thought I was going to ban him for that, but I won't. Maria. Yeah. Are you in California? No, I was just saying uh, earlier that I'm in Vegas, actually. How did my girl Natalie Bodie do yesterday at the Poker oh, Go Studios? Yeah, she was great, actually. I really enjoyed her vibe. Uh, I got to talk to her a little bit off camera and on camera. I thought she did a great job. Uh, how do you know her, though? Because this is the first time I've seen or heard of her. She reached out to me on Twitter like a year ago, a year and a half ago, and said that she wanted to get into being like a poker personality and uh, asked me if she could have like 30 minutes of my time over Zoom, and I uh, gave her... I'll give you 10. Some words, exactly. <laughs> I was like, you get me for 15. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gave her some words of advice, and I've been following her career ever since, and I think she's very talented and obviously... Um, is very easy on the eyes, so I think, you know what? You're going to be fine. Between those two things, you're going to be fine. And here she is doing poker stuff now. That's what you said to me, actually, when I wanted to get into presenting. That is true. You said so you're easy on the eyes. Correct. That's the most important step. And, uh, yeah, so just just shows to go you yeah, that I wouldn't just say it to a lady. <laughs> yes. <laughs> shows to go you. Yeah. You have got to go. Yeah, look at you, just discovering talent left and right. To be fair, she discovered me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just wanted to brag about how she slid into your DMs. Uh, I'm not. That was part of it. That was a major part of it. Yes, yeah, that was a totally big, part, big of part of it. That I, me just sort of crowbarring that into this conversation that had nothing to do with this event. And then uh, my boy Tafo Kintz finished second. Yes, I didn't know that that was your boy. Like, who do you not know, Steve? Oh, I'm just only naming people I do know. That's how it works. <laughs> I played uh, I played a couple of home games with some of those e-gamer e guys. And they were, they've been very nice to me. They've always been very, very cool to me. So I like to support them when they can, when they come play poker stuff. Hippopotamus still riding high. I wonder if he loses the chip lead if he's got to give the uh, Chippopotamus over. Losing custody. I don't think that's how it works. That's how it worked when my parents got divorced. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. All they gave you was this toy hippo. <laughs> no, I mean, I. They I oh, you were the hippo. My dad lost custody when he uh, stopped, stopped making money. This is a bit too personal for me. I got to be, I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable. I, I, I know. Uh, back I'm to poker. Uncomfortable. Uh, so raise from the king nice nine. Raise, yeah. <laughs> Have I mentioned that I love Steve's mom, though? Since we're on the subject of family, I have, I have a TV it's mom. Tight. Yeah. Wow. Things, things closer than ever. I think there was a legit even Stevens at one point, right? But. Yeah, I did the sound effects for James, and uh, of course you did. off camera he looked at me and shook his head. Of course you did. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a, I have a, I have a TV mom. Maria's parents are kind of TV parents, also. Oh yeah. Yeah, very supportive, always cooking, making care packages. You know, Maria's mom sent me a care package when I was having some health problems. <gasps> wow. She did. Yeah.
Your I mom hope. quite famously uh, fell asleep on the rail at a. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that did happen at, at Monte Carlo. It was a long trip. <laughs> you know. Finally, have a flop that could induce a little bit of action. Okay. Nope. Just check, check. Pair of tens, good for Hamilton. Trip Ooh. tens, good for Hamilton. Wow. But a flush draw for Sinclair and a straight draw. Yeah, some flush draw and some gutter butter for Jack Sinclair. Five hundred thousand, the bet from Sinclair. Yeah, with so many draws possible, you know, when you're holding trip tens, I think this could be a good place to start putting in some more chips. And looks like I'm gonna go for a full stack there. Yeah, loves the two million raise. Feels good, like to swing it in your hand like a weapon. Yeah. You ever punched a guy with a roll of quarters in your fist, Griffin? Uh, no, but I've dreamed about it. <laughs> really gratifying. <laughs> I grew up in a rough neighborhood. <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot of nickel punching and singing. I'm sure. <laughs> and Claire probably not too happy that he has to pay so much to see the river card but that is the position he has found himself in with a total brick on the river very expensive brick which is another thing i used to use often in, a, in my rough neighborhood <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so ryan johnson's best movie you think it's his best movie? I love Brick. I tried I to show it. Movie. I tried to show it to a couple of friends a few weekends ago, and I forgot how hard it was to follow. They were like, well, "Oh I no!" Mean, and then I put the subtitles on, and it was even harder to follow. <laughs> Didn't you just tell this joke about the? Yeah, but <laughs> different. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's just it's just my favorite Ryan Johnson movie. Probably it might be mine too. It, Knives Out is pretty damn. I'm good. gonna try to get Ryan Johnson on the podcast because he's putting that new show out called Poker Face. Yeah, that would be and great. Natasha Leone, I heard, is a poker fan. I think I might be able to get one of them. Dude, gonna call in some favors. I mean, listen, if you had to choose, get Natasha. She's so she, awesome. She's the best. She is really awesome. Hamilton checks. Sinclair oh. makes a big bet. What a trap! Just brilliant work yeah. from Hamilton here. This is so unorthodox. Sorry, we really should have been focused on this hand because this is an incredibly unorthodox check from Hamilton, you know. Out of character for him also. It's just such a beautiful trap. I mean, at this point, Sinclair's going to expect Hamilton to bet the 10 on the on the river here for value and instead just finds a check to induce a bluff because of all these types of misses Sinclair is going to have. And this is going to vault Ian Hamilton massively into the chip lead. I don't know, really know what he's waiting for, maybe weighing whether or not he should consider either. raising. That's a time bank card, it's not a, a fold. Maria, Maria. Okay, okay. oh my gosh, Maria. sorry. Maria. It gets, take a second, sit down, gassed. sit back down. Sit back down. It gets down. a little weird, and I'm waiting for Have the day. Have a glass of water. I'm wait, folding. I'm waiting for the day where a player mistakes that as a fold and reacts to it. But luckily, Jack Sinclair is no slouch. Uh, Hamilton announces all in. Value. Sinclair folds, and guess what? My babies, wow. that is a flip-flop. Ian Hamilton, for the first time in this heads-up, now has the chip lead. And not just any chip Plot lead. Plot twist. A nearly two-to-one chip lead. 56 big blinds. <laughs> Plays 30 big blinds. <laughs> And we thought we were going to be out here a little sooner. Sure, James is making a T right now. We're in it for the long haul. This will be the last hand of the level. Baines cheering for Hamilton in chat. Hamilton, the underdog, both experientially and I'd say spiritually. I mean, look, everyone loves the movie Rudy. Look at this guy. 
He not is getting the Rudy underdog. vibes off of this. <laughs> More of like um, unbreakable vibes. Right. Just standing in the train station, touching poker players, getting reads off of them. And a dominated queen for Sinclair. Seven for Deuce, all diamond flop. We are going to have a break after this hand, and Sinclair is going to quickly fold, and you know, probably going to use this break to reset, and just think constantly the whole time about how much that Deuce six has turned his fortunes. You think so? You think <laughs> no, that's no, going to no, haunt no. him? <laughs> no, I'm teasing. What of a course, thing to happen. You on need a... to let it slide. I'm just kidding. Maybe for Halloween he'll dress as six oh. deuce. <laughs> <laughs> the scariest thing he's encountered at this EPT event. So for the first time, I think for the entire final table, Ian Hamilton is the chip leader. Certainly the first time since heads up. With a near enough two to one chip lead over Jack Sinclair, who finds himself with a sub 30 big blind stack for the first time in a while. This break's gonna be a little bit longer, a 30 minute break. This would typically be a little bit of a longer one so folks can get something to eat. More from EPT London in 29. And it's time to play our favorite game, Joe. We're going to sweat with Benny Spindler. We're only going to see his whole cards, and we'll play this next hand from the chip leader's perspective. He's got ace-queen. Under the gun, he raises to 160K. I'm okay with it so far. Klebanov has folded. Looks like Benny might have a customer. Steve O'Dwyer showing interest in the small blind. Remember Benny's image in that Steve doesn't really need a super strong hand to play a pot with him. Also remember Steve just commented about how he's in business now. I would take this to mean he'd loosen up a bit as well. So he makes the call. Juan Manuel Pastor folds the big blind. Heads up to the flop. Benny has position and the pre-flop betting lead. 8-8-4 eight, eight, on the flop. O'Dwyer checks. And Benny checks behind. Benny doesn't continue if he thinks he's going to have the best hand a lot of the time. Betting doesn't get him a ton of value. King of Diamonds on the turn. Action on Steve. O'Dwyer leads for 250k. Well, Benny's not folding. He's probably thinking if Steve had an 8 or a king, he'd likely check the turn and let Benny bet. So Benny calls. If Steve had a middle pair, he'd probably also check since you can't really get multiple streets of value with tens or lower. Three of clubs on the river. Benny just with ace high. O'Dwyer, check the flop, and bet the turn. I'm totally fine if Steve just checks here, we can check behind. Doesn't look like he's checking. They never do. It's a bet of 340,000. Not a huge bet, about a third the size of the pot. It looks kind of like an annoying value bet, but how many hands could really be betting for value in this spot? Right now, Benny's weighing that against how many hands Steve would rather not see shown down. Steve O'Dwyer is staring right at Benny. Wonder if that live tells class Benny took is gonna pay off right now. Benny going for chips. And he calls. Uh, I think we're good. Steve's reluctant to turn over. Uh, it was a busted heart draw. Spindler picks off the bluff with ace high and wins the pot. Steve just got those chips and decided he'd put them to use trying to bluff Benny Spindler. Well, he's not the only Steve-O that likes punishing himself. And Benny Spindler can do no wrong today. He even looks pretty good in purple. Very focused. He's got the eye of the tiger. Now he's got the ear of the tiger. Oh, that's a lot of graphics. What is happening? Well, Joe, there's been a race from Grant Levy, a three bet from Andreas Torbegson, which has been called by Kitty Quo, Luca Pagano, and 
John Kuru. It's like the opening to a sitcom. I'm not folding. I call. Oh. Well, he was getting seven to one. He should call if he's got a pair of Richard Branson's business cards, which we know he does because he's a baller. Grant Levy calls as well, which means we are going six way to the flop. Six ways till Sunday. Might have been a little different if it were just the three of us. And the flop. Yeah. 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 If I would have. Are you just now welcome on me? No, I might have jammed it. Or folded. Six players. Ace nine three with two hearts. Check. Check. Well, I imagine someone's got an ace. You're supposed to play pretty tight in these spots, but I'd be shocked if everyone missed completely. It's been checked all the way around. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Now we should see some betting. It's a pretty safe board, even for a nine. Check. 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 Once again, it's been checked around. What is happening? Seven of hearts. Surely someone got there on the river. Someone must have made a flush. Check, check, check. check. Anyone? Check. Luca? It gets check. checked to showdown. Okay. I have a big pair. And it wins? Tens. Helmuth with tens. And no one can beat that. Nobody's got an ace. It's a Christmas miracle. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those six wins in the flop. Ace high, you win with ten. <laughs> and three wins. <laughs> You're a sorcerer, Phil. <laughs>320,000. Wants to work the pressure with the big stack. Lagu folds the button. Luca Fiorini in the small blind. Has Middleton dominated with a6. But he folds. Cresta Nielsen. 8-9 in the big. Big Toro, big blind. You don't mess with the Toro in Barcelona. This is his town. He calls. Heads up to the flop. 
Both these guys have hands. It's pretty tough to be excited about. Queen 10 deuce. That's a gut shot for Nielsen. Nada for Middleton. 9 8 can't be loving this flop. He's drawing like third pair, and his gut shot isn't even to the nuts. Nielsen checks. Middleton makes a continuation bet of 400,000. Now, I'm not saying Crescent has to fold here, but since your hand's not always going to be good when you hit it, why not put in a little bloop, a little bloop raise, a little bloop in there? Instead, he calls. Well, you know, Big Toro does what Big Toro wants. More than 1.6 million in the middle. Seven of clubs on the turn. Nielsen improves. He's now open-ended, and he has a flush draw. Eight high flush draw. Not sure how I'd feel about that. I know I'd rather hit the six. Nielsen checks a second time. Middleton doesn't barrel. He checks behind. Five of clubs on the river. Nielsen has a flush. Again, an eight high flush. He checks a third time. I'd say there's a good chance Tom bluffs this. It's hard for your opponent to call without a big club on this board. And he likely knows if he checks, his equity is going to be lower than the inhibitions at a company Christmas party. Call. Cool. Wow! A bet of 800,000 and an insta-call from Nielsen. Oh! That call is faster than the one you make when the delivery guy forgets your rice. Hello, I like to call Todd and Dan. I think Big Toro's been drinking a little too much of the Red Toro, if you know what I mean. Midi's down to 7.4 million. Nielsen up to 8.4. So we're six-handed. And it's time to play a hand from Tom Middleton's perspective as we sweat with Tom. Tell me he's in Middleton position. I can't because he's in the small blind. Yeah, close enough. Action. Hold it around. To Passy Sormanen. Fins on the button. And folds. So it's a blind on blind confrontation. Middleton with 5 4 off suit in the small. Well, I think this hand's a little too weak to limp the small blind. He does limp. Unless we think the big blind is almost never raising. Luca Fiorini looks at his cards and checks his option. Fiorini does play pretty tight, but in general, I do prefer a raise there. It's an 8 7 deuce flop. That's a gut shot for Midi. We were probably going to bet this flop no matter what, so the fact that we flopped a gutter ball is just bonus. 250,000. Like to bet. Fiorini. Not going anywhere. He calls. Yeah, now depending on the turn, maybe we just give this up. The turn card is the king of spades. This is actually kind of a sweet card to double barrel. While Middleton slows down, he checks. Fiorini seems like someone we could have maybe bluffed off if we had bet this turn, unless he's super strong. Well, he takes over the betting. 430,000. Okay, so this is when I tap out. Just raise the white flag and fold. Guys in striking is the type to run big bluffs on scary turn cards and subsequently not the type to make big folds here. I do not approve of this. The green and black chips are worth 100,000 each. Tom Middleton check raises to 1,150,000. Hit the hole this year and he's having more fun than ever before. He loves the game and he loves Bryn Kenny. Fiorini calls. Okay, yeah, it's not looking good here for the Mormon soldier. Or us. The river is another king pairing the board. First of all, I think we're cooked. Second of all, I think this is not a good card to bluff. Third of all, if we were going to run a bluff, I would have preferred bet the turn, bet the river instead of the check raise on the turn. Middleton has bet 650,000. Yeah, and bluffing for that amount is like trying to throw a bucket of water on a volcano. Fiorini. Calls. Oop. You in. You in. Middleton mucks. Fiorini shows ace deuce. He called him down with a pair of deuces. Wow, that bluff got snapped off like the head of a post-coital praying mantis. Fiorini up to 9.4 million. That's not junk. Aces for Nielsen. He's counting out a raise. Race. He makes it 435,000 from the cutoff. Queen Jack for Kimo Koko in the small blind. And while he's got 4.4 million, that's sadly only 22 big blinds. Oh, and he shoves! Sormanen in, in the big blind. I'm surprised Crescent's containing himself over there. 
King. Eight, he'll fold that. Nielsen's calling faux show. I call. Eventually. Son I'm here. I'm going to rule that not so much a slow roll as a big moment roll. If someone disagrees with you, I just heard a Finn say slow roll. Yeah, the Finns also think these hats are a good idea. They didn't work out last year, and they're not doing so hot this year either. Bad juju. Kirko at risk and way behind. Big Toro stack about to get even bigger. Let's see a flop. Queen 9-8, that does give Kirko some hope. He's got nine outs. Oh, now he wants it quiet. A queen for trips, a jack for two pair, a 10 for a straight. The three on the turn. You guys, he said, shh. Kirko is a 76% favorite to go out in fifth. But he gets there on the river again. Huge double up. Aces cracked. And is there an audio problem? Because this place is silent. Blinds, 120,000, 240,000 with a 30k ante. Luca Fiorini. Ace Jack. Well, forehanded, this is pretty dang strong. He starts the hand with 6.4 million. He raises to 625,000. Hold it around to Tom Middleton in the big blinds. Pocket Queens. Uh, you know, those ladies are saying, boy, aren't you glad you didn't take that deal? You gotta shut up for a second. I got a hand. He's going for the big chips. Three back coming. Okay, I'm all in. Fiorini shoves and Middleton calls. Forehanded, there was really no other way this could go. And high variance situations like this are the exact reason why a talented player would make a deal until he backs out. Fiorini looking for an ace. It's a 10 9 4 flop. He's set to depart unless he hits one of his three outs on the turn or river. It's a queen on the turn. Yes, it's a set for Middleton. Good card for you. But it gives Fiorini a straight draw. Quarter of the crowd thought that was a good card for Fiorini. The other three quarters thought it was a good card for Tom. 100% of the crowd shouted for nearly no reason. He's looking for a king or an eight. It's a nine, a full house for Middleton. Fiorini is out in fourth place. So far, Middleton and Israel are loving the fact that they did not take that deal. Please, guys, a little bit of sensitivity for Luca Fiorini. Blind still 122.40. Middleton on the button, folds. Creston Nielsen in the small blind. Grace. King eight of diamonds. And he makes it. 480,000. Creston should probably raise a little bigger, small to big. Kimo's going to call with all but his absolutely worst hands. To make it more or just limping's cool too. 7 4 suited. Far from unplayable. Kirko defends. And we go heads up to the flop. Happy to see a flop for cheap with that hand. Wow, flop better, Kimo. Rut row. Despite the fact that he's drawing deader than the crew of the Black Pearl, I do like a bet here. Nielsen continues with top pair. How is Kirko going to play his straight? He should probably just call here. No reason to blow out so many hands that are drawing deader than the crew of the Black Pearl. Looks like he's raising. That's a big stack of greens. 1.41 million. How much? Kirko's very lucky he's up against a hand as strong as top pair. I assume Big Toro's calling at least one more street. I'm going to say. He re-raises. Nielsen three bets to over three million. No, 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 no. There's no reason to play a gigantic pot out of position with just top pair and not even top kicker. This raise is only ever getting called by hands that are kicking you around like Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse. I think the only bigger mistake that can be made on this hand is if Kimo folds. Call it. He shoves. I call. And Nielsen calls. 
And once he threw back, Creston definitely had to call the all in. He's not drawing totally dead. Straight front. Uh, he's drawing pretty thin. Kirko's a 91% favorite. This happens sometimes when you win too many hands, you think you're invincible. Oh, Big Toro picks up outs. An eight or a five would see him double up. Maybe he is invincible. The river card is a queen. Big Toro is terminated. Okay. Okay. Sorry, man. Sorry about the video. This town's been pretty good to Bulls of late. They banned bullfighting in 2012 and in 2013. Preston the Killer, a.k.a. Big Toro, gored his way into third place in the EPT and into our hearts. 7-3 suited for Kimo on the button. And he just limps. Middleton checks his option with Jack-8. I know it sounds weird, but with how deep they are, Kimo probably should have raised. Six tray deuce. Kirko with a pair. Not a bad flop for seven tray. Middleton leads, betting 600,000. Probably just a good spot to call with middle pair, see what happens. Kimo calls. Better part of 1.9 million in the middle. Six of hearts on the turn. Middleton picks up a flush draw. That's a good slash bad turn card for Kimo. Middleton now checks. He's probably going to have the best hand a lot, especially after Tom checks, but it's hard to get called by a worse hand. Kimo checks behind. King of Hearts, that's the flush for Midi. Let's see if he's got the wherewithal of value bet it. Once again, he goes for max value, betting two million. Boy, he knows exactly where he's at and has made a great value bet. At this point for Kimo, this is an easy fold. Once again, Kirko calls! That's round trip tickets to value dice for Kimo Kirko. Hurts the stack and it's got to hurt the will. Tom Middleton now with a huge chip advantage over Kimo Kirko. We have never hit this blind level before on the EPT. 200,000, 400,000 with a 50k ante. That's over 10 times the starting stack for the big blind. Crazy. Kimo Koko raises his button with ace four off suit. Pocket fives for Tom Middleton. Stacks are a little deep for Tom to three bet, call it off a two five, so maybe he just calls here. Nope. That is a three bet to two million. And I think Kirko could go either way here. And by either way, I mean fold or shove. Tom has left himself room to fold to a shove. And if Kimo thinks that'll happen a certain amount of the time, he could easily stick it in. All in. He does shove. And Middleton calls. Lose call by Middleton. I think he's really lucky to be up against Ace Four. Tom Middleton is a 70% favorite to win the EPT Barcelona main event on this hand. That's about as big a favorite as you can be. Kimo Kirko looking for an ace. It's a 10-7-6 flop. Fives holding for now. Not a particularly dicey flop for fives. The Finn's looking for an ace. It doesn't come on the turn. It has to come on the river. Or we have a champion here in Spain. Three outs for the Finn. That is not one of them, which means Tom takes the title. Middleton is on Toppleton. He was the chip leader at the start of day three, day four, day five, and day six at the start of the final table. And now he is an EPT winner, joining his friends, Jake Cody and Toby Lewis in that elite circle. Also, let's not forget, good game, Kimo Kirko. But it's time for Hit the Hole to Hit the Bar. <laughs>
guess a good starting point, Eric, would be to kind of establish what you do as president of the GPI. What does your job actually involve? It's, um, you know, we're a very small team, so the, the title sounds grandiose, but what it really <laughs> means is everything, right? Everything that needs to be done is done. Um, I'm happy to say that I have a small team, but the team is, is quite exceptional. So Quite inept. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys know half the team, you know, not the best, but we'll, we'll keep them around. They, they don't cost us much. So we'll keep them around. <laughs> Cheap um, is always the number one quality when putting together a team. That's right. So number one role for me is, of course, motivator, as you can see, uh, for, for the team. Yeah. But it's to guide, guide the team, talk to a lot of uh, the big wigs in poker. Uh, you know, we work with, with uh, partnerships with, you know, it was some of the best in the industry, including uh, PokerStars. We're very happy uh, to be partnered with PokerStars. So a lot of discussions like that. At this time of year during award season, uh, I'm a politician, basically, you know, trying to yeah. talk to one, talk to the other, you know, smooth some egos. I'm sure on Friday night, uh, I'll have to smooth a few uh, a few of the egos, which is fine. Uh, but it is whatever needs to be done uh, gets done. So a lot of the partnership stuff, trying to create, uh, find work for the team. You know, during the pandemic, it was a pretty rough uh, time for us. So trying our best to 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 find some old results or something like that. So working with the team for that. So yeah, a lot of not not necessarily presidential stuff, but a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff you'd expect as someone uh, who heads the the GPI and the hand them up. Eric, as far as your total year-round workload is concerned, what percentage of it is uh, the awards? Uh, and then the rest of the year, what are the rest of the p percentages? Like, is it keeping track of stats, updating the website? Like, how does that all break down? Yeah, definitely. I mean, right now, you know, we had a – because of the date for the awards, and those, of course, are always determined with our partners at Poker Go. Uh, the awards are about a month earlier than we'd like. Uh, you know, in a usual term. So we literally had to finish out the year, do our players of the year, which is always stressful, having to recount all the data and make sure everything's fine and literally have the awards going on at the same time. So right now it's 100% awards. It's been like that for, I guess, since January 1st or end of December. Uh -huh. um, and then the awards, you know, we, we do take, it's not just a one month thing. We, we do, we've already started working on the 20, I guess the 2023 appearance of the awards. Uh, that's already already started or uh, sheets. Tons of meetings have already started. What categories are we going to look for? Matt this year? Savage has already been nominated in 2023. <laughs> Four, times. Four nominations already, um, including Breakout Player of the Year, which is quite an honor uh, for, for Matt, you know, given his experience. And then you're right. Um, the the rest of the year, you know, talking to the players, seeing if we need to to adjust things uh, over on the GPI, and then you know, to, talking to clients and all that good stuff. Uh, trying to find as many new results, new schedules. You know, we're really pushing schedules on our end as well. The Handemab has traditionally always been a place for people to go see their results. But to me, it should be a one-stop shop where you can go see your stats as well and upcoming schedules. So that's a big, big priority for us. I sometimes get the sense that trying to do this, as noble an effort as it is, can be a bit of a thankless task because there'll always be people sure. bitching and whining and pointing out the flaws. And, you know, Joe raised it already does feel quite u.s centric i think it makes sense this year because if we talk about live poker in 2021 99.9 percent .9 of it was in north america but in previous years it still felt that maybe europe now slips under the radar more than it did when it had its own award show sure and you're right about that you know i, I do find it funny that the the Europeans complain, but what about the South Americans? What about the, the no, Asians? That's they're fair. getting, that's very they're fair getting comment. ripped to shreds too. Um, I'm proud to say that this year we have some categories. The Poker Personality, which was voted by the fans, has four nations represented, including Japan, France, uh, Canada, and the U.S. That's, I, I think we're building towards that, James. You know, we always say that, let's not forget that poker is at least 50% U.S. driven in yeah. normal years, right? 50% uh, of the players that play poker on the hand mob are American. 50% of the players ranked on the GPI 300 are American. So we can't lose focus about that too. And it is that there are several talented Americans. You know, it just so happens that Joe flies the American flag, but he could be flying the, the Australian flag. So, but I agree with you. And I, I've been very vocal about this. Uh, I, I always come out and say it. I think the, um, the BSOP in Brazil is yeah. one series that gets totally shut out every year 
And that's Ready bullshit. I mean, that is, uh, so they do amazing events every single time, not just in Sao Paulo, everywhere around the country. I think that's where my ideal is. And you guys know I'm a bit of a dreamer. So I hope that one year it is 50%, at least 50% rest of the world, 50% in America, maybe one year, 75%. Welcome back to London and the Pokestars European Poker Tour. Live coverage of the main event final table continues. We are still heads up here at the Hilton Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. But towards the end of the last session came the big switcheroo. Jack Sinclair no longer in control, no longer in command. It's Ian Hamilton who's got close to 15 million ships, close to 50 big blinds. Jack Sinclair with 7.8 million, 26 picks as we go to the 150,000, 300,000 blind level. It's James Hartigan alongside Nick Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. And when we were three-handed, Nick, yes. when Sinclair had pretty much all the chips, I think I made the comment, it's Jack Sinclair's tournament to lose. He's not done anything wrong specifically. You cannot criticize the good fortune of Ian Hamilton. And that's not to say he's playing badly. He's made a few plays which you might bring under question or maybe weren't GTO, but he has, the deck has favored him. Let's put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the same has been true even when we were still four-handed, even when we were three-handed. So run very well to be here at this stage. And let's see how it turns out now that we are heads up. Playing for a difference of around £250,000 in prize money. 414 for the runner up, 664 for the winner. And before anyone asks, we have not had any conversations regarding a deal. No suggestions that they are talking about chopping the prize pool. So we will return to the final table in just a moment. Before that, a chance to tell you that when we are wrapped here in London, before we go to EPT Prague at the end of the year, we are going to be streaming the last three days of the High Buy and W Coop main event. A reminder that W Coop Take Two runs from the 5th to the 9th of November. Boosted guarantees for the main events and that No Limit Hold'em Championship event live streamed on the 7th, 8th and 9th on the Pokestars Twitch and YouTube channels. The team will be there in the Pokestars Arena. Hopefully you can watch our live coverage over those three days. Pleased to be rejoined by Maria Ho. Hi. And there is the trophy they are playing for, Maria, along with that 250K difference in prize money. And I kind of feel for Jack Sinclair, and again, never having been there before, psychologically, it must be hard when you have that huge chip advantage that you're the one now at the disadvantage. You're now the one on the ropes. Yeah, I'm not saying that Jack may have counted his chickens before they were hatched. But of course, you know, when you're in a dominating position and you feel like you are skilled enough to overcome playing pr pretty much everybody heads up at this point, it, it does probably feel a little bit disappointing to find himself in this position. But of course, down, but not out. 25 big blinds, still plenty to work with. And we start... With hand 178 of the final table, with both players with the same hand, Sinclair limping on the button, Hamilton raising to 1.5 million, and Sinclair folding. I think what will be mo most interesting to me to see is how Hamilton will play now that he has the chip lead, and now that he feels a little bit more like he's steering the ship yeah. And just to clarify, both players from the UK, so we are going to have a local winner, as it were. Both players 31 years old. Jack has had a couple of big scores at the World Series of Poker, two seven-figure scores. One of them was winning the World Series of Poker Europe main event. Has, including today's result, more than $5 million in live winnings. And, of course, back in August, we saw him finished second in the Estrella's main event. Second from a field of 6,313. Ian Hamilton, not as many results. Ten live caches to his name. Did come second in the 2K Mystery Bounty event at EPT Prague. That was worth 156K. 
Uh, interestingly, a hashtag fun fact from Stat Trek. Our very first feature table on day two of this event, Ian Hamilton, was on the main stage. So we have, in a way, followed his progress from the very start of our stream. Now, I think uh, you might have already mentioned this, James, and correct me if I'm wrong, I have sort of been following along when I'm not been doing commentary, but we haven't yes. had any discussion of deals. That's no, right. No, no, we we, no, we no. kind of knew that would happen regardless no. once we got to this stage. I, I tried to make that as clear as I possibly could at the start of right. this segment, only for all the questions to follow on Twitch and YouTube. So they've done a deal? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if there have been any conversations off camera sure. where it's been suggested and shouted down, but I've not heard it even brought up. They are playing for the advertised payouts. Okay, so heads up poker, Hamilton ace-king suited on the button for about 22 big blinds effective. Something in the region of 23 or 24 before the uh, big blind is put in the middle. Yeah trying, to trap. yeah, trying to trap Sinclair there with the limp, but Sinclair has a hand that he wants to see three with and yeah. not connecting with either player's hand at the moment. I see it's become a copy pasta, but thank you to Itezu, who was the first person to post. Congrats on your cameo in Guillermo del Toro's new Netflix series, James. Uh, brought it up yesterday on the stream. <laughs> yes, if you do watch the new series on Netflix, is it Cabinet of Curiosities? Yeah. I think episode four of the anthology series there is a scene where a character is watching the PSPC on TV, and you can very clearly hear my voice. No, that's amazing. I love that. I need to find that. Did they ask your permission before this? Well, or? I found out later that, obviously, they approached PokerStars about licensing the footage. So, of course, it was an agreement that they could use it. Bear in mind that everything I've ever done under the PokerStars banner is owned by the company. <laughs> I receive zero dollars and zero cents for my contribution. Uh, Other than what I got paid for actually doing my job. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more concerned that you may or may not be inside a cabinet of curiosity at this point, James. Yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, man, I'm going to have to watch it now. I hate scary stuff. I mean, I doubt either of you have read the tiny print on your contracts, but it's amazing when they talk about how they can exploit your voice and image in perpetuity <laughs> in all territories <laughs> in the galaxy, known and unknown. You think that's an exaggeration? That's what it says. <laughs> and that is standard for any, any <laughs> presenter contract these days. If you guys like horror... Take a look at our contracts. That's the real fear. I mean, I can only hope that one day I will be able to say that my voice was in the background of some show on Netflix or some oh, movie. That would be amazing. Pipe down, Marie. You've done plenty of proper TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On the turn here, guys. Sinclair is still with the best hand. Queen's head off 79%. Does have position against Hamilton here. I have no idea what's just happened in that side of it. Yeah, I think Sinclair just kind of picking up on the fact that Queen High will just be the best hand a lot of the time here. Doesn't need to turn it into a bluff necessarily. I think it's safe to say that Hamilton would probably lead the turn if he had a flush draw or a straight draw quite often given the check-check flop. So just taking it to showdown. Hamilton with the opportunity to take it away if he wants, but Sinclair is still with a hand he could look him, up, look him up with. These are definitely the kinds of textures where Queen High is still a completely reasonable call if the price is right. All right, 900K, he is going to make an attempt at it. Wow, just going to put in full pot. hot size bet here, which is quite interesting because as you had just mentioned, Nick, about the type of hands that you think 
would be leading on the turn as Hamilton. You know, doesn't quite make sense that he has a hand now he's going to go full pot with, but either way, Sinclair is not going to be able to withstand that pressure. And this is kind of what I was talking about, you know, in the last hour and a half that we watched before Hamilton took over the chip lead, he wasn't really taking these types of spots. He wasn't finding bluffs when he didn't really right. have showdown value even, you know? And so it is nice to see that he's able to shift those gears, especially now that he's in control. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I think you called it as well, Maria. You sort of said once we once we get, get heads up, you said maybe we'll see him put his foot on the gas pedal a little bit more. And I think we've definitely seen that as he's shifted into the pole position here, heads up. So Hamilton here with five free of diamonds. Raises to 900,000. Wow, goes full 3x. Ooh, that is very spicy when we get this deep, you guys. We are about 19 or 20 big blinds effective here before Jack puts his big blind in. Uh, for the most part, when you're, if you're actually going to study heads up, guys, as well, all of the preflop charts you're going to look at will be what the action should be at the start of the hand before blinds are put in. So in this case, you know, you'd be looking at the 20 big blind effective chart. And a 3x wow. is, wow, a 3x is extremely, extremely un uh, uh, unconventional and just flopping three. 3x for the three, James. Absolutely. The trip threes. <laughs> it goes check, check. King ball on the turn. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It is a king. Oh. And now Sinclair with top pair is in terrible, terrible trouble. Yeah, this is very, very scary. When you're playing heads up poker at this stack depth, you're just not getting away from king eight in this situation. Your opponent is so incentivized to represent that king as well. Maybe they check the flop with, like, an ace here. Maybe they have a hand like ace-10. Maybe they have a hand like ace-5. They can definitely start bluffing at this point, especially if they pick up some equity with the hearts or a gut shot or something like that. And Sinclair is definitely checking this turn with the intention of catching some bluffs here. Well, 900,000 is the bet from Hamilton. Oh, this is going to cost him so much, Maria. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion. I hate this. Sin I know. He's called it. We're going to the river. And Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. That ace of diamonds. Now, Maria, that could save Sinclair. Mm. Yeah, definitely. You know, if we look at the fact that there's 3.9 million in the pot and Sinclair has 4.3 back, it's hard to imagine that Hamilton's going to be able to bet a size where he can put Sinclair all in and get called. I think by worse very often, especially now with this run out. So Hamilton mm -hmm. just trying to consider, okay, does put wow. Sinclair all in. I think it's going to be hard to yeah. find calls when you go that size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Maria, I'm, com greedy. I'm completely with you there, Maria. I, I think that I think that the, the it should have been a bet not all in. It should have been size to the pot, and it should have been a size where you can keep the king and you keep the jack in still as well. I think that was too greedy in that situation because that's a card that you use to bluff, right? That's a card that you go, I'm going to go all in here because it puts the king under pressure. I can get a king to fold. Mm -hmm. Not the size that goes, I really want to get a crying call from second pair, third pair before the river. And crucially, as I'm sure you saw, Sinclair didn't even think about it. Often we'll see him take a beat, maybe even use a time bank card, snap folded. No interest. Oh. But yeah, certainly a combination of the river card and the sizing yes. saves right. Sinclair right. there. Yes. Yep. Uh, however, it is worth highlighting that he did lose a not insignificant pot and is now down to 15 picks. All in. Gets shoved on by Hamilton with King Jack suited, is forced to fold. Where would you say Sinclair is right now, Nick? The danger zone. Danger zone! Yes, we got the switcheroo. It's the rare James Hardigan danger zone, guys. You're really bringing out the big guns tonight. Okay, again, Maria, I'm, again, I don't think the, the shove there is, is, is incorrect. I think that's totally fine. Of course, King Jack City very strong. But when you're playing heads up, you need to be precise. And I think that at that stack depth, it should have been a raise non-all-in to actually get some more action, especially when you have like a six-to-one 
chip advantage, right? It's not like, you know, oh, this is a really important spot that I need to take down. I don't want to take risks. You can afford to take a, a couple more risks here to try and eke out a little bit more value, in my opinion. Uh, the shove is going to be totally plus EV. I think the raise not all in will apply the same amount of pressure to the short stack while also giving them an opportunity to make a mistake or to take a post flop and actually get the rest there. Yeah, absolutely. I would have to agree. And I think that's where we're maybe seeing some of Hamilton's inexperience, you know, coming to the surface, the fact that he wasn't really able to find that non-all-in raise. Had 185 of the final table. Hamilton calls on the button with King-10. Sinclair checking his option with Queen-9 of hearts. The flop is Ace-8-Deuce, just the one heart. King-High still ahead. Hamilton betting 300,000. Sinclair makes the call. Turn card Ooh. is the 10 of clubs. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think if Sinclair is floating this flop with King-10, he's going to assume that 10 is effectively top pair at this point as well. He's probably somewhat capping... Uh, Hamilton's pre-flop range here because at this effective stack depth at the start of the hand a lot of the ace combos will be played as a shove right there will be some traps of course but like ace two soft ace three off ace four off ace five off ace six off a lot of offsuit combos will just be pure jams and that makes up a ton of combinations when you're looking at all of your ace combos well this just went check check on the turn we get the seven of hearts on the river and a pair of tens for Hamilton is the best hand yeah a bit unconventional to see the check behind from Hamilton on the turn, you know, I think that's the spot where you're going to want to start going for value and charging your opponents. Hamilton checks it back, wins the pot. Sinclair loses another one and is now playing a 10 big blind stack. And it's worth highlighting every time Sinclair is in the big blind, he is posting the big blind and the ante. That's right. There is the additional dead money there. And, yeah, I just got to echo what Maria said again. I just think that there was probably value there. It seemed like a very, very nice spot to try and go for some more value with the King-10. Yeah, if not on the turn, certainly on the river. There was a two-street possibility there that just didn't end up materializing. Sinclair, seven-deuce offsuit. Gives it up. So, yeah, on the next hand, 20% of Sinclair's stack is committed before any cards are dealt. Is this where the comeback starts? Hamilton is going to be first to act here. As ace-king continues to pick up solid hands. And counting out a raise. Opens to 900k. Three X's it again. And ace-queen for Sinclair. Oh, no. no. What a setup for Sinclair. All in, called, a domination situation. <laughs> Sinclair at risk and behind him. He's got a smile on his face. And the way Hamilton runs, I don't see how Sinclair comes back from this. Come on. Come on, Ace. Queen. Come on. Come on. The Sinclair family looking for a queen on the flop. That's his best hope of survival. If ace-king holds, this is over. And Ian Hamilton is an EPT champion. Okay, straight draws for both players. They switch out. Oh. Now we need a king. Three cards that Jack Sinclair can hit. 
unless we see a king on the river, we have our latest EPT winner. Eight more. The river. Thank you, Dina. Eight more. Come on. Come on. Is a play. Hamilton, the hometown hero. There we go. That's the rail we were looking for this whole time. Celebrating with his boys as he wins the EPT London 2022 main event. And Jack Sinclair will have to settle with a second place finish. Hamilton gets it done goes to commiserate with the guy he just beat heads up Jack congratulates him and will cash for £414,650 he's the runner up but Ian Hamilton is the winner yes well done Yes, Someone's going to be making a reservation at Tiger yeah, Tiger tonight. <laughs> I mean, bringing it home from Team GB though, right? It still came home to GB. GG to Hamilton. Huge, huge score. And a reminder: no deal was even discussed. That full first place, place prize money will be paid to our champion. That means Ian Hamilton will receive £644,400. Absolutely massive score, James. 664K. Absolute scenes here in London. You'd love to see it. Well done, Ian. And another EPT in the books. Another unique main event. Came down to the two Brits heads up, and it's Ian Hamilton who is the winner. He'll be presented with his trophy in just a moment. Let's recap how this final table went down here on the final day of the EPT London Festival. It was Nils Poodle who came in with the short stack. Kept his smile as his aces were cracked on the second hand of the day. The show ended early for Romanian film producer Dan Kishu. He exited in fifth place for 175 grand. Ian Hamilton used the classic jacket equity to ensure a miracle five on the river to keep his tournament hopes alive. It did not go well for Roman Harabets today. He was start of day chip leader, but he found himself dominated by Jackson Clare and had to settle for a fourth place finish. A duel between Alexander and Ian. Hamilton spiked the straight on the turn. And that meant we went heads up. Sinclair had the chip lead, lost the chip lead. And then came that inevitable ace-queen, ace-king collision. And we have our winner, who is down on the floor with Joe Stapleton. Ian, you're the first British EPT winner on British soil in more than a decade. I know Brits are famously lacking in emotion, but surely you have to be feeling something right now. I'm feeling very good, yeah. I'm feeling very good. Just very good? I mean, you've been through it. You've been through a heck of a day. I'm very tired. It's been six long, long days, but yeah. So, you made a, a ridiculous comeback in this event here. Was there any point where you felt like it wasn't going to happen? Um, a couple of levels in, I went out feeling a bit like demoralized and then just came back and said, it's time to just put the pedal down and go for it. We're here now. Let's take it while we can. And uh, a little bit of a sun run today. What do you attribute that to? Uh, months of Rumbad. <laughs> That's about it, really. <laughs> Things even out in the end. Okay, one last question. You're obviously a nice, friendly-looking fella, but you had the hoodie, the sunglasses, scary, intimidating Halloween costume. What was going on there? That's just me blocking the world. That's just me blocking the world out and trying to just play my cards and not worry about all the screens and stuff in your face. <laughs> 
Well, let's hope he lets the world in now. Let's get a big round of applause for EPT London 2022 champion, Ian Hamilton. It's amazing when the hood and the sunglasses come off, Nick. There is a human being there. I'm so excited. And his response was absolutely perfect. I know what that feels like. What do you credit it to? Months of run bad. And here it is. Run good has, go has come. It's arrived. Well done, buddy. So congratulations again to Jack Sinclair on his second place finish. But it is Ian Hamilton who is our latest champion on the Pokestars European Poker Tour. And it's time for him to receive his main event trophy. Welcome to the trophy presentation for EBT London 2022. Our first trip back to the UK capital in eight years here on stage to celebrate our triumphant return is director of poker for the Hippodrome Casino, Carrie Jane Craigie, tournament director, Toby Stone, and head of live events for poker stars, Cedric Below. Before we hand off the trophy, Cedric would like to say a few words. Thank you, Joe. Indeed, I just would like to give a big thank you first to all the players on behalf of Poker Stars for attending the EPT, for being so loyal to our live events, to our brands. It was amazing to have you all here. It was, of course, an immense pleasure to come back in London, as we're saying, since 2014, more than eight years. Uh, this event has been really nice to us. And uh, again, a big thank you to everyone. A big thank you to the Hippodrome, being our partner for this event. Um, and of course, a big thank you to all the staff involved. It's important, all the dealers, all the media, everyone from the hotel. Uh, this is a teamwork. So thank you, everyone. Of course, congratulations again to Ian for this huge accomplishment. And uh, before we give the trophy, I just want to say to everyone, next EPT is in Prague in December. And we hope to see all, you, all of you there. Otherwise, January in the Bahamas for the PSPC. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cedric. All right, well, now there's just one thing left to do. 749 total entries, six days of poker, the first UK winner on UK soil in more than a decade. Please put your hands together for the EPT London 2022 champion, Ian Hamilton. <laughs> Well, Cedric handled most of the thank yous. I obviously want to thank the fantastic production team here who put this stream together. And most importantly of all, I want to thank everyone at home for watching the last few days of our coverage. Check out the full roundup of EPT London on the Pokestars blog. Make sure you join us in a couple of weeks' time for our live coverage of WCOOP Take 2. And of course, the EPT is back in December, as Cedric said, to join us from December 12th for live coverage of the EPT Prague 2022 main event. But for now, from Joe Staples and Nick Walsh, Maria Ho, Griffin Benja, and me, James Hartigan, it's good night from London. There's something in the air. There's something in the world.